coming soon to a theater. <laughs> Okay, all right. That time of year. Good morning! Hello! It's the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom. Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin over there in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Willie Griswold's here. Good morning. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. Ace Cosby's here. Hey. I'm Chick McGee. Are, are you okay there, bud? Yeah. There's Tom Chris Walden <laughs> hacking up a lung, I think, over there, aren't you? All right. <laughs> I, know, I know Godwin's here. Yeah. I, How do you know? I just went into the green room, and there was a giant puddle. <laughs> what did he <laughs> spill this morning? A little coffee accident. Like a, combina- like a combination of coffee. Uh, uh, let me cream. ask you something, Pat. Are you <laughs> continually spilling coffee so you can get an assistant to hand you your coffee? Is that your no, goal? No, it's just messing up on me, apparently. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Do you ever watch the TV like at nighttime, and they have those as-seen-on-TV products, and the person that lives in this house just fumbles with everything. There's every, oh, yep. I, I can't cut a cucumber without cutting my thumb. Of. I yep. can't wipe anything down. That's how Godwin lives his everyday life. Mm-hmm. He's the person in those commercials that needs the products. I uh, will never forget, he was asking Jess in the break room one day about an end table <laughs> that needed staining. I've never heard of that. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Jess said, well, you'll, Pat, Pat, you'll have to go pick out the stain. Yeah, I said, you could, I, I'll what? help you, I'll help you do it, and we'll, we can sand it, and we'll restain it. Yeah, and Pat what, what, had no idea what a stain was, where to get a stain. Yeah. Had no idea about stain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, he's, God Close. knows how old. Oh, I'm a man of a certain age. Yes. Graduated right. a year before you, I think. No, oh, well, uh, well, I started late. <laughs> well, welcome to the show. Pat, I know you went to see the Eagles in concert last night. I, oh, my gosh. Great, wow. huh? Yeah. No filler. Just boom, boom, boom. Song <laughs> yep. after song. It's amazing. Yeah, if you get a chance to see, they're, they're on tour. It's tremendous. And uh, Steve Miller Band opened up. They were great, too. Yeah. Uh, for those of you that are following that tour, originally Steely Dan had been the opening act, but Donald Fagan uh, uh, has... Uh, taken ill apparently he's okay and back home doesn't uh the dude in uh in uh jeff bridges big lebowski big lebowski oh not the eagles man i yeah. hate the eagles yes. <laughs> oh, he's wrong <laughs> they're tremendous Jerry's wrong. No, there, there are those who don't don't like them very much I, I don't i don't and i went and it was amazing yeah they're perfect. oh wow. yeah. they're perfect life jeez yeah i love vince gill He's so charming. Joe stage. Walsh had a great line. I won't spoil it, but yeah, it, involved, it, involved, it, it, it just yeah. involves being a man of a certain age. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe Walsh uh, and uh, saying play. The crowd went nuts for Joe. They went nuts for oh. Vince Gill. Vince Gill Gosh. should be a fisherman. That should be like a law. If, if your name is <laughs> Gill. If your name's that obvious. It should be like Billy Toilet or whatever. You'd be a plumber. You know, I mean. <laughs> am good. I right? So, I bet he fishes. Chick McGee, you'd be a uh, woman. I was drunk. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, the last name. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or Fisher Gill. How about that? Yeah, just call it never mind. Coming up, we have a uh, interesting problem with last names in the news, by the way. Hmm. Uh, well, I think you'll find that interesting. Um, also, uh, uh, coming up, oh, I, 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 I guess I can do it right now. We have a winner. We have our winner for week five. Uh, breaking tradition. It's not someone with two first names. Say it. What's the contest, Tom? Well, it's it's the <laughs> pigskin pick em. Mommy's little piggy. <laughs> Wait a minute. Could you at least shorten, <laughs> shorten the drum roll? Uh, our winner is a, um, uh, Mr. Corey Cravey. Uh, uh, I don't know. Josh has a kitty named Cravey, doesn't he? That's a great oh, good gravy. Oh. Yes. Uh, from Clovis, California, he wins the Big Green Egg Mini Max. Corey got 13 out of 14 games. Um, and uh, was in an eight-way tie for first place, but he won the various tiebreakers. And uh, week six begins Thursday night. So uh, if you want to get in on the action, go to bobandtom.com slash contest and just pick the winners. You don't have to go with the spread or anything. Just pick the winners of the games. What's kind of interesting about this is that uh, Mr. Corey Cravey picked his, uh, he picked his card, if you will, for week five at the beginning of the season. So uh, very good. So he just mails. He just what? Yeah, he picked. He's he's. I guess already gone on board and picked the picked the, the whole, whole thing. You the can, whole yeah, season. you can you can pick the whole season. Huh. At once, if you That's want. Wild. It's been a few minutes. And That's virtually fun. no 
almost no thought at all. Well, not taking into account injuries or whatever. It's like a lottery. Oh, speaking of, it's still like one point seven, almost two billion dollars, right? Yeah. For those of you that have a state where the Powerball is happening, yeah, it's the second highest. Isn't it forty-eight states in the ever? Uh, uh, I don't think it's forty-eight. Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. I don't know, but in, in the larger point here is it's, Guam. Uh, Guam. Thirty-five straight drawings without a winner. There'll be a, a drawing at some time today. It'll be the second largest lottery prize ever. I think it's tonight, like around 11 Eastern, I think, or something like that. Um, Do you have your tickets? I don't. Not yet. I'm going to, though. Oh, yeah, you got to stop at your favorite convenience store. You uh, you buy your tickets, and then you get your backer. you got to have an extra money for a backing. Uh, you get you win more money if you get it backed or something. I don't know. The guy tried to explain it to me the other day. <laughs> and I just I, I went into Tom Griswold mode, mode and I stopped listening. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what's coming up in sports? Uh, we've got uh, a Major League Baseball team moving on to the uh, American League Championship Series, and it ain't one of the best teams all season in baseball. That's right. The Rangers dispatched with extreme... What's a good word there? Hmm. Um, well, remember in, remember in, uh, in Apocalypse Now? Extreme prejudice? Yeah. Or, yeah, something like that. Anyway. In other words, kill them. Uh, Rangers, yeah, and they did uh, beat the Orioles 7-1. Seven to, seven to one, uh, Three-game sweep in that best of five. So the Rangers, uh, they want Houston. Uh, Houston, Houston, the Astros win. Uh, they're ahead two games to one. They beat the Twins yesterday, 9-1. to one. We'll have more on that coming up. Plus, we've got a skydiving... Update. Update Just on skydiving. Right yeah. Uh, the NHL started last night. We have to mention that because Josh works here now. And uh, Mark Davis, <laughs> who's worth $2.3 billion, was uh, playing the slots at uh, the La Las Vegas airport, and people thought it was interesting. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, well, he's a, big a deal. billionaire, and I guess, hey, well, well, why, yeah, but I just won 30 bucks. Yay. Well, so what? When I met him, oh, he was God. playing slots <laughs> at the airport in Vegas. Oh, God. And he boarded the same plane with me, Southwest. Was so, he Was so he flying cool. coach? <laughs> well, it's, it was Southwest's flight. So he was, he was A group, though. He wasn't a C group guy, right? Some goofball, when he got on the <laughs> some goofball when he got on the plane said, where's your private jet? He said, you're on it. <laughs> come back. I like that you described the man as a goofball, Ace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are people thinking when they yell stuff like that yeah. at somebody uh, like that? <laughs> hey, give me a dollar. Give me a dollar. <laughs> it's like the jackass I saw. We were, we were in line. Uh, at a, at a well, our salad bar at a beautiful restaurant in Colorado, and the former president Gerald Ford happened to be there. Uh, and some guy goes, "Hey, Prez, you jackass! <laughs> God, well, have but, some have some respect." But Jesus. arguably, Ford wasn't elected. Oh, you, no, that isn't the point. Whoever's the president. No Nixon matter who, appointed. No matter who they so, are, you have some. Yeah. Okay, whatever. Come on, back me up on this. All one-termers are prez. Yes. Prez. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Carter, you're half Carter, prez. you're Bush prez. Senior. Prez. Bush Senior. Uh, they're all prez. Prez, yeah. prez, prez, prez. Yeah. Okay, fine. Absolutely. Spurs. Spurs. Agnew, vice I would have thrown it. Hey, prez. <laughs> No, don't, no, see, don't trip while you're here at the salad bar there, Bumble. <laughs> no, Spiro Agnew was almost a con. <laughs> there, were, there were some issues. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those, those crafty <laughs> Greeks. You can't trust them. Got to his account. Uh, right now, uh, I want to talk about the fall. Uh, depending on where you live, you might see some changes going on out there. Sure is getting, sure starting to get dark. <laughs> Leaves are changing. <laughs> dark early. Uh, Hello Fresh knows also you're unbelievably busy. We all are. And uh, that's why Hello Fresh has decided to step Not me. up. Me, I got nothing going on. That's for helping this a lot. <laughs> uh, he Hello Fresh knows that you're busy, and uh, unless you're Chick McGee and have nothing happening. That's right. Uh, we have more time then, mm -hmm. uh, but the rest of us don't. Hence the quick and easy 15-minute meals, just part of the program from Hello Fresh. Find out what I'm talking about. It's a great option. You can join America's number one meal kit today. Knock 50% off. The price, I'm going to tell you how in just a second. HelloFresh does the grocery shopping. They do the measuring. They give you the recipe and ready, set, go. No food waste. The food is delicious. And, uh, Willie, what are you working on over there? Y'all, check out the sesame soy pork bowls with sriracha mayo, cilantro, and crispy onions. HelloFresh sends you 10 ingredients. Put those together in four simple steps. In under a half hour, you have this delicious, colorful pork bowl that you made at home with help from HelloFresh. There's stuff that uh, HelloFresh has. You can't even pronounce it, but it's absolutely delicious. The key uh, is uh, great ingredients, fresh ingredients, and another thing happening right now, like I said, fall flavors. And then, by the way, they have that the special marketplace where you can get the mini pumpkin cheesecakes. Find out what I'm talking about. 
about and uh, save a lot of money, too. Join America's number one meal kit, like I said, 50% off, plus free shipping. Free shipping? The code is 50BTSHOW. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50BTSHOW. Once again, 50BTSHOW. HelloFresh.com slash 50BTSHOW. Coming up, we have a bunch of really cool stuff happening in the world. Uh, we do have one <clears throat> sad story. Uh, we have uh, some Jimmy Buffett news. And I'm going to try and blow... Your mind. When okay. We come back. All right. Okay. And we have. Uh, you're not going to believe it. We have footprints in the sand. Uh, that's why I was carrying you. Yeah, well, you're going to find out uh, who was carrying what. <laughs> this is the Bob and Tom Show. You don't say we didn't warn you. <laughs> There's. Uh, last time you were here. Yes. Um, you uh, got talking about catchphrases. Oh, yeah. I'm not even sure you remember this. In fact, uh, I remember it. We actually use it. We use it a lot. Right now. No. And I, I, and How I, is that working for you? You know, I got to say that, you know, I'm a comic, mm -hmm. so everything, and when I improvise something, it, it's mm -hmm. a throwaway. Mm -hmm. And I'm certain that I've thrown away my career <laughs> and the potential for a decent career a hundred times. I've had people say to me, you know, that big bean bit, the funniest thing I have ever, and I don't know what Don't know what they're talking about. about. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's like, you know, I got I got my stuff and then I got my... Because you had that guy on from Bruce Springsteen earlier. Joe sure. Nelson. And, I, and, I was, and mm -hmm. he was talking about working with the boss mm -hmm. and the boss way he works a set list. That's me. Yeah. I don't mean to say I'm like Bruce Springsteen, but I'm like Bruce Springsteen. Okay. okay. You, just, you, you, know just, you change it up every I night. have a I have a set list and then I'm willing to... Then you I never it. follow it, yeah? It's, you know, I'll do what I need to do. I'll yeah. do whatever I got. It's like making love, you know? But, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you do it right now. That's right. See, we love that phrase, and you you give you've given it up. Then we were hoping. I, I did it, you know. And when I did, there's the Bob, no right now T-shirts. When I did the Bob and Tom show tour, mm -hmm. I don't know if I told you I did it. Sure. Uh, uh, and 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 Chick in, introduced me. He introduced me with that catchphrase. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. starting. It's and, starting. Um, is it uh, is it sweeping America? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we, 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 we want we'll to we'll bring like we'll it. bring you back on the tour, but we, only if we can do the right now thing. Oh, look could I hear the I gotta do? could uh, I hear the baked bean bit right, right now? now. <laughs> <laughs> because you know sometimes sometimes my mom used to make baked beans with her special sauce, yeah, which was mustard, ketchup, and sugar. Uh -huh. And she would, you know, she she goes, go going to the dinner, come right now, <laughs> right, and would see this really deep voice. That's, uh, that's before she stopped smoking. Yeah. She was a she was a Paul Mall babe. Wow. Did the sugar make the beans uh, brown sugar. sweet? It was a brown sugar. Mm -hmm. It was like the best thing in the world. Yeah. And my father used. My father was so. My father loved, my father was overweight, and so my father, and no matter what, she couldn't do any wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, oh, this is the greatest thing I ever, you know, it's, it's mustard and ketchup and, 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 and brown, brown sugar. Brown a lot sugar. of sugar in there. And, yeah. and some Campbell's baked beans. Mm -hmm. And he's, he, oh, <laughs> <laughs> we could have, if, if, God bless my father. He may rest in peace. He could. He would have been happy with a trough. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> with those? Right right now. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you something. My father lived uh -huh. for dinner. Did he? Mustard? Yeah. Because my father, you know, my mustard, father was, huh? he was a real man. He was a Marine Corps lieutenant colonel. We've mm -hmm. talked about this before. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My father was in World War II. My grandfather, World War One. I. I enlisted in the Army out of high school, just missed Vietnam. But I was in time for our country's war on drugs. Uh, how'd you <laughs> Technically, do? Technically, I fought for the other side. <laughs> <laughs> we have to take a break right, right now. now. Right now. Oh. It is a nice neighborhood, um, but, uh, you know, there are we're, we're on... Uh, like uh, the backside of the South Pasadena. Uh -oh. so, so it, although it's nice, there were a little. The crime starts just to the other side of us, and uh, we had a uh, we had some police activity in our neighborhood not too long ago. I see. And uh, obviously, a little scary. I'm supposed to be the defender of the home. Uh -huh. uh, currently, with a vitamin D deficiency, it does take a little <laughs> bit uh -huh. of the edge off your confidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if someone breaks in your house, you know, when your first concern is not the burglar, but did he leave the front door open so a strong wind could snap you like peanut brittle? <laughs> <laughs> sure, I understand. But a buddy of mine, someone broke into his house, and he he did not react the way he thought he was going to. He did what did not, he do? Well, he, what he did was he hid. 
<laughs> oh, really? And, yeah, and so now he got terrified. He wants to buy a gun to defend his home, and he's never used a gun before in his life. And uh -oh. I was trying to convince him. I said, you don't need a gun to defend your home. You're not a gun guy. What you need is a baseball bat. Yeah. The baseball bat is the perfect home defense weapon because sure. any idiot can swing a baseball bat. Because yeah. you don't have to be baseball good. You just have to be pinata good is all yes. you have to that's be. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. As a matter of fact, the more spastic and unstable you are, the deadlier you appear to the intruder. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Now, a gun in and of itself is a dangerous weapon. You could be handling a gun and accidentally shoot yourself, but no one has ever been cleaning a baseball bat and accidentally beat themselves to death. <laughs> true enough. As that does true. happen, that's an acceptable loss. Let that man go. Yes. <laughs> that's very true. Now, in my <laughs> fantasy of, you know, uh, defending the home, is usually I'm kicking some serious butt, and then there's usually like a catchy phrase at the end, uh -huh. tag it with something. Even if the guy's got his foot on my chest, yeah. I'll look up at him and say, well, 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 I guess that was easier than even you anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. James P. Connolly. Yeah, an audio prop. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, this is Larry the Cable Guy, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. If you're not, you're a communist. Well, let's get a serious tip from you. What, When you get pulled over for a traffic thing, what's your suggestion? What do you do? Just be polite. Yep. Yeah, I can if you that. if you say yes or no, sir, da 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 da, mm -hmm. more than likely you're going to get off unless you just run into a jerk. And you're not supposed to get out of the car, right? No, you know the best thing to do, mm. and what I always do at night, uh, if they pull me over, I always flip on my dome light and put my hands on the. And they always say, "Oh, you've been arrested before." <laughs> <laughs> And I go, no, I'm an ex-cop. And then all of a sudden, everything just moves. Now, uh -huh. how, do they, how do you prove you're an ex-cop? Do you have some kind of special signal? Or I just say, uh, I got it. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee is on uh, vacay. That's uh, Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hi. There's Pat Godwin. Hey, Chick. There's uh, Willie Griswold. Jaster. I don't smell any dry shampoo today. Did you shower? I did shower. I shower. I shower every day. I just don't shampoo every day. I shampooed this morning. I hair product and no dry. No shampoo. kidding? Yeah, you bet. We'll talk all about it the next hour. All right. <laughs> uh, looking forward to that. There's Josh Arnold. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> There's Ace the Cosby. The guy goes fishing for three days. Forgets how to. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Hey, I was told this being yanked out of here. Well, it, well, but then I told was who was in charge of it, and I know it'll be another nine months. <laughs> There's one button you gotta press. <laughs> yeah, I looking at that, but I shouldn't have to. That's right. I should be in control. Uh, thank you, Ace. <laughs> now, uh, Willie, when you shower, um, do you hit the toilet first, or do you uh, do you pee in the shower? No, I like to clean up and then get real dirty afterwards. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, what of are course. You, talking you go about? in, you use the restroom, and then you use the shower. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what everyone does, right? Okay. Yeah. Jake, we talked about it on the show plenty of times. When you're when you're in the bathroom and you're a guy and you're urinating, you do you clean a little house? You know what I mean. Do you pick your nose? You stand there and you're picking your nose first thing in the morning. No, no. I mean, you know, you're taking a look at. You know, I'll talk to Josh because he'll. Uh, but that's not the topic. The, the topic is are you peeing in the shower? Of course, everyone pees in the shower. Boring topic. Now, if you're peeing on the floor, that's interesting. You got something there. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. <laughs> you mean on the floor? If you wake up and you go and pee in the corner and you're drunk, that's a oh. story. <laughs> yeah, now you got a book. Like Logan Roy in the beginning of Succession. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So you flip the booger and it hits in the wall and sticks like way up okay. high where you can't reach it. This answers the question. Yes, it does. And Who's I know exactly. Who's doing it here? It's you. I knew it was you. It's the all over the wall. That back wall. Every now and He's then. He's so careless. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> You're like a, a serial killer keeping the wallets of his victims. You're like your little trophies hanging in the be. corner of the bathroom. I could be. Because you know why I do it? Because I know it bothers Josh the most. Okay. No, well, it doesn't oh. just bother the Josh. The reason uh, I brought it this why up. Why are you in the men's room? Because yeah. you guys use the women's room. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it's unisex now. Well, it's I, don't retaliation I brought it up for a reason. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry that it's a I can't. Boring, boring topic. I'm sure we can get to NHL scores I can't wait. Um, in a minute. That'll be exciting. Um, what was the question again? I've forgotten it already. We have a story coming up about bathroom cleaning and, oh. the, and a survey of 2,000 people and some of their habits. 
Now, when you floss your teeth and it flings onto the mirror, do you clean the mirror? Or do you let it? No. Immediately. No, you say. No, just let it harden right there. Live with it. This, this is assuming you floss. <laughs> do, you, do you floss on a semi-regular yeah. basis? Who, me? No, no. I don't, I don't have a tooth in my head. This is, these are, this is a <laughs> okay, I'm, sorry. I'm really sorry I asked. <laughs> uh, okay. What a dick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you ever floss and then you go... Oh man! If I didn't floss, that would all just yeah. be in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got I've got a, a pocket or a tooth. They've tried a billion times to get the the crown right, and there I've got a little <laughs> a little a pocket there that I save food in. <laughs> if I don't pay attention. <laughs> a little cow catcher. I bet it hurts. It'll, it'll, yeah. it'll start to hurt them. Josh, know, have you ever got something stuck in your tooth at a meal, and you go, "I can't wait home." Go, I can't wait to get home and floss this thing out. And you get home and you go for it and nothing comes out and you just think that you have food lodged in your gum for like a week. <laughs> this just happened to me a week ago. So really? It's, it's kind of fresh. Make me I'm, crazy. I'm still a little bit scared, to be honest. I wonder what it is. Uh, who knows? I think it's part of a chicken bone, but... <laughs> oh, wow. Mm -hmm. We'll but, see. Um, well, it, it, we do have um, a bathroom cleanliness coming up in the news, an interesting survey. Also, um, a really odd story out of San Francisco about vomiting in restaurants. Ugh. Oh, Just vomiting in restaurants? Yeah, yeah, really odd. Uh, in the bathroom or in the restaurant? Well, wherever you are. Yeah, you, we're, we're going to tell you uh, coming huh? up. That's what, these, are, these are called the teasers. It's San Francisco, <laughs> so it's probably just outside the restaurant on the sidewalk. <laughs> now, we have uh, also some, <laughs> some shows coming up. Uh, Willie G is going to be on stage. That's coming up this evening at the Louisville Comedy Club, Louisville. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, ticket information, Willie? You can go to my Instagram, at Willie.Griswold. There's a ticket link in the bio. I'm opening for Joey Molinero, super funny. Going to be at O'Shea's across the street, my favorite bar in the whole world, getting chicken fingers before and probably after. So come hang out. <laughs> oh, all right. Sounds good. You should eat chicken fingers on stage. You think so? <laughs> you think I should talk to the people at O'Shea's, try to get a sponsor? Chicken well, finger break every 12 now, minutes? courtesy of O'Shea's <laughs> restaurant, it's <laughs> Willie Griswold. You'd be like that guy, uh, hamburgers, cheese. Chicken, chicken, chicken wing. finger. Chicken finger. It could be fun. I'll give it a shot. We'll see what the fellas at O'Shea say. Now, um, uh, you were discussing, Willie, getting something stuck in your uh yeah, getting it in stuck your in your gum and teeth, and then you try to go get it out later, you can't find it, and you just kind of think it's in there forever. Yeah, uh, we were talking about something, and that came up. Um, the topic about having something. Uh, well, you'll you'll find out. This is, a, huh? this is a, you'll, you'll enjoy. Oh this. come on! Don't play that. <laughs> you deserve it. <laughs> this is your fault, dear Bob and Tom. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> you were talking about toenails last no, week. No, okay. no, no. A friend of mine is a dental hygienist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She cleans teeth for a living. She had a patient who came in the office in great pain. After examination, the dentist found the sore tooth swollen and infected. The procedure required a small incision to relieve the pressure. <sighs> there was a toenail in there. The dentist immediately requested no. a pair of surgical tweezers oh. and removed a large piece of toenail. Oh. How do they know it wasn't a fingernail? Because it says this patient said he often chewed his toenails. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Hey, my mother used to chew her toenails. No way. In front of me. Oh, God. Oh, boy. <laughs> Clothed or not? I would, Clothed. Oh, thank God. <laughs> that, that is a visual. Poor Bob has lost oh, it over there. Right, little best up right, here. <laughs> right here. This is a uh, sick, sick wow. thing. Wow. <laughs> that would be, you know, totally I even, naked. I think you even get, think of that. You would get, See anything you like, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, the visual. Oh. I was kind of thinking because to chew the toenail, Jess, you'd probably have to do some kind of akimbo. Help us. Uh, yeah. Be a lot of... Fairly limber, a, yeah. yeah. It'd be a rough visual. That, that would... A lot of landing strip there. <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy now? <laughs> I, I blame you completely for this. Me? Uh, yes. Um, now, we have, and in any event, coming up, but we do have um, uh, your bathroom cleaning habits. Uh, kind of an interesting survey of thousands of people. Um, plus, uh, we have uh, some, some beautiful news involving Queen Elizabeth II. <laughs> some uplifting news. Oh, and some so not the parachute story. <laughs> you, the parachute story. Are you story. aware you of... Uh, I do. Are you aware of uh, a little city called Las Vegas? Yeah, of course. Uh, are you aware of the uh, the new... Uh, I, it's a venue. I don't know if it's a... It must be... Oh, the is big, it a casino? No, no. It's no. a it, it's just a venue. It's, movie. It's, yeah. Have you seen this thing? Yeah. That's a building. It's called the Sphere. Yeah, and they can project different things onto it. Yeah. So. 
So for the summer league, it's going to look like a giant basketball. I guess it's like 30 stories tall or some crazy thing. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. You can see it from the moon. You two opened it this weekend, last past But weekend. what they're doing, and uh, for Halloween, it, uh, they, they make it look like a jack-o'-lantern. Have you seen that? Yes, and Ace is correct. You two, the band, uh, did a residency, and they're without their drummer, by the way. Oh. Yeah, we played some drummer. Uh, the clip that I saw, the visual looks so much better than the... Uh, like it's kind of like one of the things where you want the music to be padded a little bit, because it truly is just four guys with instruments up there, mm -hmm. and you kind of need a little more. For, the, the audio needs to be epic to match the visual that's happening. Yeah. Yeah, well, hmm. I, um, I'm kind of, I want to kind of want to see it. I don't understand structurally how it's there. It, so it looks, it looks either. like that globe at Disney World. It looks of, like when you're, looks like it's a lot bigger. The video I saw inside, it looks like a kind of like a planetarium where mm -hmm. they can project like a sky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody described and, it as like, uh, remember the laser Floyd things where you, they, nope, never, never went, never went. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, at a planetarium yeah. is where I saw yeah. laser <clears throat> Floyd. Yeah. You guys went to see Les Are you familiar, sure. are you familiar with the no. yes, yes and? No, no, I'm not. No, I can but. Have, I can have, I can have light shows are no. for suckers, Don't. okay? Also, yes and is an improv technique to build suckers. together. Suckers. Yes I'm going to play this music and, and have a flashlight. Man, this is epic. <laughs> yes and yeah. is in a way that you just make people say yes to whatever you want them to say anything to. It's not, just, it's not forced consent, yes and. No, but it's chick. Will derail any conversation. <laughs> so yeah. you ever uh, you ever take a shower? No. Okay, fine. I just, not, we're not going to get anywhere if he doesn't cooperate. I said I pissed in the corner of a, of a bedroom, and you didn't want to talk I'll about. I'll talk that. to you, Jess. Uh, I like okay. that. When you get up in the morning. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, in the uh, about six a.m. In the light. Have a little in the event that you <laughs> <laughs> watch this. Watch this. See how see how happy he is. Watch this. Haywood's coming in tomorrow. No. <laughs> I didn't tell him. Jess, do you? Uh, yeah. Do you uh, go over to the commode and sit, or do you go straight to the shower? Or... <laughs> commode. Um. Well, I get up. I get up really early, so yes, I go, and then I go do other things. I I change out the laundry. I unload the dishwasher. And then I I come back. So if I'm in the shower, I thought and you I, were just gonna go. I cry. And I cry. <laughs> yeah. cry. Uh, and then I uh, if I'm in the shower and I need to go, then I'll go. But yeah, it's not. This I is don't, not strictly number one. It's strictly number one. Yeah, oh, I it do not soccer style it into the drain and what, crush what? it down. <laughs> I know how you like to play. Yes, and and I don't know if anyone's going to be truthful enough to uh, agree with me. But you want me to agree with everything you're saying, and we had a meeting that you're no, 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 no. I, I was just that. I was curious because we have this thing about bathroom cleaning coming up, and um, I don't think this. If you're in the shower and you and the uh, feeling struck, you go ahead and urinate. I don't think you make it a point of going in well, the shower to urinate. Let's ask Tom when you get up and you have to go to the bathroom, but you know you're taking a shower right then. Yes, you just with wait that, until and, you're in the shower. And that massive hog you have to carry around. <laughs> I mean, you, do you I use the toilet and then go in the shower? If or I do may, you If I may, I will use the number 2 in the, the toilet, obviously, and then I'll save the number one just for the shower because I like how it feels so much. How can you do that? <laughs> you can go number two without going number one? Yeah. yeah. You prioritize. Oh, you can't? Oh, you can't. I, oh, you're, you're a wizard. You're, I can, <laughs> but I can't. I cannot go number one without going number two if I have to go number one. Does that make sense? Wait a minute. I always, and you didn't ask this question, I always go number two in the shower. Always. <laughs> <laughs> always. I like the freedom. You have a garbage, garbage disposal in there? Primal? No, no, I'm stomping. And, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> An extra light switch in the shower. What's this for? I'll be careful. Uh, it shorts no. out every now and then. <laughs> well, that, there's an old saying, you can go number one without going number two, but you can't go number two without doing number one. Yeah. That's an old saying. That's, yeah, that's yeah. A, oh, I love that. Oh, sure. Make that up. Well, well, I remember know. my great grandmother would say that. It's right on a Hamlet. <laughs> Welcome and thank you to our new show, The Folksy Wisdom <laughs> of Ace Cosby. <laughs> it doesn't flow very well. To go or not to go. It, do, it doesn't flow, but it is folksy and it is wisdom. So there you go. Oh, thank you. Guys you guys have not heard that. It's validating. Thank well, you. Well, I haven't heard that saying, but I agree. I don't. I, uh, how you can sit. <laughs> And yeah. go number two without going number one seems inhuman to me. Even, um, even if it's a little bit it's by not accident. It's possible. Yeah, I don't think. It's just yeah. because you know the reward is coming of the full release. That's what it is. That's when you're, I, I couldn't do you're, it. Urinating is a reward? When the water, when the water on your body. <laughs> what did you do to your children? When the water, All right, let me 
can tell you something. If you get good grades, no, I, you can go I, to the bathroom I, I, tonight. I, I think what, uh, let me just interrupt, Willie. I'm sorry. I think in my case, if you were to measure the quantity of the urine that you expel in a given uh, urinary event, I think you technically would probably get rid of a little bit more when you're in the shower. There's something about your whole body goes, okay, let her rip. Oh, you just relax. I just think you can yeah. go more. You can, you can. Is that? Yeah, no, it's possible. Huh. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think when the water is touching you, when your body is warmer and it's closer to the water that you're expelling, mm -hmm. that you get rid of a little more. Well, yeah, like like when uh, girls do the sleepovers and they stick the girl that falls asleep first, they put her hand in the warm water oh, yeah. so that she. Oh, and the end that she has her period at night. <laughs> <laughs> is that not how that prank works? I think it's a different. Oh, that's <laughs> if you put her hand in ketchup. Right. Let's, check with, <laughs> let's check with Ace to see if he has some folksy <laughs> wisdom. <laughs> let's go back to the old wives' tale. Uh, put your hand at night, say. Uh, your, uh, <laughs> uh, and then you get your period. Hey, so. and, and, and then sailor, sailor take warning. <laughs> sailor um, take warning. That's I'm right. sorry that we brought up this boring topic. I, I, uh, I hope you I blame happy. myself. You put her hand in some hunts. <laughs> <laughs> Be you careful. And, <laughs> you, and all, you and all your friends stand around her and go, "Ooh, she's dirty now. Look at that." <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let's see. I all I was doing was trying to. <laughs> Now, what were you trying to do? The, it wasn't even a... There set wasn't up a, this story. There wasn't a point to See, peeing in the shower or not. You, for example, for your sports broadcast, yes. you said, coming up, we have NHL stuff, which I couldn't yeah. care less about. And then I said, well, we have a fun story. Everyone can relate to uh, bathroom cleanliness. And uh, we have an interesting survey of thousands of people, and you can see how you fit into this uh, category. Okay. So you can see if you're normal. There was just like a little quick tease. You know, coming up in sports, <laughs> we've got Major League Baseball playoffs, but right. guess who the manager of one of the teams is? And they, they are advancing. The Texas Rangers manager. Uh -huh. It's Bruce Bochy. Did you know that, Tom? I did. And you know who one of his best friends is? Who's one of Bruce Bochy's <laughs> best friends? Daryl Hammond, the great comedian. Oh, I'll be damn. <laughs> well, here's a. Uh, is this me talking or is this Bruce Bochy? <laughs> hey, real quick, man. Guys, I, I, I think some stuff. What you guys oh. did here is going to Tampa. That's going right. Baltimore doing that. And going here. <laughs> I, that's one of the most superb things I've seen. The only thing I need to know right now, Hedgy, what's the number on your ass right We need eight more! <laughs> okay, that's what's a bunch the... of drunk guys in the locker room. Did you hear the popping Pop of the, the champagne? Yeah. Oh, that's what that that's is. That's what that is. He, he walks in and they oh. hear all the popping. Is this from last night? Yeah. That's a lot. And yeah. here's Bruce Bruce <laughs> grunting. Uh, yeah. And okay. here's, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. <laughs> Nothing that you two do as uh, surprises me. Oh, this must be Bruce Bochy. Oh. One thing, Bob. Yeah, what's that? I'm going to give you a little advice. Uh -huh. I believe you guys uh, get to find some different jobs. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bruce Bochy talking to Bob back in okay. the day. There you go. Very good. Uh, now, um, um, yeah, Daryl Hammond talks about Bruce in his great book. Yeah, I understand you wrote a, uh, re uh, read that book one time. Yeah, we've Several never times. heard the end of it. Excellent yeah. book. <laughs> hey, you know, fall is here. I thought it was an interesting fact. You uh, know what uh, is alone right now? What's that? Uh, your house. So lonely. <laughs> so, so lonely. That's right. Well, you know, the people at Simply Safe have come up with a revolutionary new home monitoring innovation, 24 7 live guard protection designed to help stop crime in real time. Now, if an intruder breaks into your home, Simply Safe professional monitoring agents can actually see, speak to, and deter them through Simply Safe's new smart alarm wireless indoor camera, stopping them right in their tracks. 24-7 live guard protection is made possible by the new Smart Alarm wireless indoor camera available with the Fast Protect monitoring plan. It's the only indoor security camera that can trigger the alarm and instantly deter intruders with a built-in siren. Install your way like I did. Do it yourself in about 30 minutes. Uh, the implication there is if I can do it, anybody can. Or you can have a Simply Safe expert set it up for you. Either way, it's easy. Either way, it's easy to protect your home. Uh, for a limited time, get 20% off your new system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. Visit SimplySafeTom.com right now. That's SimplySafeTom.com. And remember, there's no safe like Simply Safe. Read the reviews, Simply Safe. It's the best. And if you don't want to install it yourself, now they do have, uh, they can make it real easy for the pros to do it for you at Simply Safe. Thank you very much, Chick McGee. Yes, sir. Uh, once again, uh, coming up, we have um, uh, an update on a uh, interesting world record. How about that? Is that a nice way to put it? An unfortunate update. Okay, yeah, that's sad. Uh, okay, oh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Got something to say?
grew out with a girl a lot younger than me, which I was an odd experience. Yeah. Uh, a lot younger, early 30s, very early 30s, uh, 22. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah. it was a mistake because I thought I'd be the older, well, it was for two reasons it was a mistake. One, I thought I'd be the older, experienced man, and I would teach her about love, you know, so I'm a very confident, you know, I'm giving her hot talk in her ear. I don't know if you've ever done that oh, where you're right yeah. next to someone's oh, ear and you're yeah. kind of like, <sighs> oh, I'm paraphrasing. Oh, <laughs> oh, this is in the transcript. <laughs> Hey, baby, you like that? You like you like what I'm doing, baby? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like it. Oh, well, I <laughs> bet you do. Yeah, well, I think you're hot. I think you're hot, too. I'm getting turned on by the own girl in my own routine. I'm same. actually thinking, were you, uh, you now, were, were you doing, you both, doing voices both voices, voices? then? <laughs> yeah, Bob and I are on the same page. I'm right? not sitting there. Yeah, are you doing both voices while you're whispering in her ear? <laughs> yeah, it's like a ventriloquist. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, <laughs> it's just my sock pocket, honey. Just play along. Lonely, lonely uh, time. Uh huh. I think you're hot too. Oh yeah, do you? Well, I'm, I'm gonna give it to you. I want you to give it to me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about what you got down there. Uh-oh. Uh, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you got down there. Uh, well, well, what do you want to know about it? <laughs> <laughs> Just tell yep. me all about it. <laughs> well, oh. I... Uh, I've had it my whole life. <laughs> I keep it very clean. I'm uh-huh. fastidious about hygiene. Uh-huh. Now tell me what it does. It works well with others. <laughs> it's a, a team player, self-motivated. Uh-huh. Now tell me how big it is. Well, that is an issue of perspective. <laughs> you can't judge it. You got to go right now? Oh, come on. <laughs> hey, see you on Craigslist. Uh-huh. Another smooch girl. Uh, Dwight Slade is our guest. <laughs> that was a bad move. Hey, it's Josh, and of course... Hi, Chick McGee, everybody. Your chance to win a Mini Max Big Green Egg for Bob and Tom and Big Green Egg. Each week, someone will win a Mini Max Big Green Egg. It's the Bob and Tom Show Pig Skin Pick, empowered by the Big Green Egg. Go to bobandtom.com slash contest on the computer. <laughs> oh, is that where you go? Are we eligible? Rodney has his guitar out. That's a great sounding <clears throat> guitar. Do you have another tune for us? Do you sure. Have you'd like to play? I'd love to hear uh, something. Uh, let's see. What do you... Uh, you want to do one of the classics? Or do you want to do something... There like, she goes. <laughs> Bitching again. <laughs> <laughs> Saying things she's heard from all her friends. <laughs> <laughs> and it don't matter what I do or where the hell I've been. There she goes, bitching again. <laughs> I could make a million dollars. I could put it in her purse. Buy her a big old mansion. Things would just get worse. I could lasso her in the moon and throw it in with all her stuff. She'd want to know where Neptune was Cause the moon ain't good enough <laughs> There she go <laughs> Bitching again <laughs> Saying things she's heard from all her friends and It don't matter what I do Or where the hell I've been There she go Bitching again I could have painted the Sistine Chapel, I could have won a Nobel Prize. Built a great wall there in China, and that'd be nothing in her eyes. <laughs> I could have wrote the whole dang Bible and read it to her twice. <laughs> and she'd want to know why the yard ain't mowed and the fridge don't make no ice. <laughs> <laughs> there she goes. And she's bitching again <laughs> Saying things she's heard from all her friends And it don't matter what I do or where the hell I've been Oh, here she comes and there she goes 
bitching again. Boys, I know you couldn't laugh at that because she's sitting right there next to you. <laughs> and she's bitching again. <laughs> That's great. Rodney Carrington. disabilities. Fans and critics alike agreed that a stage 12 feet off the ground was a particularly bad idea. A little help now. This has been Great Moments in NFL History. Oh. You don't say we didn't warn you. Oh my God. There's laughter ahead. This is Bob and Tom Radio. And the allies, they tell you all this psychological stuff to make you feel safe. Like, every time you get to the plane, they talk about the flotation seat. And they explain it to you. Like, if you go down, in, if you crash in the ocean, then the seat will float. Two planes out of 100 go overseas. 98 out of 100 stay right here. So if you want to make me happy, you show me a seat that's going to bounce out of a cornfield. <laughs> that's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> they got everything just confused. Like that. James Gregory is our guest. He's not a flyer, apparently. I got thrown out of J.C. Penny the other day. Really? Yeah, fondling up the mannequins. <laughs> you believe that? And that ain't my fault. Have you seen the mannequins? In there. Uh -huh. And they taunt you too. They got the little short skirt on, arm up, kind of waving you over. You know what I mean? Shoot. I tell you what, if you ask me, the little whore was asking for it. Bob and Tom. Key word coming up. Okay. All right. As I think we've all agreed, we're going to try harder this time. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. There's Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hi, Chick. <laughs> There's Willie Griswold. Hey, man. Who, by the way, during the commercial, yelled at everyone and <laughs> scared Uncle Chick really bad. You you guys weren't helping. Sometimes you guys try to help, and you all just start yelling. You and I was trying to do me. I was Did trying you? to do voice attack. No, I didn't hear it. Oh, it was scary. I, oh. told, I said the F word, and Lots I told them all to shut up. Lots of F bombs this yeah. morning. Lots. Oh. <laughs> Not only shut up, but. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hi, Josh. How are you? I'm good, Chick. You? Uh, I'm all right. There's right. Ace Cosby, uh, hey. and uh, here's Tom Griswold. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to try harder. Sorry. Sorry. Right. You fool. Uh, um, now we, I got the mic on. We're ready to rock. Uh, a couple quick <laughs> things. We are about to enter week six of the NFL season. Yeah, we are. And we have a winner for week five for the Big Green Egg Mini Max. You want to win one? Here's what you do. You log on to bobandtom.com slash contest. Just pick the winners. Our winner for week five. Uh, five was Mr. Corey Cravey from Clovis, California. Criminy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Ka, 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 ka. It's Corey Cravey from Clovis. You're the king of alliteration, pal. Uh, no, this is all real. Uh, and he wins a big green egg mini max. Congratulations to Corey. The cool thing about Corey, he picked um, his card, if you will. He got 13 of 14 games. He picked them before the season even started. Is Corey trying nice. to make other people angry? Yeah, he's, uh, the guy's uh, got it going. We're going to talk to him probably tomorrow. <laughs> um, and uh, you can get in on act the action for week six uh, by uh, logging on to bobandtom.com slash contest. Just pick the winners. It'll be fun. And you could win the beautiful Big Green Egg Mini Max, just like Corey. And you get to participate in the Chick McGee Shoe-In of the Week. That's right. Step into the octagon. Uh, should be fun. A couple things coming up. Uh, we're going to be doing this show live Friday, November 17th Where's the, uh, at the North Star Mohican Casino Resort. I don't feel like I know. I, I it, this, What's the name of the city? There. It's in Bowler, Wisconsin. Ah, that's, <laughs> that's my kind of radio, baby. <laughs> you feel better? Oh, yeah. And then that night, a couple of shows featuring Willie G, Patty G, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Chicken I'll be your host. Chicken Fingers on Earth. You guys have never been there? No, you're not performing there. Oh, no, I'm performing at the comedy no, club. I should talk about, yeah, yeah, Louisville Comedy Club. Excuse me. Louisville Comedy Club is where you really should go. But afterwards, I'm going to go to my favorite bar, O'Shea. The way it was presented was you were going to be at O'Shea. I was so excited for the chicken figures. I know. Who would they got like a dill ranch over there. I go crazy about it. Man. How many cities in the United States can we throw out and you'll go, oh, yeah, they have a, that's a Danny's uh, getaway. Any oh, city chili. that I, Ooh, they got the best Any city I performed in, I've got a note in my phone. Like, you want to get good wings in Peoria? I got gotcha. you. 
No kidding. You want to get a good beer or a cider in Lexington? Give old Willie G a call. Huh. You need to go to Cincinnati, get some barbecue? I got you, pal. Boom. There you go. Very, Boom. very, very, very handy. helpful. Mm -hmm. Now, um, uh, also uh, coming up in the news, uh, we have kind of a sad story. Do you want to lead with the sad one? Do you want to save it? Uh, I want to tell you that Corey Seager and Adolis Garcia homered early. Nathan Avaldi pitched seven smooth innings, it says here. And the Texas Rangers have moved on. They completed an AL divisional sweep of the Baltimore Orioles. Some said the best team in baseball. Unbelievable. During the regular season. Win yeah. one for Brooks. Uh, Texas. <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> Wow, a sad. Uh, let's go out there What's and that mean? win. Brooks Robinson, uh, all-world third baseman for the greatest Baltimore Oriole of all time, yeah. probably. Uh -huh. So if he's not the greatest third baseman ever, he's in the top five. Yeah. Okay, and uh, it was like a vacuum cleaner. He just base. recently passed away. So oh. Tom's joke would let, let's go win one for Brooks, and they were swept in three games in a best of five series. <laughs> 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 you know, it's hard to get mad when he's having such I a know. good time. Yeah, I'm really not kidding. I know. <laughs> See, he just died. <laughs> it's, just, it's just terrible. I mean, it's one of the things. About, one hey, of the, hey, uh, hey, Skip, you want to bring him up here and talk about Brooks Robinson before we go out there? It's, I said, win one. <laughs> the problem is, one of the biggest problems I've noticed in morning radio is <laughs> mortality <laughs> tends to you know kick into the news a lot. Yeah, so... Yeah. <laughs> Real life. <clears throat> anyway, Texas Rangers manager is uh, Bruce Bochy. Uh, we all know. And you remember Bruce Bochy from from this uh, bit. Players talk about, I want to win the World Series. That's uh, right. Uh, I probably want something other to eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, winning awards sometimes. Straight fried potatoes. It's okay, now where does Bruce Bochy stop talking and Billy Bob from Sling Blade start talking? Oh, that's talking? who that is? Yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah. Here he is again. Players talk about, I want to win the World Series. Uh, <laughs> I probably want something other to eat. <laughs> uh, you know, winning awards sometimes. Straight fried potatoes. It's, it's what the game's about. Uh, you got any biscuits for sale in there? <laughs> <laughs> this moment right now. So. I reckon I'll have me some of the bacon. I'm living the dream. I'm uh, living the dream. That's oh. right. Who is the manager in Major League? Uh, that's, I think, uh, I'm not sure the name of that actor. It eludes me right now. It, he's well, amazing. Doesn't that sound like him, too? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. got to be where they Yeah, yeah that, that's got to be where they have Do you think, that. That, we've, we've talked with Billy Bob a couple times, and obviously a great actor. He's got a great band, but do, do, you, do you wonder if ever, if his buddies ever get him to go into that voice? Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, he's isn't that the way he came up with? He was writing the screenplay when he was on that awful situation comedy with John Ritter, Hearts on, of Fire, on ABC, yeah. and he was writing the screenplay, and he would do it backstage during rehearsal and stuff. He would do the voice, and that's kind and of you just have to wonder if ever you know, like after a epic sexual event, he <laughs> says to the woman. Uh huh. I'm watching for uh -huh. got some uh, French tater tops. And, uh, yeah, I, I reckon we'll do some it. folks call it a come and I call it a <laughs> I mean, You have to wonder. <laughs> well, it also has to be really good. He can't be going, man, I'm so sorry. That never happens to me. Uh -huh. I'm really sorry about that, miss. Uh, but usually uh, I'm a bigger than that. <laughs> I, I, it's kind of like that sort of situation. You'd have to know him really well. It's kind of like uh, uh, Ned Beatty, if you have to. Yeah. And when you've the, the great Ned Beatty as an actor, you'd have to, I think you'd have to know him for like a year before you finally said to him, hey, by the way, the, the, yeah. the, the scene where you're eating the corn and deliverance is amazing. I, I didn't want to bring up the movie because I know everybody did. Yeah. Remember the scene but uh, Billy Bob goes in and picks up the phone and asks Dwight Yoakam, how do you call 911? Oh, <laughs> Dwight wow. goes, well, you press 9, then 1, then 1. Why do you want to call 911? And what's, what are you doing with that sling blade? <laughs> <sighs> I'm going to hit Yoakam you in the head with it. Chilling. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, boy, yeah. he was so good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> a great movie. Uh, 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 Troubling. But yeah. sometimes yeah. that makes a great movie. Yes. Right? But the interesting story about Billy Bob, he literally was working as a, a part-time waiter for a catering company. And he went to an event, and I want to say it was, uh, I think it was Billy Wilder, the director, was there, and no one was talking to him. So Billy Bob went over and started talking to the guy, and, he's, and he says to him, hey, look, a guy like you that's an actor, only way you're going to get anywhere is if you write your own script. <laughs> end, of, wow. end of story, and beginning of story. Now, uh, coming up in sports, we have some sad news. Is that correct? Uh, that's exactly right. But first, I need to tell you so I can get off this baseball. Jose Abreu. Jose, how many Jose's do we have? Hit a three-run homer for Houston. A four-run first inning against Sonny Gray. Not Sonny Black, Sonny Gray. That's from, uh, what's the name of that? Al Pacino. 
Johnny Depp. Uh, uh, Donnie Brasco. Donnie Brasco. Uh, two runs shot in the ninth. The Astros beat the Twins 9-1. to one. Houston leads that American League Divisional Series two games to one. And today, 5 o'clock this afternoon, these all Eastern Braves at the Phillies. 7 o'clock tonight, Astros at the Twins. And then 9 o'clock this evening, Dodgers at the Diamondbacks at Arizona, commanding two-game-to-none lead in that one. Mm. And if Arizona wins tonight, Los Angeles is out of the playoffs. And that sound you hear are the executives at ESPN wringing their hands, the <laughs> Orioles out, and maybe possibly the Dodgers out. Wow. And, uh, yes, we will have a troubling story coming up for you. And uh, uh, footprints in the news mm -hmm. in a in in very interesting way. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Catch any part of the show you missed later today on our YouTube channel. Well, we were talking about that. Uh, it's wonderful. Yeah. You, you fly all over the place. You're, you, you, you work a lot with uh, yeah. the comedian uh, Jeff Dunham. Yeah. So you, and you guys are always flying, but uh, oh. you're famous on this show for your discussion of, of, of flying. Wow. I, well, I, it was, uh, it, it, I, you know, I, I know a lot of comedians do the stuff about, you know, airline, uh, you know, uh, jokes about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, everything from flying. And uh, so this was just my experience was that I started to notice uh, some of the pilots, uh, there were those who didn't say anything to you really they would just say hey how you doing you know and uh but then i always i had uh, noticed the ones who love to talk and yeah. point out things and give you a little sure. tour in the sky <laughs> and, sure uh -huh. and uh, i always thought those were guys who were frustrated uh, radio guys they wanted to be on radio you know there's your caption here to cockpit uh, and, uh, and they always sound so cool you know uh -huh. You know, and uh, so he always, first of all, he has to tell you he's in the cockpit. Oh, yeah. uh, like, where else is he going to be? Uh, yeah, we know. Yeah. We know. No. Uh -huh. I'm in the can right now. I uh, just wanted to say hi. Uh -huh. so if you guys uh, don't form a line while I'm in here, please. Uh, so he's in the cockpit. Okay. And then they always tell you how many feet were going up. I never understood why they had to share that with uh, all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's great. We're going up to 36,000 feet. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm just a passenger. I'm not writing this stuff down. Uh -huh. You know, uh, what did you say 36,000 or 33,000 because <laughs> I need to know <laughs> do you I do. yeah <laughs> and I want to know what the gauge says because mm -hmm. this is uh I can't see it I mean I need to know yeah. so uh yeah he's given us all this information we really don't need uh as passengers you know uh, all I know is uh you know 36,000 40,000 just go high that's all I really <laughs> go, go above the trees and the mountains and clear that stuff and yeah. I'm, I'm good I'm happy yeah have a couple of drinks and uh, <laughs> uh, but then uh, the, some of these guys, I've noticed, also will keep going. They're the ones who like to point out everything. You know, uh, for those of you sitting on the left side of the plane, if you look out your window, there's a cloud shaped like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What? I, oh, good. I, I'm glad he woke me up for that because, uh -huh. you know, I mean, I, and, of course, those people on the right side of the plane, uh, they never get to see anything sometimes, right? They'll, they'll point yeah. out stuff. You know, if, if you're on the left side, you can see the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. If you're on the right side, you can look at the people looking at the Grand Canyon on the left side of the plane. Fascinating. Fascinating. So, so I, I just noticed those guys. Uh, so I started taking notes about what they would say, and it was just unbelievable. And then uh, uh, and the, the funniest, or, or it's, I guess it's not funny, is when a plane goes down, of course, they would look for the flight recorder. And I oh, was sure. always like, and they always thought, I, I always wondered, like, what do they expect to hear on this thing? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, I mean, the pilot's not cool enough to just explain what's happening, is he? Is he just going to, oh, just hit a mountain? Uh, my fault, my fault. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was pointing out something to the people, and uh, yeah, uh -huh. I clipped the wing, and uh, uh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I know I sound cool right now, but I've just evacuated, uh, like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> so I just want to apologize to everybody. Uh, we're uh, spinning out of control. I just want to thank all our passengers for flying with us. Uh, we, we realized you had a choice in airlines, uh -huh. and uh, well, you picked the wrong one because we're, well, we're going right down. They're going down. They're going down. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to get that. No. You know, you just free gonna, drinks. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Free drink. Not, uh, yeah. Just uh, hurry, uh, hurry. Uh, free drink. Uh, uh, the cart should be uh, flying around. Any just reach up and grab something. Oh, uh, uh, man. I don't know. The, mm -hmm. I, I I figure that it, I, mean, I guess when they find the thing, all they really hear is you know one big uh, well you know yeah, screaming, yeah, screaming, yeah. Curse, yeah. screaming, oh, yeah. curse, one big curse word all the way down. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm 
sure, you know, if I, and if I was on the plane going down, I'd, my last word would be, you know, my, my wife would be going, I'd, you know, she'd be saying, I love you, and I'd be going, sorry, honey, I'm going to have to curse with the pilot right now. <laughs> won't be saying I love you right now. But. <laughs> Jeff Roth Band. <laughs> I do like porn, uh, but I'm going to ask you guys a favor. We get a lot of emails sent to the show. You can stop sending me porn clips, okay? I, uh, thanks, but no thanks. I, I appreciate it, but I'll be honest, I want to find my own porn, okay? T-Rex doesn't want to be fed. T-Rex wants to hunt. That's... new band called Saber. Call me. <laughs> hey, Christy, it's me, Donnie, the baker. Hey, I was uh, cleaning out the boat, and I found a pair of your, uh, anyways, I think they're yours. Uh, can we try it again, man? I got the motor fixed, and I swear to God it works better. You ain't gonna have to row or nothing this time. Call my pager. Christy Lee's X-Men, now showing uh, every other weekend, and Wednesdays, if she's not too busy. <laughs> Bob and Tom, well-meaning, but... Yeah, they're they're all messed up. More than slightly confused. Hello? Yeah, we, we, uh, we have Dr. David Wolf, uh, American astronaut. He's, Hello, Dr. Wolf. He's about to join you guys up in space. Oh, we're looking forward to him getting here. Stress with you. No, you're telling me. <laughs> Uh, well, hang on a second. What does Strasvitsa mean, uh, David? That's hello. Oh, okay. Oh. That just means hello, you moron. Yeah, listen. Hold on. Yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Russian wolfhounds. Very hungry. <laughs> Russian wolfhounds get really big, don't yes. they? Who knew? You treated me with cute little puppy when we bring him up. <laughs> Wow. What is the name of your doggy? Our dog? Yes. Well, now we call him Foamy. <laughs> Foamy. <laughs> Foamy the Russian wolfhound. Where are you from, by the way? Patterson, from Patterson, New Jersey. Oh, sure. That's famous. Boy. Yeah, you know, small. Sure. Thugged out town. You know, mm -hmm. it's tiny. So small, we used to get robbed by people we knew. <laughs> small. People were like, stick him up. I'm like, Andre? <laughs> I'm going to tell your mother, man. <laughs> by the way, how is Aunt Carol? How is she doing? <laughs> I come home for dinner. <laughs> Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. I know I've said this before, but we're going to try harder now. Okay? Is everybody in? <laughs> All right. Check, check, All check, right. test. Okay. There's Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, chick. Maybe we should start with a song. I Pat. got I got oh. nothing. See, how about that? <laughs> There's Willie Chris Paul. <laughs> I love that, Pat. Boy, oh, boy. That's Josh Arnold, Chicky. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom. This one. Uh, uh, Pat has a good excuse. He went to see uh, the uh, Steve Miller Band and the Eagles last wow. night. Uh, and that what a show. Great, uh, unbelievably great. Great, great show. Sound. Yeah, it, that, but probably one of the greatest shows I've ever seen. Same wow. here. So Same I was here. talking to somebody yeah. yesterday and uh, they, about what are the best shows I'd ever seen. One of them was uh, at the Yum Center. I saw Paul McCartney. Mm -hmm. and I've seen him several times. It, unbelievable. But the Eagles, oh, incredible sound. Perfection. Did, all those guys can sing great. If you get and a they chance. played Eagles songs? Uh -huh. um, what? Did they play Eagles songs? Yes. Oh. No covers. What did you think they no did? No covers. You're saying it was still just, good. Huh? They did all the opening Jones. song is a cover. The oh, opening sorry. song is a cover? Yes. yes. What is it? Oh, don't tell it. No, no, no. Don't ruin it. It's a great surprise. Okay. Um, I'll give you a hint. Uh, well, no, I won't. I mean, I was there. I just don't. I, who are they covering? <laughs> it's an old. Oh. You wouldn't know the artist. Okay. Uh, the, the, but the larger, okay. the larger point is great show. Uh, they'll be. <laughs> They'll be on the road. Once again, it. the folksy wisdom. <laughs> Check them out at the Yum Center. I wouldn't want to ruin the Eagles concert. I'll just ruin this conversation. Yeah. It's great. It's the Rose best. Bunny. We can't tell you what it is. Oh, God. Sorry. So sorry. Um, well, uh, where were we? Anyway, Pat, uh, you probably had no sleep, and I want to. I, I had like three hours, four hours yeah, last night. It's worth it, though. A but... bunch of babies. Right? Did you go with your honey? I did. Oh, what a night. I'm just Aww. holding hands and standing and shrieking. Woo! I what love it. it. And then Steve Miller ended, and then what? <laughs> <laughs> so you're not an Eagles fan, huh? I'm not, no. Yeah. 
Really? Boy, you know, you, there don't are like three you don't songs. have to be a fan. There are like three songs I like. Yeah, you probably do. <laughs> You'd be surprised. If are, no, you would hear I, me lustily boo at Peaceful Easy Feeling. Oh, whatever it's a, it's, Peaceful oh, Easy oh, Feeling so is one of my top ten favorite songs of all time. <laughs> it's gorgeous. It really is. Is it really? Yes. I'm well, they'll be in Lexington coming up at Rupp Arena, which will be cool. And uh, I think they're in Detroit this week, and I highly recommend it. Park Lane. Um, now, uh, we have uh, uh, some stuff Life to get to. in the fast lane. To great I Joe Walsh. Oh, lick. oh, God, Joe Walsh, amazing. Uh, now, let's just move forward here. Um, you know, that was, uh, he was, uh, he told uh, that he came out, that was a warm-up technique. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. that he wore, that's what he played. <laughs> oh, no kidding. So yeah. good. And Emily goes, oh, wait a minute, Joe. Yeah. Let's make that a song. <laughs> what, uh, what do you got there, Joe? Let's make that a song. <laughs> What are you noodling with? That's exactly yeah. what they said, yeah. yeah. What are you doing? Their next song, the tuning song, didn't go as well. <laughs> Pretty boring, the tuning no. song. Just E-A-D. Yeah, the lyrics, the syllabants, syllabants. Now, um, uh, are we going to get to the sad story? No. Okay. NHL last night. Okay. Uh, Tampa Bay beat Nashville. Chicago over Pittsburgh. Vegas. Your champs beat Seattle. And How they about had, that? Yeah, they had the trophy presentation, and everybody <laughs> drank out of the cup, including Brad Garrett. There's a picture on Instagram of Brad Garrett with his entire face in the Stanley Cup <laughs> drinking something and says, don't try the clams, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Las Vegas, speaking of Vegas, Raiders owner Mark Davis recently spotted playing slots at the Harry Reid International Airport in Las Vegas. Boy, if anybody deserves an airport name, <laughs> video shared on social media appears to show the 68-year-old with a bad haircut sitting at a Wheel of Fortune <laughs> slot machine before the Raiders took on the Packers on Monday night, according no, to but, TMZ. Uh, uh, oh, I'm uh, way in here for a second. He's not kidding about the baby. Have you ever seen this guy? Yeah. Oh, this yeah. Looks like someone took a bowl and... It's like a an, an adult Chucky is yeah. the look. Yeah. I guess like when you're that, when like you're that, that doll. See, that's the problem. When you're that rich, your friends aren't going to go. Hey, He's Mark. worth two point three billion, Tom. Maybe you want to. Maybe I want to go to go to supercuts. That means he could them. lose a billion mm -hmm. and still have a billion. Well, he probably has someone come <laughs> to his house and cut his hair or wherever he is. Right? He could have any haircut. Yeah. Do you I, think it's now? It's just a matter of no. <laughs> everybody's telling me it to might get be my a middle cut. finger. Didn't I'm we do this? Didn't yeah. he, I think he cuts his own hair. I think that's the whole thing. Is that he just? I'm a low effort guy. I want to do my own haircut. That's what I worry about. Is he married? He, for years, he drove a uh, like a, an old van. Oh really? Uh, really? <laughs> bang a lot of chicks in it. Bang a lot of chicks in it, did he? Hey. Boy, if you're not passing out folksy wisdom, you're telling you're telling great stories. I tell you, <laughs> next to some of my stories, that this is amazing. <laughs> tell me more. This is an old van, huh? What would he, where would he go in the van? <laughs> be nice to each other. To around Oakland? What? Be nice to each other. The complex. Be nice today. Why would he be in Oakland? He lives in Vegas. Oh, the, the Raiders, Raiders were in, were in Oakland, Oakland before they moved to Vegas. Oh, you did say years ago that was part of the story. I forgot that part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So I'm not sorry. your fault, Ace. He, well, he nearly was wasn't. my fault. <laughs> Evidently, everyone, uh, this is an amazing story. <laughs> if you find oh, I can't wait for the movie. I'm in the minority of this. If you find yourself playing the slots at the airport at in Vegas. It's my understanding they have like some of the worst odds in the world. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Well, luckily, he can afford it. I mm. always play the slots yeah, at the airport. Yeah. Always. Really? Yes. Yeah. 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 I hope you already have your ticket and, and your drink coupons. Why not? <laughs> That's the way to kill time. They have slots at the the convenience stores. Yeah. It's great. Those mm -hmm. those always bum me. Those out. are really fun. No, I love that. I love it when you're driving through our great country <laughs> and you find a place where you can play slots in a gas station and you go, you know what? Weird call, but do your thing, Idaho. Let's go. Have a good time in there. There's always some eighty one year old. <laughs> yeah. just, do you love the casino? Does anybody like to gamble? Yeah, love I it. do. You do? Yeah. But I'm a table guy. I, I'm not uh. he used to gamble a lot, but uh, I always felt sad with people playing penny slots. Yeah, that's that's rough. Oh, you can win a lot on penny slots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how Mark Davis bought the team. Oh, made it. Maybe Daddy did. The point is the uh, genetic lottery. right now. Shake, uh, shake, 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 uh, shake Powerball. <laughs> it's big time. Try to get to a topic that's current. Are we? <laughs> Well, how said the guy who uh, camps out in 1969. <laughs> I bought a house. Yeah. You got property or vacation homes in 1972. <laughs> Are we going to do a pool, an office? We got to uh, put money in to ticket? buy tickets. Yeah, we don't talked we? about that yesterday. Let's yeah. do well, it. We got to do it today. There's another drawing today. Well, um, as sure as I'm sitting here, it won't happen. I got my dollar. 
<laughs> you can buy half a number. You, you're only going to be able to get three numbers. I don't think. We'll send someone out. In the meantime, back All at right. the sports page. Five new sports are being proposed for the 2028 Summer Olympic Program in Los Angeles. Oh, I like this. All right. In a proposal set to the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, the LA 28 Olympic and Paralympic Games, suggested the inclusion of these sports. Baseball, softball. Yes. No. Oh, you're no. out? You're, you don't care for that? Now, baseball has been an, an Olympic sport before, right? I believe softball has too, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I think, I you, often might, I think you might be right. Flag football. That's what Tyreek Hill of the uh, Dolphins said, that he was going to win a gold medal from the United States so do you think flag football. Uh, and this isn't... Oh, it's, this isn't the next one. This is the one after the next one. 2028. Because it would be so cool if Tom Brady <laughs> went out for the bitch. team. Mm. Leave him alone. No, I mean, that'd be great. What would be great about it? The, the fact that he won a gold medal? Tom the, Brady. The fact There's that it a, just, it just maybe shows Maybe they could that, make him a coach so he could get his... Uh, the seven Super Bowls weren't enough. Let's get him a gold medal. <laughs> do they still have that speed walking thing where it looks like people have a stick up their ass? What is that called? Yeah, they do. I thought they got rid of that because it was just so oh, embarrassing. I forget what that was called. <laughs> it's not speed walking. What is that? It's speed walking. Competitive it? Walking? it was just called yeah, speed I walking? So, yeah. I thought it had like right. a weird name. Okay, what, yeah, so what I, I, How do they know you weren't really running and just in a bad posture? <laughs> I, well, it looks, I, it looks we've ridiculous. talked about this on the air before, and uh, I looked up, you have to have one foot on the ground at all times. Yeah, there are rules. Yeah. yeah. How do they prove that? Uh, they have judges keeping an eye on them. But if you don't know do. this, uh, they do that at also like middle school track events, and so there's videos of, of kids doing that, and they just all look like they're late to class. It is <laughs> insane. <laughs> it is just so funny. Can't run in the hallway. Fast walking? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, cricket has also been uh, suggested. Lacrosse. Yes. And squash. Mm. Are th are these th should be based on what sports are the most international. Having American or North American football in the Olympics is ridiculous. It's uh, it, uh, it just favors the United States. I don't well, think that's... cricket would be number one here, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's, that, that would make sense then. If something that's international and... Well, I don't think that... According to the NFL, it's the, it's a worldwide sport now. Yeah, but you want American advertisers? Are they they're going to be more excited for football or baseball as opposed to cricket? Hmm. Okay. Well, American advertisers, as far as we're concerned, watching. you know, are they bringing we back? They have real money in this country. <laughs> are they bringing silly... back break? Is break dancing going to be? Uh, what is it? Rupees. <laughs> Rupees. <laughs> <laughs> They're, they are doing break dancing. I know in Paris as, a, as an Olympic sport. Yes, mm. I, I hope they. I hope they don't stop that because it's really making you mad. Um, what's like square dancing, ballet, break dancing will be cool. It'll Let me have... ask you why did you were you taught square dancing in high school during phys ed? Uh, really? Wasn't taught. We had one like square dancing day, mm -hmm. and we no one ever learned anything. It was very. They like brought in a guest speaker, and he had a cowboy hat and the whole thing. We embarrassed our teachers. What's that all about? I don't know. It was. Uh, it ha started happening in grades just below me. I never had to do it. You didn't have to. But do my it. brothers, I think, had to do it. We had to do it. Yeah, did you have to do it? Yeah. it was fun. I'm not. Be, I'm not I don't. Uh, there are great people that do it. I'm just saying, is it an Olympic sport? No. It'll it'll give us the coolest Olympic warm-ups ever. The USA Adidas <laughs> jumpsuits, like the break dancing, the b boy outfits yeah. with the flag on the arm. Oh, yes. my, they're gonna look so cool. And the cowboy hat, cowboy hat. Me and Chick are gonna be dripped out <laughs> in USA break dancing. Respect. Gear. And in all drip. seriousness, I ask the following: Will the break dancing competition in Paris be indoors or outdoors? Probably indoors. And, and is it BYOC? Bring your own cardboard. <laughs> is, is, there, is, is, is there going to be a dude with a boombox just to make it authentic? <laughs> they probably have a special uh, surface that they're an Olympic type. Surface. I hope oh. it's cardboard. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> and it gets really hot in Paris, doesn't well, you it? You know, the cardboard was to protect them from the cement. It of course. Wasn't, it's not, it's, it's, well, plus it's, it's easier to the... spin around on cardboard. Than <laughs> than are, are, are they, they going to be interviewing people? They're going to be discussing, though, this cardboard sucks. And, and yeah, just, right. it's, I, I want the natural turf cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what time of year it is? That's right. It's Raycon's birthday. Oh, yeah? Did you guys know that? No. Raycon's turning six years old. They're the best. And in that time, Raycon and their everyday earbuds, they've made a name for themselves in the premium audio space. They're known for delivering high-quality audio and thoughtful features like your seamless Bluetooth syncing, your 32-hour battery life, your gel tips that fit every ear, every made. Ergo, the perfect in-ear fit for all-day wear and lasting comfort. Plus... 
Raycon gives you 20 to 40% off premium electronics. No wonder they've already racked up 78,000 five-star reviews at Raycon. And this past year, they expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon Home and Raycon Power Tech. So needless to say, there is a lot to celebrate about Raycon's birthday. And to thank everyone who's shown them support over the past six years, Raycon is offering 20% off everything on their site with select products up to 40%. Celebrate Raycon turning six with their biggest sale of the year going on now. Hurry over to buyraycon.com slash Tom. There's a code. It's secret. It's birthday to get 20 to 40% off site wide. That's code's birthday at buyraycon.com slash Tom. 20 to 40% off. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. We get love letters. I love my Raycon earbuds. I'm not just saying that. I love them. And uh, you will too. They uh, The best thing, they, they link right up. They don't fall out of your ear. And they sound great. Raycon earbuds. Tell them the Bob and Tom show sent you. What was that code again? Birthday? Birthday. Yeah, very, very nice. Coming up, uh, where are you? Pumpkin or pumpkin? What are you? Pumpkin. Uh, also coming up, a little present for Willie. Uh, I'll tell you, you can get a present for Willie by seeing him live. Louisville Comedy Club tonight. And there's a pre-game and post-game wings barbecue. Or what is it again? <laughs> it's not wings. It's chicken fingers at O'Shea's Bar. But yeah, let's make the focus is on Louisville Comedy Club. Okay, Open sorry. For Joey Molinero, very funny guy. Yeah. Oh, well, cool. Well, we'll be right back. It's the Bob and Tom Show. This is Jimmy Pardo. You are listening. Chick said earlier he's never touched a cow before, but the rumors about the girls he's dated are not quite on the side. Oh, my God, the humanity. Oh, 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 oh,
can see this. <laughs> we, Run! we have the turd man here. It's, been, it's under control. The turd man is All right. here. Okay. Hi, everybody. Chick McGee here from the Bob and Tom Show. I want to tell you about the NFL season coming up. We got together with the folks at Big Green Egg, and each and every week, you're going to have a chance to win a Mini Max Big Green Egg during the Pigskin Pick'em program on the Bob and Tom Show. John looked at me and goes, might as well. <laughs> I laughed for two minutes. <laughs> Is that right? Had you, ha had you had some beers? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Bob and Tom. For your information, these are two of the worst kids I have ever encountered in my life. And I worked the state fair. We were stupid before stupid was cool. Brigham All Broadcasting presents another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. The year was 1912. The place... Hocker on Rhine, Germany. <laughs> After several complaints about unsanitary conditions from competitors in a sledding event, it was determined that some of the participants were unaware of the precise nature of a particular event. Once the officials removed all the phlegm balls from the course and explained that the name of the event was pronounced luge and not loogie. <laughs> the competition continued without any further problems. Uh, ironically, the eventual winner of the luge event was an Austrian named Karl Boogermeister. <laughs> he took the gold medal by a narrow margin mm. over Norwegian athlete <laughs> Uh, who was disqualified? <laughs> <laughs> this has been another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. Josh Arnold is here. Hi, Chick. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee. And here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much, Chick McGee. Hmm. Uh, we have... Um, some uh, sad news in the world of sports today. I'm oh, no. Uh, yeah, what... Uh, God. Uh, let's do it so you'll shut up about it. I just think it's... What happened? Well, you remember this. Take me like a dog, Elvis. <laughs> Nothing sad about that. Take me like a dog, Elvis. That, of course, the phrase uh, stated by the 104-year-old woman as she was plummeting to earth in a tandem jump. Mm. Oh, no. With a... Uh, with a... Uh, with a <clears throat> an instructor uh, in the parachute world right behind her. And she did set the record. Yeah. But now, she's passed away. <gasps> oh, she has? Oh. Yes. On October 1st, Mrs. Dorothy Hoffner of Chicago, probably like the bears and butkus. Oh, so she was shot? <laughs> made a tandem <laughs> skydive. <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> Josh, Josh, usually I hate the sentiment of that joke. <laughs> the age of this woman. <laughs> that, that, that is so... This is the thought that even <laughs> old, old people can't just walk around. <laughs> Wait a second. There they are. There they are. Okay, don't take your shot till the shoot opens. Oh, you got her. It's like slow skeet. She's got the cart. <laughs> She's still in the record book is the world's oldest skydiver. Well, good for her. She died in her sleep on October 9th. Oh, boy. The current record holder <clears throat> is... Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. What does this mean? Oh, they've not yet certified Ms. Mrs. Mrs. Hoffner. Hoffner. Oh, like the base. What? Yeah. Rush that. Put it at the top of the stack. Are you kidding me? And as uh, someone who compiled this story... <laughs> put this in the uh, story for no reason. Uh, the current record holder is 103 years old. Oh, the current living, okay. Oh, no, no, I'm No, sorry. no, we don't know. We the don't current, know that. We don't know uh, that. Because they haven't... Completely... They haven't certified okay. Ms. Hoffner's record from last week. Well, well once they do, she will once, be the... Yeah. Is the 103-year-old record holders, uh, are they still alive? Don't know. 
They've got to expedite. Right. There's got to be an expedite process. There's a bunch of 12-year-olds solving Rubik's Cubes blindfolded. They've got yeah. plenty yeah, of time. With, I'm with you on this, Willie. Why Why does this just take weeks? <laughs> well, miss, we have a process. Here at Guinness, we're very serious about this. Well, you just saw me. You just saw me do it. <laughs> I was up there with Elvis. Well, what, ah. has to, what has to go on that this has to be? Take me like a dog, Elvis. Oh, all right. <laughs> I can do that, and then we'll okay the record, right? <laughs> 100, 104. That's that's old. That is old. Well, good for her. And she went <laughs> she went peacefully. Yes. Good. <clears throat> so it didn't get a crack at that other record, though. What was the well, other record? Remember, I, I'm trying to remember. She said that she wanted to. Oh, she wanted to go up in a hot air balloon. Long, oh. Longest time in a bed. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Now, Pat's been quiet all morning. He's kind of tired. <laughs> Two hours. We'll see a concert has been. I got you, nothing. you have a song? I told you I got nothing. All right. We have a song about. Well, what? Uh, no, I mean, geez, I'm happy. I'm in a relationship. I went to a great show. I work with wonderful people. I oh, have nothing. Shut up and sing a song. <laughs> oh, now I feel inspired. There it is. There's that inspiration. Oh, is this, is this a, maybe a knockoff of a, an Eagle song? They were so great in concert. I have inspired? those. We have a whole <laughs> yeah, day to get to them. I have those. But, but this is not one of them. I got nothing. Oh, nothing funny to say. Because I'm in a great mood. Good things are coming my way. Oh, I don't got nothing Time I can't complain. My comedy came from heartbreak, ooh, tragedy, and pain. Oh, no more drama, no more stress. I'm not hungover and I'm not depressed. No more sad, lonely times. Oh, I'm not horny, I'm satisfied. I got nothing. Oh, I got nothing. I'm in love. <laughs> no funny songs to play. Uh, I've had a troubled life, many old girlfriends. Relationships always come to an end, but they inspired many. <laughs> Comedy songs, the new stuff's no good, but they sure are long. <laughs> I got nothing, but nothing funny to sing. Thank you, Snatch Mo. <laughs> so I'll oh. just sit here smiling and not write one damn thing. Oh, oh, thank man. you very much, Betty G. A happy song. Yeah, that's very good. For once, right? yeah, glad you had a nice evening. With Boy, your, I fucked your fantastic. lady. Whoa! <laughs> fantastic. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, we had a good you fantastic. You know the rule. The, the, wow. the rule of radio. If we, if we start with the sound, uh, the fa sound, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you finish. You don't just... You, you don't just <laughs> we got in and out easy. We had a fantastic <laughs> evening. Okay. Okay. Um, oh. Well, it was... Thank you very much, Patty G. Uh, by that, that reminds me. Pat Godwin, look at this thing. What? He's going to be at the funny po the funny pone. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> He's going to be at the funny bone. The funny pone. Is, <laughs> I'm afraid to in say. In Hooverville near you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hooverville, nice, nice. Hooverville. The, the, uh, <laughs> I, I'm afraid to say anything with a, a fa sound after yeah, yes. after you <laughs> fooled around. The funny bone in St. Charles, Missouri. Coming up uh, Friday, October 27th, and Saturday the 28th. And then, uh, by the while I'm at it, uh, Saturday, November 4th, the Ho-Chunk Casino in the Wisconsin Dells with, uh, that's you're going to be there? No, uh, Willie's going to be there. That'll be really cool. What's up? And then, once again, Willie tonight, the Louisville Comedy Club. Uh, and uh, how do you find those tickets? Go to my Instagram, at Willie.Griswold. There's a ticket link in the bio to come see me and Joey Molinero. He's headlining. He's very funny. Great. Thank you very much. Now, we return to the sports page after the, announcing the sad death of Ms. Hoffner. They Stupid it for you. world. Well, rest in the peace there, Hoffy. A uh, uh, fisherman, Josh, and a professional guide may have broken two fishing records after they reeled in a massive, and I didn't even know this was a thing, an alligator gar. Oh, yeah, those are nasty. Art Weston, a Kentucky resident, went to East Texas to catch the alligator gar with the help of an expert guide and fisherman, Captain Kirk Kirkland. Wow. Kirkland, a full-time fisherman, alligator gar guide. He can be found on the water 250 days out of the year, he says. On September 2nd, Weston joined Captain Kirkland on the boat, the Gar Ship Enterprise. 
Is that right? And went out wait, to wait, 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 wait. Captain Kirkland? Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk Kirkland oh, on the Guard great. Ship that's Enterprise. That's great. I, I love, love this. Yep, I am in. They went out to Lake Sam Rayburn in the hope of catching a 130-pound fish. It's one of the species that people travel from every country in the world to fish for, and we have the best population right here in the Trinity River, said Captain Kirk. Kirk. Trinity, what do they look like? They look uh, <laughs> hideous. I guess this is the best picture in the story that you can kind of sort of see that's just the back end of it they're long yeah and big that's, that's that's your fisherman there he's back at the back but that is a the beast rest of the fish a beast 238 pounds <laughs> my goal weight <laughs> uh the two men were fishing with a six pound line needed a place that offered a sandy bottom wait with wait minimal snags Just hang on okay which is why lake sam rayburn was the perfect choice the drawback of this area there would be fewer fish i was willing to take that trade off they said, and I can soon get this up. Weston and Kirkland set up two reels, cut bait, placed them in their rod holders. It says six-pound test. I don't know what to tell you. Wow. The angler successful reeled in two, uh, caught two gars before uh, they record-breaking treasure. All of a sudden, one of the reels started to scream, and the fish grabbed the bait and took off in a straight line. Uh, they s fought the alligator gar nonstop for an hour. Two hours and 45 minutes. Jeez. Okay, there's a picture of this thing. Uh, these look prehistoric. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Ah. They are hideous. Do they bite? Mm. Look I mean, at the nose on that thing. That's, yeah, that's... They that's, do have teeth, right? Yeah. That, well, that's one of the problems of catching them is that they bite your line. The color of the fins make me think that it's fake. It looks like a fake, like a prop fish for a movie or a video game or something. I've caught regular gar. I've never caught an alligator gar. And I never catch them on purpose. They always just, they'll, they'll go yeah. after you. They're kind of annoying. Have you ever caught they kind the, of are. Have you ever caught the smaller gars, the garellos? I have not <laughs> caught a gorilla yet. They're sort of tubular. It's, it wasn't. It did it with thank you. Uh, playing along. Uh, and I haven't caught any of those. They're, they're sort of blonde. The Terry Gars. <laughs> wow, I think we've Where's reached the applause. I think we've. I think we've reached the end. Oh, we have. No yeah. Way. Yeah, I think we're done with the gar hunk. Uh, we can uh, move on. No more gars. Records are both currently pending because we've already. We've already covered the Guinness guys are out there with uh, blindfolded Rubik's Cube solvers. Just all these children are cutting in front <laughs> Garmin, of them. Garmin, most oh, no. bodies of water. You'll, you get, you have your... Uh, you know, they find them. Uh, oh. Garmin. <laughs> <laughs> are Garmin still a thing? I don't know. I don't, that uh, was, yeah, they are. They are with Especially those. with uh, fish finders and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And on boats, you'll find Garmins. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Garmin. Garmin. Garmin Navigator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you have your river, you know, Gars, uh, rivers, uh, mm. Gars, creeks. We have to stop the show. For Gar brooks. The world is <laughs> the world is full oh, of that'd be funny of fish. That's <laughs> that's <laughs> I have friends underwater. Do you, do you get the reference that he just made? The um, uh, male, Fred, Fred Garvin. Fred Garvin, male prostitute. No. Well, when the world was young, Dan Aykroyd did this character on Saturday Night Live. The company sent me. Brad Garvin, male prostitute. <laughs> hey, he looks right at the camera when he says it. It's and he's very poorly he's dressed. He's wearing bad sunglasses and, <laughs> yeah. and an a, awful hat. And a checked fedora. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is yeah. pure comedy genius. And yeah. I remember it like I remember it doesn't get a lot of laughs at no. first. Like nobody's no. really <laughs> nobody going, really what? cares for What's it. What's going on? But Aykroyd never gives up. He just keeps <laughs> saying Brad Garvin. I saw this video of him and he was like, Yeah, after Blues Brothers, what I was twenty seven years old and I was like, Oh, I should just give up on everything. Are you kidding me? <laughs> he's the greatest of all time yeah. when he was 27. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I guess I was talking to those Ghostbuster guys. There's a picture of me with the Ghostbuster dudes. Mm -hmm. Not the, by the way, let's say we were just talking about Dan Aykroyd. These were not the real Ghostbusters you were talking to. It kind oh, of, yeah. But there's a, there's like an international club where they get the uniforms. And everything. Yeah, good charity people. But they were saying apparently in real life, Aykroyd and his whole family, I guess, are really into uh, ghosts and stuff. And that's where oh. this whole thing emerged from. Oh. His brother, a, particularly, Peter Aykroyd, was... Encyclopedia. Of oh, really? Superman. Wow. Okay, yeah, he, he passed away, but yeah. And we he's were a ghost himself now. We were we were talking about. <laughs> you know, he's an expert. Mm -hmm. And we we were talking about ghosts yesterday, mm -hmm. and we've received a lot of really scary letters about people that have seen stuff. You know, yeah. the, the ones that are really disturbing to me are the ones where they they see over and over again. It'll be oh, there's always a guy in our dining room. Yeah, he just lives there too. Yeah. Yeah, like but, you just share the space. 
No, thanks. I have an email here from a listener. Hey, first of all, if he's going to share the space, then he's going to clean it. <laughs> so I was ah, yeah, going to throw right. in on this mortgage. Yeah. This email, uh, it says, uh, ooh, <laughs> ooh. It was like it's a- signed a ghost. <laughs> My gosh. That a is, ghost email. First, first of all, may I point out, you sold the hell out of that. <laughs> Boy, yeah. okay. that, yeah. was, that was really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. There's the email. Yeah. 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 Much, much like right Aykroyd, you didn't quit. No, 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 no matter how. Yeah. Yeah. To that little laugh. No, no, no. Yeah. Dan Aykroyd's bit, of course, paid off with dude because it was brilliant. Then there was, uh, conversely, there was there was that. You didn't care for the email uh, from the ghost? Uh, uh, huh. I like to think that a ghost would. They'd fax. <laughs> <laughs> Antiquated. <laughs> well, this ain't much of a world world record, but let's do it. Huh? Ready? World yeah. <laughs> a teacher from Illinois has broken the Guinness World Record for the longest career as a social studies teacher. Really? Give the, give the guy a, a, a fortune if you can. Seventy-six year old Paul Duritz earned the title on September first. He started his. 53rd year teaching at Woodland Middle School. Middle School. 50. Wow. Oh, man. The See, hardest that, of the yeah, school. Yeah, that's, uh-huh. this guy deserves a, a giant bonus. I mean, when he started, he used to have to confiscate sk- cigarettes from children. Sure. And now he has to confiscate vapes. I mean, this world is yeah. going by too fast for him. <laughs> yeah, when he, when he started 53 years ago. Yeah, yeah, his he confiscates phones. Back in his day, it was a telegraph. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Morse, what do you got over there? <laughs> We're going to code our Morse sure, sure. telegraph. <laughs> it's the kind of knowledge I have right at the tip of the. Good for him. He's not yet retired because he loves teaching and imparting knowledge to younger generations. Although he does not have any plans to break any additional record titles, he would like to attempt to be the longest-serving teacher at the same school and to break his current record of 53 years as a social studies teacher he's going to keep teaching all right no plans to retire Good for him there you go Good for you sir and uh he we can teach history he's lived through a lot of it <laughs> and he's been teaching for 53 years yeah but boy it, he's got to be making close to forty thousand dollars <laughs> Yeah. Raise every year. give this guy a bonus buddy. i agree oh <laughs> lord middle school i mean you yeah you know, You've never... Yeah, They're the worst. You, you've never heard someone say, oh, 14, that's a great age. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's not. That's, that's very, that's very, talk yeah. about you, Willie. That's, that's very funny. There should be a place to send them between... <laughs> really? Between, Boy. what is it about? What would you say about 12? Send them when they turn 12, send them away till they're... 32. That's why God created you know, military schools. Well, most people... <laughs> right the core, the core, the core. Most people wanted to deal with like three or four 13-year-olds. You could have stopped. You know, it was your call. Oh! Go get second. him, Willie. Pat, how old is your son? He's going to be 13 November 7th. Oh! Okay. Yes. Already showing signs of... Uh... Absolutely. Yeah, very <laughs> Both of you, Pat, both you and Tom could have kept your peen in your pants. No kidding. Mm. Uh, you... Willie, turn around. Oh. What, what's going on? I got two little presents for you back Those there. Those things? Oh. They're, in, they're in boxes. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, Present time. Gifts. Uh, yeah, okay. That, mm-hmm. Now, Willie takes it. It's something. It's it looks like it's going to unfold. Oh, you, this is your, this is your, you're correcting. Okay. Oh. What is it? What is it? It's it's Show it to Dean. It's, it's a, it's, it's a, a doormat. doormat. It says Willie G. And uh, I'll say thank you for spelling my name correctly this time. And it looks like a, uh, it looks like an amplifier. That's guitar, cool. Guitar no, amp. It's very cool. This is just, the last time my dad got me a gift was like four years ago. Yeah. Him, him and Kelly got me this thing. They're like, hey, by the way, this is no big deal. We hope you enjoy it. Really cool doormat shaped like an LP, a record. All right. And it says Willie Griswold established. 1994, uh-huh. and that's the year after I was born. Right. No. Well, <laughs> well, that first year was rough. Yeah. yeah so don't count that first year. You were, Some now, are you open, telling me you were the other, instantly uh, established? <laughs> yeah. Open the other box. Um, <laughs> okay, we, uh, Here we go. So it's, this is it's the, the giant the, vinyl record. Oh. This is the replacement. So thank you. Fine. Willie I'll just, G. I'll, I'll just go. Thank you, Amy, for ordering this. These are the gifts. They're collections. I, yes. I ordered it, too. Gratitude. And, and, and you have to give your uh, father some grace. Uh, he did put the term dropped on that record. Look at it carefully. I Instead of, I made it say dropped. He hates To be term. in the current parlance. Much yes. the way the Josh Arnold Half Fat album will be dropped. <laughs> coming up November 3rd. Isn't that cool? Oh, this right, well, year, you know, right. Don't turn my gift into a plug for Josh. I Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. No, but she's really yeah, rude. Chip pointed out, I did deliberately change it to say dropped. No, it's very kind. Thank you very much, Dad. And we ordered it right the first time, and the company made a mistake. That you're that a liar. You're just a liar. <laughs> that is absolutely you, you know what? I have a lot of children. I you know can't what? be expected <laughs> to do math. You know what? I can't be expected to do math. He's not wrong. The company made the mistake. 
of following his directions. <laughs> they should have talked yes. to Amy. They should know Willie. <laughs> They're in Chicago. They, they should. should. Yeah. Willie, a are, pretty good liar. Are, are those indoor I mats or outdoor percent. mats? Uh, I think they're indoor mats. So you can I, put one in front of the sink and one, uh, that kind of thing? Yeah, sure. Mine's in front of the sink. <laughs> what? Yours is by the sink? Mm -hmm. Oh, you got one of those too? You, you got, got a, you got a Willie mat? A few years ago. What, not, not me? She did? <laughs> what? Yes. She Wouldn't probably be. got you something different. I'm sure she did. Okay. Yeah, she's a good gift giver. Yeah. Now, yeah. Um, I hope she gave me two of them. You so can put that in front of your plate. Crap on one and cover it up with the other. <laughs> That's what I wanted. Okay. Now, um, uh, All right. coming up. Oh, geez. Look at the time. Um, I tried to tell you. Uh, sorry. Uh, coming up, we have what? One more world record. Oh, God. Okay. And um, <laughs> we have uh, chick chickens in the news. Jesus. Well, opinions vary. <laughs> we have some good um, sex news coming up. But what? it's about a pumpkin, pumpkin. <laughs> uh, Shut about up. That? Good sex. <laughs> I like good sex. <laughs> Maybe you get me some of them French fried Rattles potatoes back right there. He had mustard on uh, French fries. Your thoughts, Josh? Uh, not for me. No. Maybe honey mustard. Now sure, you got sure, yeah. After a good Roger and I like to have some potatoes. Oh uh, you know. Now you know where he's over there slamming ham. Uh, yeah. yeah. He don't want to swipe it right there in the old he slot probably room. Go. Yeah, slot slot room. Room. <laughs> so be right back. No. This is the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom. changes you'd like to make in the world right i gotta now. tell you okay first of all uh as as you guys know uh i, I drive i drive a cadillac uh -huh. i drive a, and if you don't know cadillac is kind of considered the mercedes of cars it's a it's a real big car and it goes real fast and mm -hmm. i can't always follow all the rules of the road mm -hmm. okay so I'm barreling down the street, and I guess the light was red. Who can tell at that speed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I got the photo ticket. Oh, sure. yeah. If you've never oh. gotten the, what it is, is you're going through the intersection, then there's a flash of light, and you think, ah, I hit 88. I'm going back in time, right? You know, yeah. finally a chance to go try to break up my parents before they can uh, get together at the child abandonment under the sea dance. That uh, seems but, negative. Oh, boy. It's not, but it's not that at all. Mike, not, they're not, the police aren't even going to work anymore. They're just setting up a yeah. camera and calling it good. Uh -huh. They're caparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame them. Uh, I don't blame all the laws that, that they're supposed to. How do they, we get it. You get in your car. You got to wear a seatbelt. Why do you wear a seatbelt? Because it's the right thing to do. No, because the man tells you have to. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. Click it or tick it, mm -hmm. jackass. Uh -huh. Right? Because your government is very, very concerned about your health and safety, and they always have been. And if you got a kid, they're really concerned about your kid's health and safety. Because if you got a kid, you got to put the kid in the car seat, then put him in the back seat. Then there's a wreck, and the airbags come out, and the good ones they jettison the car seat from the car. Then a parachute comes out and the kid gently floats to the ground like the beginning of I Dream of Genie because <laughs> the government is very, very concerned about your children's health and safety and seatbelts are a big part of that. Mm -hmm. Really? Uh -huh. Ever seen a school bus? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, the yeah. only seatbelt there goes around the 50-year-old parolee driving the damn thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. That dude's strapped in like he's going to lethal injection. <laughs> Meanwhile, the kids are in the back flying around like lottery balls. No. <laughs> Your government does not make you put on a seatbelt to protect you. They make you put on a seatbelt to control you. Uh -huh. They make you put on a seatbelt because it's the only tangible way that can physically tie you up during the day. How about... <laughs> <laughs> Click it or take responsibility for your own health and safety because this is America and not some fascist regime. What are you saying, Og? You saying you're against seatbelts? You're damn right I'm against seatbelts. <laughs> I do like porn, uh, but I'm going to ask you guys a favor. We get a lot of emails sent to the show. You can stop sending me porn clips, okay? I, uh, thanks, but no thanks. I, I appreciate it, but I'll be honest, I want to find my own porn, okay? T-Rex doesn't want to be fed. T-Rex wants to hunt. That's... Cabinets are here. Now, um, uh, Tim, we need to get to this because we have a time deadline here. We're hoping to hook up with uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Beautiful. So, all so right. Move it forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they seem to have all the time in the world until you guys got in here. Yeah, it's sad, isn't it?
What do you got? Let's we go. love these guys. Here we go. Are ready to go? Let's go. Writer's block, writer's block, writer's block, that's what I've got. You think I'm kidding, but I'm not. I've got writer's block. Yes, he's got writer's block. Writer's block, yes, I know. This is where the joke should go. Is there a joke there? No. Yeah. I got writer's block. <laughs> yes, he's got writer's block. <laughs> this is good. This is better really than rehearsal. Is. Really? That was rehearsed a couple years ago, right? I started out, my mind was blank. I sat and thought an hour. By then my mind was even blanker. La, 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 la. <laughs> la, 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 la. Writer's block, it's not fair. I'm sitting in my lucky chair, and I can't find funny anywhere. I've got, got writer's, writer's block. block. Mm, I've got, got writer's block. block. <laughs> Blow a whistle. Ring a bell. Blow a whistle again. Because I can't write a joke. No, writer's block, writer's block. That's the song, that's all I've got. Somewhere over the rainbow, blue birds fly. I stole that line, yeah, it's not mine, because I have writer's block. Yes, he has writer's block. He claims it's writer's block. It's always writer's block. He's never not had writer's block. Hey, you guys, I think it's time we get some new singers. I'm getting tired <laughs> of you guys. <laughs> Yeah. Nice ringing the bell. Bravo. Thanks very much. Oh, uh, Tim Cavanaugh on the Cabinets. we ever did. It. And the writer's block song. Dugan. Dave Dugan joins us David in the studio. Dugan. David Dugan. <laughs> My formal name. You sound like a grand wizard. <laughs> David Dugan, grand wizard. Stop. <laughs> you have a couple young children. A couple young kids. Raising kids at that age is sort of like being hazed into a fraternity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like a two-minute time period the other day when I uh, changed a dirty diaper, uh, picked up, grounded out, grounded up uh, fruit chews out of the carpet. Uh, while chocolate milk was being spilled down my back. Jeez, <laughs> mm -hmm. if I could to pants myself, I'd be a Fidel right now. But, uh... <laughs> Jeff Rothband is our guest. Uh, Jeff is a fine, fine comedian. <laughs> I um, actually had to do that once. What? Be a pallbearer. And that, oh, my that's God. That's heavy. Yes, that's a heavy, heavy job. Yeah. I actually had to go to a funeral, and I was asked to be a pallbearer, and I, uh, <laughs> always a pallbearer. <laughs> 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 Never the corpse. Never the corpse. <laughs> Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. I can hear you. Oh, no. You're talking out your ass again. Bob and sort of defines unfunny. Shut up. <laughs> Everybody, well, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Defining unfunny. That's how Tom described me. I define no. unfunny. I'm kidding. That was Jess brilliant. Hooker a, a brilliant reference, yet confusing. <laughs> Jess Hooker oh, at the news desk. Hi. There's Pat Godwin. Hello, Chip. There's <laughs> Willie Griswold. Hey, man. Josh Arnold is here. Defining Unfunny. That's my favorite. That should be my next album. That should. If I were going to well, ever bother. Still time. <laughs> yeah. Well, hiding again. Yeah. The, the way things are going. Let me do 2040. <laughs> but, you'll, but, but you'll at least. Wow. You'll finish it by. Man, you'll finish it by 2038. Hey. It'll just be two years since. Let's call it Half Dead. <laughs> Josh's album Half Fat will be out November 3rd. Ace Cosby. Sorry. I'm checking. Here's Tom. This Go is ahead. Tom speaking. Thank you very much for the introduction. <laughs> I think instead of uh, releasing my album to everybody for like uh, whatever five ten dollars to stream uh -huh. it or download it, mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm gonna do what uh, was it? Who, who was it? That Wu Tang Clan. Yeah, and then Martin Screlly, that pharmacy guy, brought bought yeah. the record. I'm just like, gonna have one released and just highest bidder. Oh, oh. Right. I'm in for twenty if I'll shut it off. <laughs> Two zero, by the way. Twenty one. Not, not Twenty one. Uh, 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 <laughs> speaking of comedy, Willie G tonight, the Louisville Comedy Club, and tickets are available where? 
Go to my Instagram at Willie.Griswold. There's a ticket link in the bio. Come hang out. Me and Joey Molinero. He's headlining. Going to be fun. And then um, we've got a special edition of this show on the radio November 17th. It's a Friday morning. We're going to have uh, Duke Tomato and the boys, including the Brass to Mouth Horns, for a special show at the North Star um, Mohican Casino Resort in um, Bowler, Wisconsin. We certainly hope you can join us there. And then there two, we two shows that night. Oh, nice. Uh, two shows that night. Uh, some tickets available for the second show, I think. The first one I know for sure is sold out. North Star Casino Resort slash Entertainment. One last plug. Congratulations to Corey Cravey. <laughs> Rhymes with gravy. Uh, Corey is our big winner for the Big Green Egg Mini Max this week. He won week five. Got 13 of 14 games. An eight-way tie. He had the tiebreakers. Corey Cravey from Clovis, California. Wavy Cravey, they call him. He's a bit of a hippie. Yeah. Oh, kind of a Woodstock reference? <laughs> That's right. Okay, and wow. I'm sure um, Corey is like 23, so he'll have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Maybe he's oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he likes the rapper, the rapper yeah. Young Cravey, then. Let's go he down very a little well bit. Yeah, how yes. about that? Is there a guy named Young Cravey? Stupid young Gravy. World record. A Minnesota horticulture teacher. You know, you can lead a horticulture, but she won't learn anything. <laughs> Tom, your thoughts. Uh, thank you. Uh, a new record for the world's heaviest pumpkin, Mr. Travis Gainers, G E G I E N G E R. Change your name. Giner. Giner. Travis Giner. Oh, God, I hope it's not Giner. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Giner. Hey, he said to go to Huge Giner. Oh, well, that's his wife. That is a big one. You see, I can't breathe. You see Mrs. Giner? They live over there in the. Well, uh, the well what about Grandma Giner? I'm over there in the kitchen. Oh, old Lady Giner. <laughs> you seen Old Lady Giner? Carry oh, me back to Old Lady Virginia. <laughs> not fun. Giner, oh, Giner. Giner. We're working well here. Thought our middle initial was. Uh -oh. How big was the pumpkin? <laughs> Two thousand seven hundred forty-nine. It doesn't even look like a pumpkin. Have you seen this thing? It's a, it's a gourd. <laughs> Old lady <She's> Giner. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a song like that, Pat? I have a five of them. <laughs> <laughs> you have a classic like that. I do? Yeah. Oh, we'll have to get to it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we remember it. Anyway. Um, I don't. Um, it so it really the, isn't a pumpkin. It's a gourd. Yeah. 50th oh. World Championship. That's how, no, don't, no. That sounds like something you would say. Well, it's not actually. Sometimes we criticize uh, things in others that we don't like about ourselves. <laughs> exactly. 50th World Championship pumpkin way off in Half Moon Bay, California. The gargantuan gourd beats the previous world record of 2,702 pounds. Giner won. <laughs> yes? A uh, $30,000 prize for growing the biggest pumpkin and setting the world record. I like to think that he corrects people, too. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Gainer. Oh, uh, it's Giner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have you seen this thing, Josh? I mean, it, it it's really disgusting. It's kind Josh of a blob, or, uh, right? Did you say yeah, Josh we... or Jess? <laughs> it sounds like you said both. No, I was asking Josh, because okay. uh, Jess has already seen no, it. Let me take a look. Yeah. It's, uh, it's um... Like this big blob, but it's and it's huge. And get your hands off me! <laughs> get your hands off me! Oh my gosh, that was adorable. Josh, that you was just, uncomfortable you really for all of us. <laughs> yeah, I think you touched him more than his son has in his entire life. You're exactly right. I, got, I touched his shoulder one time in the hospital. That was it. That was gross. Gross. It reminds me of you, Josh. That what? That <laughs> that blob like mass does? No, but just it's husky and full of seed. <laughs> does it look like is it kinda orange? I'm not that full of seed. <laughs> is it kinda yeah, orange or that color? husky? <laughs> Is, What's is, that? Is the no, it's got a greenish, oh, orange, really? greenish, yeah. I was hoping it looks like a like a spray-tanned, uh, heavy-breasted woman when she lays down. Sadly, <laughs> no. It doesn't, because when no gravity kind of takes over. They do yeah, kind of like, like, look like that sometimes. Right, like, right. Big pumpkins. Man, yeah. I love that. Yeah, they do mm -hmm. look kind of like boobs, though, from this angle. Yeah, they do. Kind of like yeah, the, you the, guys. The Grand Tetons. Like cool. Giners and boobs. Anything. Giners, <laughs> Giners and Tetons. Giners and boobs. Giners and boobs. We both love uh, Giners and boobs. boobs. <laughs> Jess, I didn't say anything. So. Oh, well, now, you're, I play with you're the boobs and I look at the <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Jess, you were speaking. No, it's okay. I was speaking with respect. I like the lay down thing. It's my favorite thing. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Um, you guys can make anything about boobs, can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're great, though. That's they are. Why. They really are. But this, but this particular 
uh, gourd or pumpkin does mm-hmm. have kind of two separate spheres at the top. Yeah. yeah it's try, huge. Try to explain it to us on a, on a scientific level, would you? That would help everyone. Okay, well, uh, there's a dude standing next to it. Oh, yeah? You mean a gentleman. <laughs> I was trying to... Do you think that's Mr. Giner? Is it Giner? Giner? What do we do? Giner, Giner, or Giner? Uh, I don't I even like think Giner. it's anything close to Giner. It could we be just... Giner. Well, you know what's close to Giner? Well, <laughs> taint. Taint? <laughs> no, you know what's hey, close to... I didn't I'm buzz sorry. in. Sorry. You know what's close to Giner? A team of attorneys. <laughs> Giner. Very close. Yes. Oh, I got you. Exactly right. Well, this is a, this this would be good for you to make like a Cinderella movie. Oh, remember the big pumpkin turns into sure, a house? Yeah, oh, she could have like a, carriage, uh, yeah. she could have a house. Turn it into an Escalade or an Airbnb. It's, this thinging's big. That's the shoe. Well, aren't these all water, though? Isn't that huh? the thing about these big pumpkins? Oh, the old lady with yeah, the shoe. Yeah, there's a ton of water. Yeah. Isn't that how they grow them? Just, Lots of was, water. Leave a hose milk. on. Yeah. Milk-fed milk, milk fed pumpkins, right? Huh? Milk-fed pumpkins uh, yeah. are uh, they're they're fat. Yeah, yeah they are good. They are good. You can get one at Whole Foods for $12,000. You know what name I'm calling you? Look it up. <laughs> Milk fed pumpkins. Right. Look it up. Okay. I, wasn't, I wasn't familiar with that. Is that sports? Uh, Shouldn't it be? I yes. hope so. Oh. This is what you farted for. Whatever you go, whatever you do, don't ever forget. You're spending the night with Fred Jarvin, <laughs> male prostitute. Thank you very much, Jess. Jess, what's coming up? Uh, we have swans and uh, the Alabama Library. Can you eat swan? No. Like breast you can. Swan, you breast can. Swan. They it's don't illegal. recommend it. It's illegal. You can't buy it. Oh, but but it tastes like, that makes it. Taste does it taste good. like chicken? And how do you? That's know? not true. We have a story about it. We'll the swans back. truck would come through my neighborhood almost every day <laughs> and deliver. Oh, that's Schwan. Schwan. <laughs> Schwan. Love that guy. We have what defining unfunny. <laughs> <laughs> the cleanliness of bathrooms. We've got fossils. Sex yeah. activity. What? For old guys. Yep. Oh, I want more. Oh. Sex for the elderly. <laughs> yep. uh, take me like a dog, Johnson. <laughs> Johnson. Johnson. Oh, Light Light. Light Light Light, light rather. She's got another one. I'll be right back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Just got to get a hold of us. Call, fax, mail, or email. Get all. There's a monkey here riding a dog. <laughs> yes, there is. Hi. And the monkey's name is... Where's uh, the camera? Dawn. Okay, Dawn the monkey. Dawn the monkey and Dan the dog, right? And uh, wow. the dog's name is Dan. Dan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the um, the doggy has a little saddle. Oh, look at that. And the, <laughs> and the monkey's you know, riding around uh, our at studio. At first glance, it doesn't appear as though the monkey has any control over where the dog, where the dog goes. Quite clear. Is the, is the monkey steering? The I don't dog? think the monkey is steering. Um, He's got he reins. He does have reins. Can I put my hand out? Will the monkey bite my finger? Or? Don't uh-huh. dare spit in my pop, monkey. Oh, yeah. Oh, this Look at that little sweet. guy. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, 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 my God. She's drinking from James's glass. James, uh, I hope that's not a Jaeger bomb, James. <laughs> no, this, this, is a, this, is a, this is a white Russian. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't care who you are. That's fracking the door. <laughs> she wants the chocolate. He had hot chocolate. She's trying to oh, get the chocolate. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, yeah. yeah go ahead I told Jeannie, thanks, sweet. Cool. She'll like oh, anything for sweet. Thank you for clarifying. Oh, that, yeah. okay. that really, she likes that. Oh, Did you see yeah. that? And you want me to tell you something? Yeah, this has never been done. I've never ever turned her loose. Really? I mean, I've always. Oh, you the know what? Time I've ever turned her loose because she has the strength of ten. Well, it's not that. that. You know, I just a little, uh, she's relaxed and uh-huh. we could tell. You know, yeah. Did you see uh, what in a minute, she she's going to be drunk. Did you see what she did? She stuck her head in there, couldn't get the chocolate. Now she's using her hand to get down to the bottom. Of it out. Looking her hand out. Yep. She's no idiot. Well, thanks for asking. Uh, James, do you have a smoke? She might want one of those. Yeah, we'll need smoke, definitely. As if this could get any better. If the monkey would smoke a cigarette. Light one up. Uh, wow. Wow. But do they have, a like, a pre... Uh, 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 how did I word this Brace, delicately? Uh, if, performance. They're, if they're going to... Uh, if they're going to defecate, do you know, or do they just like let it rip? Yeah, and they come, refill, over, they come over and r- r- ring a bell, and because uh, uh, <laughs> I, mean, uh, I, I got squelched about her playing with herself I know. But, uh, on defecation. How does that work? Uh, how does that work? <laughs> okay, I think uh, she, she's going back over to see Chris. Might have to go. Might have to go. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Please go. leave a monkey turd no, over there. If you please. could, could you please, please defecate on his keyboard? Turn my headphones off. Please, please. That would top. 
the show. Just, what what we, uh, just a little one. <laughs> just a little baby rabbit. Yeah, yeah, have you know, got uh, food over there, Tom? Would you like? No, I've got iced tea. Oh yeah. Well, she. Um, hi. How are you, sweetie? You are just a, the cutest little thing. Don't walk on my goop. That oh, you know, we do have a banana if we oh, want. My headphones just went off. Oh God. Bring a banana in. See if she'll eat it. Oh yeah. She'll eat a banana. She'll eat a banana. She'll eat the hell out of a banana. Okay. Yep. Wow. She's like a monkey on a football. <laughs> Hi, man, it's Donnie Baker. Guess what? I saved up some money and bought this new badass spy camera. I swear to God I did. Check out this bad boy. See, I've got some Velcro here that I can put it right on my tap-out cap. Keep it right here on the side, nobody would ever notice. They'll just think it's like a pacemaker or inhaler. Plus, I've got full coverage connected right here to my pager. So between these two things, I'm basically like a Navy SEAL or a coal miner. Except now my head's above water. Check this out. Hey, Chloe, I'm Donnie Baker with the Bob and Tom Show. I'm one of the sound guys. I need to put one of these lavender microphones on you just to make sure we can... You should run this anywhere you want to. I'm a big fan of 24. Hey, is Martin Sheenson really full-blooded Cherokee, or is that just a rumor or, or bourbon legend? Is that... Um, here, maybe we should I, go this end first. Really, but hey, yeah, it's a lavender I, microphone. It's just Donna, a... What the hell are you doing? I'm putting a lavender... Oh, You've got a restraining order. Oh, You're not I even forgot. supposed well, to that, be... That's I'm a so different sorry. permit. So that's sorry. a different... I'll be right back in a second. We'll so clear. That's a different... Per he that doesn't close. work I was that close. Get... And he goes, and he goes, what? what? Yeah! Oh, no. oh, man, that's, the, that's one of my best riffs ever. Oh, yeah. Falling on his deaf Gaelic ears. Yeah. 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 Hi, this is comedian Tim Cavanaugh, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Sex is so prevalent in our society that nobody mentions what happens if you keep having it. You know, that, uh... <laughs> I fell into... I think every porno movie should end with Hyapatia Lee giving birth to triplets. You know, just... <laughs> just a disclaimer, you know? <laughs> so everybody knows, you know, what you get, you know? But, uh... <laughs> But I'm a stepfather, too. I'm a stepfather, too, which I've been for a few years now. And uh, if you're not a step-parent, you know, you don't realize the warmth and rewards that you get for the warm, loving feeling. And it's, a, I hate you. Okay, here's some more money. You know, that, you know you're not like my real dad. You know, that's right. You can find me. You know, <laughs> track, track down your real deadbeat dad and have him pay for these Barbie accessories. You know, and, I don't know how lazy human beings are, but, uh, <laughs> you know, you got the moving sidewalks at the airports. For me, I, I thought the whole idea was for us to all move more quickly. Yeah. But you get people that just get on them and they just shut down all bodily functions, you know? Yes. And I don't understand how people don't know that you're supposed to be on the right. They have stenciled on the moving sidewalk, stand, 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 on the left, walk, 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 walk. They have pictures of people standing, walking, and I've seen footprints on the thing together and apart. Yeah. Yeah. And you still have people just on that left handrail. It's fun to fly. <laughs> you got to watch those people closely because they're the ones at the end of the moving sidewalk. They're the ones that get all flustered. <laughs> I actually uh, have a, a sexual fantasy associated with the earthquake. Go. All right. Woke well, chick up. Uh -huh. mm. uh, in my fantasy, I am making love to this woman. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she feels the earth move beneath her. Mm. Ah, yes. And then she rolls over on top of me and shields me from debris. <laughs> 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 Safety first, everybody. Safety first. Bob and Tom. Coming up. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin over there in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Willie Griswold. Yo. There's Josh Arnold. Hello there. The slogan is... 
Defining unfunny. <laughs> There's Ace Cosby. Defining funny. I'm Chip <laughs> McGee. Oh. Wow. Why don't you prove it, mister? Uh, oh, well, uh -oh. well, he's laid, Here's Tom he's laid it down, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. oh my lord. Oh. Here he is oh. with his joke of the day. Hey, Chick. <laughs> Yes, Ace. <laughs> the monsters are throwing a Halloween cookout. They are. The monsters are throwing a Halloween cookout. Guess what the skeleton brought? I wonder what the skeleton would bring to a, a party like that, Ace. Spare ribs. <laughs> that was you know? joke of the day. There's some the skeletons. There. Yeah. Say the ribs are right there exposed. You work, uh, well, you these work are spare very, ribs. very clean. Extra ribs. Eh? Uh, Is it John Fox who had the skeleton walks into a bar joke? What was the joke? Oh, a yeah. beer in a mop. I don't think you a beer can do a mop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So funny. That's true. Uh, really? del Delivery is important. <laughs> wow. Hey, yes, yes, Once again, is. Josh Arnold. That's three. Defining <laughs> unfunny. Thank you. Hey, Josh. Yes. Happy to be here. You didn't hear, about the, you didn't hear about the skeleton who ordered a beer in a mouth? No. <laughs> uh, what? Thank you very much. <laughs> Delivery like no, a no, UPS. No, no, no. Try, try, try doing it again. I'm sorry. I, I ruined it. Go ahead. No, you no, 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 no. Go ahead. Skeleton walks into a boar. Well, don't do it again. I, 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 walks into a boar. A moment ago. Yeah, I said boar. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh. uh, skeleton walks into a boar. It's the name of a pub in England, you MFers. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> hey, 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 calm down, everybody. <laughs> Uh, pl please come on. Uh, sorry, we have we have just just Hooker sitting in for Christy Lee. What's happening over there? A flock of swans that originated as a gift from Queen Elizabeth II have mm -hmm. been rounded up yes. for their annual physicals. <laughs> physicals. They've got to get the physicals. The swans, which are descended from a pair given by the late monarch in 1957, are collected from around Lakeland, Florida, every fall for health examinations. Now 50 strong, the swans are weighed, checked for infections, wounds, and any other problems yeah. that would need How to be addressed. Yeah, I'm one of the guy swans. Here's the thing. <laughs> I got an STD. Okay. <laughs> but you um, can't tell my wife. Hey, don't oh, tell her. Cause I, didn't no, I got, it from I got an, Okay, I got a quiz. I got to find this. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here's the quiz. <laughs> An ugly duckling, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'll direct this to, uh, let's start with Ace. Don't, don't shut out the answer if you know. Okay. Is what, this going to be... What oh, do you call... Uh, I'm so sorry, Chick. Uh, I, I, hate to, I hate to enlighten anyone. Okay, Knowledge is a good thing. Are you going to go right to a group of swans so we can just get to it? Or are you going to like do the, start with crows. the bitter of comedians yeah. and uh, all that? No, I'm not going to do that. A murder of crows. I'm going to ask what a group of swans is called Ace Cosby. It depends on if they're flying or not. Because I looked it up as you were looking it up. Oh. oh, did you know? <laughs> <laughs> he says as he loads the gun yes. underneath his desk. Yes. Oh, did you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you know? Okay, yeah. okay, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Smarty Pants. What do you call a group of swans? It's not a joke, it's true. When in flight, a group of swans may be called a wedge or a flight. That's Otherwise, work. a group of swans may be called a bevy, a bank, or a herd. Yes, and oh. uh, yes, that's the most common collective noun. All right, is a bevy of swans. I always, I love these. A lot of brunch words in there. Mm -hmm. Wedge. Bevy. I like a bevy. Mm -hmm. Give yeah. me a little bevy. Twist my arm. How are you not fatter? <laughs> Shaky. What are you talking about? Let's talk about food with it. All I right? do a lot of work to maintain 250, man. Okay. If you knew how much work I do to keep this going and what I really want to be doing all the time. Uh. And, um, of course, the classics. Uh, murder of crows. Sure. Um, a pod of whales. A Now, uh, a Oh, what is it? Not pelicans, but... A flamboyance uh, fl flamingos. of flamingos. Flamboyance yes. of flamingos or a flamboyance of male hairdressers. <laughs> One of the classics. <laughs> Willie, your thoughts? They also walk that away. Part of that. <laughs> He's been doing that joke since longer than I've been alive. He's been doing that joke. It makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pre-Sam joke, I think. <laughs> flamboyance, get it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. They're often gay, aren't they? <laughs> Isn't that interesting that a lot of people in one profession are often gay? How interesting. I, I, it's a fact. I can't help it. Don't blame me. One could imagine. Did you see the, um, oh, I don't know, the story. Remember we had the story earlier this year about the, uh, the teens that stole the swan and ate it? Oh, no. <laughs> they ate it? <laughs> yeah.
that right? What? Yeah. They cooked it? What yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, we had the story. I'll I don't see think if I can you're find supposed it. to do that. Yeah, well, that was the whole point. It was, oh. like the, it was like some town's mascot. Oh. You know what we're going to do? <laughs> we're going to steal their mascot and eat it. <laughs> Dude, it's a bulldog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, find another town. Wait a minute. No, there's, wait, now, well, hold on a second. That might be a great movie. Eating mascots. <laughs> and it's a, like a serial killer, but it's different. Oh, yeah. oh we ate a gator. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't think that studio executives have particularly hard lives, but I do feel bad for the studio executive that gets the elevator pitch. No, it's going to be great. We're going to eat all the dogs. Okay. That's, not a, that's, that's, that's not a fun movie. According to this, uh, Swan Meat is Ruby Red in color absolute treat they eat it uh this article is in nevada they had a big harvest in 2020 uh he sliced a swan breast into small half inch cutlets <laughs> tenderized it put it in uh, flour egg wash and seasoned breadcrumbs and i fried it golden brown it was absolutely delicious ruby red Ugh. Mm. Just swan meat. i wonder if it's like duck kind of oh, greasy it, it there is uh hank shaw who hunts, gathers, and cooks swan, uh, says it is somewhat gamey like a duck and can be dry. So oh. you have to serve it a uh, Jew. A oh, Jew? Thank you very much. Oh, this is, um, <laughs> this is, uh, um, I can't, I can't find it, sorry. What? I'm trying to find the, uh. The, the kids. Yeah, that... I thought I had the stolen swan. We oh. had the story. Uh, uh, we had the swan on the train track story, too. That was a biggie. Oh, this is great. This is Hank Shaw. Uh, Shaw. He says, uh, shoot a goose, and people ask you how you're going to cook it. Shoot a swan, which after all is essentially a long-necked goose, Hank says. And people ask you, why do you want to do such a thing? <laughs> uh, I found it. Okay, go ahead. The village of, wow, you're of Manlius? No. Mm -hmm. Nope. M-A-N-L-I-U. Manlius in upstate New York mourning the loss of their beloved swan. The swan named Faye and her four cygnets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Baby swan. Yeah. I never... That's a, that's a tough one. Yeah. Cygnet sounds like something you get at the bank. Uh, could I have the cygnet and the free pen? Um, the officials say the four baby swans were recovered, but the mother was cooked and eaten. Oh, man. <laughs> that's wild. <laughs> Sergeant Ken Hatter... Oh, he's mad. He's <laughs> mad. He said three teenagers were arrested on charges, including grand larceny. The young swans will be cared for and returned to the pond. I guess this was like the village's uh, thing. <laughs> yeah. This was their like, tra the trademark, and someone ate the swan. That's sad. Well, yeah, sorry. But uh, once again, we've learned a few things right here. Signets <laughs> and uh, a bevy of swans. Uh, now, uh, coming up, we're going to have Sexy Time with Allie Breen. Always look forward to that. What have you got over there, Jess? Um, some restaurants in the Bay Area are changing customers, or charging customers, rather, a penalty if they vomit during brunch. What is this about? San Francisco Gate reports that the move is aimed at patrons who drink too much and expel brunch in the bathroom or even on their table. Uh, well, do you want to offer <laughs> Do you want to offer bottomless mimosas or not, folks? Yeah, that's All right. right. If you're going to do it, let's do it. We address that. The restaurant known as Kitchen Story in Oakland now has signs warning mimosa lovers that they are subject to a $50 cleaning fee if they throw up in a public area. Well, All you can drink mimosas is a thing. Bottomless mimosas, yeah, that's definitely a thing. That's got to be easy to puke on too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And all you can heave buffet. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. God, no, but thank you. If 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 vomiting at the table is a problem, maybe maybe not bottomless. Maybe maybe like a two drink limit. If they're gonna offer it, I'm gonna get it. Okay. <laughs> if it's on the menu, I'm sure. gonna get it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Ugh. I think a lot of people see the sign "bottomless brunch" and have, have the wrong idea. <laughs> hey, wh hey where's, oh, where's Trixie? I better put my pants back. <laughs> <laughs> didn't Let Homer get in, didn't Homer get into trouble in one of the Simpsons? He went into the oh, you can eat seafood buffet. <laughs> sir, sir, don't take the steam tray. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Captain, whatever, the, uh, he's more man, he's more beast than man. All right, come see Arr. Bottomless Pete <laughs> as he <laughs> <That's right. laughs> he became a sh an attraction. Yeah. Just now, uh, need, uh, need. once again, coming up, Sexy Time with Allie Brain and um, sex and, and aging in the news. But right now, this portion of the Bob and Tom Show brought to you by Simply Safe, the do it yourself, design it yourself home security system. And Simply Safe has a revolutionary new 
IDEA. It's the Home Monitoring Innovation 24-7 Live Guard Protection designed to help stop crime in real time. Now, if that intruder breaks into your home, Simply Safe professional monitoring agents can actually see, speak to, and deter them through Simply Safe's new smart alarm wireless indoor camera, stopping them in their tracks. 24-7 Live Guard Protection is made possible by the new smart alarm wireless indoor camera available with fast protect monitoring plan it's the only indoor security camera that can trigger the alarm and instantly deter intruders with a built-in siren install your way do it yourself in about 30 minutes or have a simply safe expert set it up for you either way it's easy to protect your home and now of course we have a deal for you for a limited time, get 20% off your new system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. All you have to do is visit simplysafetom.com. That's simplysafetom.com. Remember, there's no safe like Simply Safe. I found another article about this this thing with the vomiting in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it's really common. <laughs> It says That's most gross. of the people puking are in their early to mid 20s. They're drinking too much and vomiting in the bathrooms or even right on their tables. Oh, oh my gosh. Boy. Yikes. No, thank you. Uh, brunch does sort of sound like vomit. Brunch. <laughs> are Defining you allowed? Nothing funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, brunch. You got to admire. You've got to admire the courage. I know. Talk. You just keep going, Josh. <laughs> Josh, lean forward on that punchline, too. You got to give it a little lean. There you go. How about this? I'm brunch and then take a drink or something. Maybe that would be brunch. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Am I right? <laughs> Want to try the name Ralph? See if that works. <laughs> when we come back, is your bathroom clean? Who did it? We're going to find out. And we've got sex and the old folks. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom. We have to do a little stunt here. Uh, we're going to try something. Chick mm-hmm. McGee, we wow. have a new story about a woman that... Uh, Tried to steal a case of beer between her legs in a grocery really? store. In Did Za- you see yeah. that? Zachary, Louisiana. In Chick's defense, uh, this is bigger than a case. Well, Chick you is, know, we have uh, some Keystone Light there. And Chick is a, putting on a... Uh, it's a 30-pack. It is a 30-pack. I've yeah. noticed that. So that's, uh, that's six a, more than what she was trying to steal. Well... That is one great-looking dress, Chick. Where'd you get that? This you know what a, you need? One of those uh, magic turbans that the uh, ladies would wear. Uh-huh. The turby? Is that what it was called? It's called the turby, right? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. have one of those at home. I could have brought it in for you. Oh, look at you. If you had that, you. you'd look like a chick oh, has, a, cool. has the muumuu on. Oh, Can, is that a... Go ahead. A chick is removing his trousers because they were holding back Oops. on the... Uh, oh, well, oh, a little uh, too much. A little too much. Too much, too much. Okay, right. so you're leaving your underpants on because that's kind of see-through. We don't want to scare anybody. All right. Look at that. No, no, we don't scare anybody. Do you want to try the 12-pack first uh-huh. of soda? Uh-huh. Okay. All right, well, uh, okay. Now we you're nonchalantly pack. walking through a convenience store. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. You reach over. Uh, you cram the 12-pack between your legs. Uh-huh, and then now you try to... Try walking. Oh, no. Oh, a little easier without the pants, isn't it, Chick? Okay. Yeah. He's, oh, yeah. He, he, he's walking. That's how she was walking. Oh, yeah. I know. Look at that. You're walking you? real, real slow, that short is steps. Exactly. What uh-huh. You're uh-huh. Look like. for me today. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're. Look like you're trying to hold back some kind of bowel. Yeah. Eruption. Can I get the door for you, ma'am? Uh-huh. I'll have a little trouble. I can see that. Uh, Could let you, me help uh, you out? Thank you. Thank once uh, again. Once again. You this look is a little uh, like an old lady. This is from Zachary, Louisiana. Now, how long could you? Well, that's. Can I see the twelve pack? That's a twelve. See, you should have gone with the twelve. Have a lovely day, thank you. Uh huh. Now, could you uh, make That's it? A magic could you make trick. it to your car? Do you think? Mm. Wow. Say there are no stairs. stairs. Say there are no stairs, and you can make it right to your car. It's starting to chafe. Is it? Okay. Well, you know what? I'm starting to lose it a little bit. <laughs> okay, I'll try try removing this the twelve pack. Okay. Let's try to go with the case. Well, all right. Oh. Is the beer is the case of beer cold or is I'm it warm? Not stealing anything. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Well, that's hey, 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 hey looks like your water broke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, once again, Woo. we're trying to duplicate a, um, a robbery here. This. Now, this is going to be a challenge Th- because this, this actually is, is <laughs> that is uh, heavier. That's a, th- we have that's a 30 of a 30 Keystone pack Light. Of Keystone and that's Light. probably, that's probably, well, I'll bet it's darn close to, well. 30 pounds? 30 pounds. shoving it between us. By the way, I, I need to say this. The Moomoo is courtesy of Dean, Dean's oh Aunt my- Rosetta. 
doing this. Aunt uh, Rosetta, wow. A chick is bent over. He's cramming the 30-pack uh, yeah. between his legs. Try uh, you walking. Know, you know, I just, I just oh. saw that. Oh, Walk that, over to the yeah. microphone over there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what else you want me to do? Well, you're doing okay. Mm-mm. Ow. Ow. Oh, oh, man. Oh. Yeah, see. Can't do it. too Okay. Heavy. It's too heavy. I think it's too wide. You think because, you can do 24? Uh, she had the narrow... Uh, yeah, she Case. had the twelve pack of cans. the The nice thing about the the Keystone Light there, it's a it's, it's more like a thirty big big and it's wide like a cube. Six heavier. Yeah, yeah. well, you, of you, course it is. You have to hand it to her though for not just grabbing a six pack and going for it. She went all the way, right? Mm-hmm. By going for the twenty four twenty four can pack. I can't tell you how striking you are in that outfit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have to watch our TV show just to see this. Uh, it smells woman-y? Yeah. Uh-huh. It smells old. <laughs> well, again. You took my breath away from the moment I first saw you. Will you marry me, Dolly? She said yes! She said yes! It's not a real person. It's not a real diamond. Real, natural, earthborn diamond. For your real love, from a real jeweler you can trust. Steven Singer Jewelers. and use the code Bob and Tom 50 to get 50% off the code Bob and Tom 50 at factormeals.com slash Bob and Tom 50 to get 50% off. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. Yes, Ace. <laughs> Why is it vampires don't like Taylor Swift? I don't know, Ace. Why? She's got bad blood. Cause baby, now we got bad blood. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, what? Yeah, an audio prop. Oh <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Don't, 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 don't. The essential morning radio. Don't. This is Bob and Tom Radio. 24-7, 24-7. unfair thing about life is the way it ends, right? Mm-hmm. For the death. What's that, a bonus? <laughs> hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Jess Hooker at the news desk. Yeah. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello, Chick. Willie Griswold here. Hey. There's Josh Arnold. Chick. There's Ace Cosby. Buddy. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. Uh, we have um, a couple of quick things I want to get to. Congratulations to Mr. Corey Cravey from Clovis, California. He's our winner in week five of the Big Green Egg competition where you win the Big Green Egg Mini Max. And uh, he's won himself one. It's the Pigskin Pick'em. If you want to be part of it, week six begins Thursday evening. And you could be a winner. And all you got to do is uh, go to bobandtom.com slash contest. Make your picks. Interestingly enough, um, according to our research, Mr. Corey Cravey made these picks before the season even started. Got ahead of the game. And he was one of eight. It was an eight-way tie for first place. He had all the tiebreakers. So he's he's our big winner. You can be a winner, too. Once again, mm-hmm. Bob and Tom slash contest. Now, we turn to the uh, sports page. No, I'm sorry. We're done with the sports page. Mercy. Thank God. We have... Uh, we I'm have uh, right here. Uh, You're running Jess out of people. Booker. Josh is defining unfunny. <laughs> You're glad that I'm done. What, what are you going to do? I'm sorry. We have uh, the lovely Jess Hooker. She's over there. Oh, okay. We've heard the Ace Cosby joke of the day. Uh, um, uh, we got... Pat, you got a song yet? Song yet? I, yeah, sure. I got tons of songs. A catalog. Okay. Do you remember have, we remember like, we kind of referenced one of them earlier. And, uh, two of them, yeah. Okay. What would well, you like? Uh, well, we were <laughs> talking about the gentleman who grew the world's largest pumpkin. Mm. You'll recall his name was Mr. What is it? Fred Giner. Fred Giner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like yeah. five 
Why don't you Why don't you pick one, and we'll get to it in a few minutes. In the meantime, we'll check in with Jess Hooker. You guys are sweet. Hey, like the one I just told you about in the bathroom? You guys were in the bathroom? Mathow and Lemon. I know, right? A new survey reveals people's bathroom cleaning habits, or lack thereof. Oh, at last, the story that he wants to talk about. According to the poll of 2,000 adults, the average person cleans their bathroom less than once a week. Yeah. When they do clean, people spend about 10 minutes on a quick bathroom cleanup. About 50% admitted that they only pay attention to their bathroom when they're expecting guests. Uh Uh-huh. Common Ugh. triggers for cleaning the bathroom. <laughs> uh, hair around the sink. Okay. Dirty mirrors or a clogged drain. Oh, you dirty, dirty mirrors. <laughs> You're so nasty, aren't you? Um, I don't know. I, 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 mine's clean all the time. You probably I, clean after mm-hmm. every uh, defecation or urination, I'm guessing. Now, in your case, <laughs> if there's uh, stuff in the side of the commode, do you is do you consider? Why are you, you consider, commode? Do you consider peeing it off? Is oh, that good no. enough? It's not good if, if it sometimes it doesn't work. The but chair? yes, I you do mean, try to power wash it. You off. mean in the bowl, not outside the bowl? Yes, yeah, so if it's outside, oh. if it's if there's fecal material outside the bowl, you've got problems. Something is uh-uh. very wrong with someone. Yeah. Sometimes it's under the seat. Really? You get blowback? <laughs> oh, you've never, oh, you've never had it that bad where it's under the seat? Oh, yeah. You you, no. you can destroy a toilet. Yeah. I don't know how it happens, but it's just, it's just like drops or whatever. It's not... Uh, oh, okay. I, I mean, I like to have a nice Poop clean... Poop splashing? Oh, yeah. So, but if you have guests coming over, Josh, you do a good once over? I make sure everything's fine, yeah. But if I were to go there right now, it might be... Do you clean your own home? Uh, yeah. Oh, Okay. You know what happened, uh, boy, one of those things, I I was fishing, as you guys know, it took a couple days off. And Are we going to hear that story again? The, the, and uh, <laughs> it was a lovely day on the lake. And, uh, <laughs> boy, John. Uh, a baby. Well, that, the, the morning I left, I took, uh, I was taking a, sh- I was going to take a shower. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm glad you said so, shower. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I'm going to take a big hairy shower. <laughs> <laughs> in, this, in this context. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I peed in the toilet. Right. And then I went, oh, I already have the shower running. I'm not going to flush now because I don't oh, want to uh, cold. change right. the water in the shower. Right. Well, what? when I got out to dry off, I forgot to flush. Came <gasps> came home four or five days no. later. Oh. And I went, man, it smells like pee in here. And mm-hmm. sure, sure enough, it was... Uh, Son of a gun. Oh, it no. had been oh. stewing in the... <laughs> I recommend uh, the Stewed deep clean. Piss. <laughs> Recommend what? I recommend the deep clean when you're on vacation. You have a deep clean crew come in and clean your house while you're gone. And oh. yeah, and then you come back and it's all nice and wow, clean. Wow, yeah. that's not bad. Yeah. yeah. Clean okay. the toilet, clean the sink, yeah. replenish the mini fridge, just whatever you got to do in there. I need <laughs> someone to come in, come in and paint the inside of my house. Then call a painter. <laughs> what does that have to do with cleaning your bathroom? No, no, that's how dirty it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I piss everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to okay. leave for a month. I want him to come in and paint my house. And uh, Pat, back and it's all painted. I think I found out what you're looking uh, for. Hey, I'm going to call no, an audible um, here. I'm uh, going to call an audible. I know. I got, I got the story. Oh, Calm I down. I don't want to do that fight, one. Fight. He you just told me you wanted to do that I one. I got a better one. This is, oh, God. This is the best Broadway I got this. play I've ever seen. Here's the setup. Terrible radio, bad friendship. <laughs> <laughs> Defining unfunny. That one was a little too racy. Do you remember the woman that had the wine cork stuck uh, down there for three years? <laughs> three years? In the, yep. in the front or the back? That. In the front. In the mommy? Uh, the yeah. giner? Yes. Yes. In the yes. front, front naughty? front yeah. naughty? Yeah, yeah. How no. is this the story that's less racy? <laughs> I know. I agree. Was she aging? If this is something about a highway, I'm leaving. (laughs) Got a cork stuck in her vagina. (laughs) It's like a dam there locking up a river. (laughs) Over three years with nary a coolie bree, cool breeze. Take the cork out your downstairs. It could make yeast and cheese. I can't. (laughs) I can't sing the title of the song, because in this context, it'd be wrong. Cork's vagina, don't leave it inside you. Mold is grown. Oh, no. Leave your vag alone. Uh, I thought that was uh, less dirty. Uh, vages, we don't need no stinking vages. The other one. Uh, uh, the other one was classic, I thought. Go ahead and read it. Classic versus 
Well, it was the it was the prostitute that Ooh, had yeah. two. Uh, she had two. She had two. Oh, she had two giners. Yeah, two giners. <laughs> no way. <laughs> two. No. Way. You want to hear the story? Two. Yeah, I've got the story. God's here. beautiful mistake. <sighs> uh, you know, seriously. Uh, <laughs> what well, would both, you even do with two? Were they side by side or on top of each would other? Would you a friend? That's a yeah. That's a fair question. Um, I think they were side by side. It's like you're getting a washer dryer. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's like when you go to a hotel and you have two queen beds. Yeah, that's true. And you use one for sleeping and one for eating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or I've heard one for sleeping and one for love. Maybe she uses, you know, one, one for th- sleeping, sleeping, one for love. Or one for love and one for eating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, uh, the woman's name is Cassandra Bankson. Uh, she's 22 years of age. She has uh, two vaginas, two wombs, and two cervixes. Wow. Um, it's a very I... rare condition. Uh, they say it's affected less than 100 women all over the world that they know of. Wow. Um, uh, it's. it's uh, I saw her in the double mint commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Those twins are sweating, man. Um, she can blow two bubbles. <laughs> wow. So uh, that's the story. That's the background, anyway. All right. Uh, do you have a th- another idea? disgusting song? From Here, we <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Almost seven. Here we go. Yeah. Two vaginas. <laughs> Once for work. The others are like fine shiner. <laughs> I'm an escort. Use the left lane, please. <laughs> the right one has a stop sign. That's reserved for me. I'm like a country road. <laughs> Double lane. <laughs> Every month. What a pain. <laughs> Two vaginas <laughs> like double mint gum. Oh. Double your pleasure. Double your fun. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Woo! I had no idea that was in there. Uh, oh, I didn't either. Uh, oh, all right. Well, very nice. Putting well. the us in uterus. <laughs> <laughs> She's got two of them. Uh, okay, Speaking sorry. of giners, uh, <laughs> new research indicates that older adults experiencing sexual pleasure might have a significant impact on cognitive function. Really? In other words... I don't understand. <laughs> clear, clearing your pipes might help keep your head clear ah. scientists found that among sexually active adults 75 to 90 oh, more sex. having <laughs> sex at least once a week <laughs> was associated with better cognitive function five years later Okay. Seems You're, like a long return. Five years later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we got to do it tonight, honey, because uh, it's gonna pay off. <laughs> in uh, 28, I gotta take a take a test uh-huh. for my driver's license. <laughs> for adults <laughs> age 62. <laughs> God. Adults age 62 to 74. Those who reported pleasurable and satisfying sex experiences, well, better something. cognitive function five years later, compared to those who did not find their sexual experiences yeah. as enjoyable. That's why we go to the cafeteria, Josh. Yeah, oh yeah. Go, we go yeah. early because we could eat all that time for boning. That's right. Yeah, yeah, the findings were the published in the Journal of Sex. We get the Research. early bird, and we. Yeah, some people do crossword puzzles for their forthcoming dementia. I like to jerk it on the bus. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I can, I can take one of the back and seats. They don't I, see me back and there. And to be honest, I'll get a cross word. <laughs> but. Well, is it, this is the majority of you guys, right? Uh, What's that? <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, we don't discuss that. I, mean, I beg well, your pardon. Well, uh, Dad, if you don't want to retire in five years, you better start taking Kelly on date night once a week. <laughs> Will you please stop reminding people that Ace is 84 years old? <laughs> Young at heart. Young at heart. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I love the way... I think that's... I, I think this is... Uh, to be honest, I think it's specific to men, this 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 research. Spoken like you think woman. so? Yeah, I do. I think that... Uh, I think you get a better guy the more you do him. You know what? It's, it's, <laughs> it's that kind of attitude we need more women to have. Just every woman should think like that. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Having trouble with the crossword, Zelda? <laughs> Let me let me give you the old in out. Up and down, up and down. Yeah, I got a, I got a four letter word for it's in. Oh, it just ruined my favorite video game. I know, right? Good Lord. Coming up, it'll be sexy time with Allie Breen. Morgan. Speaking of speaking of, um, does he say that in the movie? No, no, that's oh, a, that's a, a Godwin did that voice one morning and it killed me, and so oh. I always. Had, 
Uh, sir, uh, you, you, you're a fan of our show. Uh, what yeah. would you like to hear uh, we talk, us talk about? More sex. He's <laughs> <laughs> just some random dude, man. Okay, all right, we can do our best. Yeah. Uh, I've met that guy in Peoria, Louisville. <laughs> yeah. 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 Focus group right here. Yeah. That more, guy rules. More sex. <laughs> that guy rules. <laughs> he does. He really does. Uh, Jess, Jess is pretty cute on the show. <laughs> no, she's really funny. She's really smart. <laughs> she's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, she's a really good Yeah, that's show. probably the guy in my DMs that keeps asking me for foot pics. <laughs> <laughs> Not a joke. You know that guy, yeah. too? Whoa. <laughs> okay. Could be worse. Could be DM for DM. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That could be more, worse. More dumps. <laughs> my bad for Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to read something. Uh, yes, Alabama, please. Yeah. <laughs> an Alabama public library mistakenly added a children's picture book to a list of potentially inappropriate titles due to the author's last name. I would have thought oh. all Alabama libraries were picture books. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. well. Yes. I have family there. You are getting... And you, and you have sex with them. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, read me a story, Stella, by Marie Louise Gay, was ah! added to the list of books flagged for potential removal from the children's section of the Huntsville-Madison County Public Library. Well, it is a gay book. <laughs> No, 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 sir, sir. The, I'm just telling you. Do you remember they had the computer program that was editing news? Oh, yeah. And I want to say the track star was a Tyson Gay. Tyson Dix. And the other runner was... I, I thought it was Tyson name. Tyson Gay and somebody Dix and they... It was Dix, D-I-X, and Gay, and, and the... Uh, whatever it was, some, changed it. It was some computer that was supposed censoring to be censoring device. Censoring stuff. Had, yeah. You know, as, uh, oh. as, as certain groups are like, to, likely they love to do. So wait a sec. So this book is being removed because of the author's, the name author's is last name Absolutely. is, is yeah. the word G A Y Gay. Yes, oh. it is. Cindy Hewitt, the library's executive director told uh, AL.com that the book was mistakenly added because of the keyword gay. Yeah. It was one of 233 books set to be reviewed and potentially removed through the process that has been halted due to backlash. I see. Well, that's a mistake. Tyson Gay was one of the only uh, men to beat uh, Usain Bolt during a uh, competitive... Uh, I think there's someone with the last name of Gay. He's a great kicker. Right and now. at Matt yeah. Gay. Yeah. Cole's kicker. That great. headline was great unfortunate, kicker. though. What was the headline? <laughs> Bolt beaten by gay. <laughs> sort of a, there it was. It was like a re reverse aid yeah. crime. And, uh, which, reverse. <laughs> like there's such a thing. The headline. <laughs> hate is hate. Yeah. Yeah, you get Walter Dix beaten by Tyson Gay was the headline that was uh, censored to Helen back, I guess. Wow. wow. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah. The word beat isn't doing anyone a favor there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's also kind of contributing to the narrative. Dix beaten by gay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> funny. Funny. Well, I liked it. So, or did it define unfunny? unfunny. <laughs> uh, now, a couple, a couple quick things. Uh, once again, congratulations to Week 5 winner Corey Cravey of Clovis, California. Cravey. Cool. Get your uh, entries in for Week 6 before Thursday evening, please. Just go to bobandtom.com slash contest. You'll be uh, eligible to win the Big Green Egg Mini Max. Uh, got some shows coming up. Mr. Godwin on October 27th and 28th will be in St. Charles, Missouri at the Funny Bone. And then November 4th, the Ho-Chunk Casino in the Wisconsin Dells with uh, Mr. Godwin, Mr. Roski, and Willie G. And then tonight, Willie G's at the Louisville Comedy Club. And um, that's, uh, you, to get your tickets, Willie, can you tell him? Yeah, you go to my Instagram. There's a link in the bio. My Instagram's at Willie.Griswold. Come see me enjoy Molinero tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Thank you very much. Now, uh, I turned over that way to see Mr. McGee. Yes, yeah, so let me tell you, uh, Raycon, it's the sixth anniversary. It's that time of year. Happy birthday, Raycon. Uh, Raycon's turning six, and uh, in the six years Raycon's been in my ears, they've really made a name for themselves in the premium audio space. Raycon's everyday earbuds are known for delivering high-quality audio and thoughtful features like the 32-hour battery life, seamless Bluetooth syncing, and a perfect in-ear fit for all-day wear and lasting comfort. And all, all this at half the price of other premium audio brands. No wonder they've already racked up 78,000 five-star reviews and climbing. And this past year, Raycon expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon Home, 
and Raycon Powertech. So needless to say, there's a lot to celebrate. So to thank everybody who's shown them support in the past six years, Raycon's offering 20% off everything on their site and select products up to 40%. Celebrate Raycon turning six with their biggest sale of the year going on now. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tom and use the code birthday to get 20 to 40% off site-wide. That's code birthday at buyraycon.com slash Tom. Score 20 to 40% off. That's buyraycon.com. Dot com slash Tom. Read the reviews. Love the Raycons. I love my Raycon earbuds. They're the best. They're about half the price and twice as good. Now, uh, coming up, we've got Sexy Time with Allie Breen and other delights on the way. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Reach us. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that gives you the... Oh, yeah. So you can't see the uh, outline. Yeah. Uh, now, yeah With Gene Jet, the... it, it definitely gives you the, the J-Lo butt. Yeah, yeah, if that's what you want. Yeah, baby's got back. And now I, Chick uh... McGee has tried on a pair of these, and Chick is known for having no buttocks. <laughs> How much do you want on video? What do you mean? We want it all, baby. Money shot. Like just... that? Oh, there we go. There we go. That's what, that's what I like. Get <laughs> <laughs> Frisky in here. Oh, yeah. That's what I like. There's no, almost no difference, I mean, right here. This is more what they're looking for. Oh, my God. Come, chick, come in, on chick. And, okay, uh, chick has and, the, yeah. yeah, okay, Chick has them on. And, oh, dear God. Oh, He's no. got a shelf ass. Now wait a minute. What did you? What I have did a you, shelf ass. You, you have a shelf ass. Have a nice ass. How what did you, you do? <laughs> you look like you turn around. Let me see you from the I side. I can't recommend these booty pops enough. <laughs> Let me see the profile. What oh did, my God! You got a basketball in your ass. Going on? Uh, no, you that, that is not just the booty. Pop. What did you do? That doesn't. That. What did you put back there? I. Uh, Attitude back here, Bob. What I got? You got a you got attitude. A, you, I got you got a shell fast is what you've got. What got... did you put? What did you put in there besides the booty pops? It's a little little fluffy pillow. <laughs> oh, well, that's a, if that's the look you're going for. Yeah, you know what? All the girls will talk about you at the club. Oh yeah. Oh, it makes me want to. It makes me want to do a joke that only four of us would get, but we'd never forget the moment. Uh, but I can't do it. All right. You know that is a. Okay, well, you that's, got a big uh, shelf really ass now. That is a good. <laughs> it makes you taller. Look at that. Improves your posture. <laughs> oh, oh that's I'm not great. all hunched over. Oh, that's funny. Oh. It feels uh, like I have a really awful hemorrhoid. Uh, <laughs> well, it looks like a big awful <sighs> hemorrhoid. Okay. Oh, I got to get this off. It's yeah, really, uh, really hot. I'll bet. My, well, you probably weren't supposed to put the extra padding in there. Ass is sweating. Okay. Got this lycra. And... Christy, is your ass really hot right now? No. Because Christy is also wearing the booty pop panties. Are you, is it breathing? Are you? But Christy didn't put a pillow inside I'm, of hers. I'm yeah. just. Yeah, that's they look pretty good. I got to tell you, Christy. Do they? Yeah, yeah. They, they look very nice. If you're into that sort of thing, warm. you don't like, like a big butt. Not, uh, not that shape. No. Oh. Well, it's not. It doesn't make. I want to. It doesn't make your ass look huge. It just gives you more uh, lift. Lift in the back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks, it's, it looks a little. It's not making your it looks hips, like hips the butt wider. Is too high. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Let me see. Let me see one more time. Uh, you want to feel it too? To turn. Just turn to the side. I'll feel it. Oh, let go over it. and feel. Oh, yeah, oh I want it. There you go. Come on. Yeah. Squeeze it. Come on, Tom. Go, go Tom. Squeeze. Go, baby. Go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. O
I know, but the whole minivan thing. I The bumper stickers on that will be horrible. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. My orphan child is an honor student. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully done. Uh-huh. Okay. Scott Dunn, Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom Radio. Radio. These jokes, not jokes. I think these are more of observations about contemporary culture. Here we go. Where they scoff me. Well, when was yesterday? What are the Rolling Stones better at than, say, the Bee Gees? Hmm. hmm Staying alive. Know. <laughs> okay. He's excellent joke. Stepped factual, on. Factual. Stepped on. Yeah, there's only one, one BG left. <laughs> See, Staying Alive was a BG's hit. Right. And yet, those of you not two on of TV, the three Bee Gees are need, not with us anymore, sadly. You need sadly. to get the VIP and you need to watch the show on YouTube because... <laughs> The way he went, staying alive, <laughs> with he raised his arm. <laughs> that, for me, sold it. Yeah. Loved it. Let's try it again. Bow, 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 same go. joke again? Yeah, I want to see if we can get a better take on it. Hey, so get a joke for us today. Well, I, I learned something yesterday. Oh. What are the Rolling Stones better at than, say, the Bee Gees? I don't know. Staying alive. <laughs> <laughs> the timing is better than <laughs> He did a quick hand raise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it one more time and take another and take a <laughs> just a second more of a beat before no, I, you answer. No, I think I, I think you, you the first I mean, time the beat was too long. No, I, mean, oh, I, I, the, I liked the better the beat the first time. No, because one no, of you I chimes no. in. Uh, I don't know. I, I said I don't line. know. You asked the question. Talking right. about cauliflower rice over the. Well, you know, yeah, so is this a radio show? Are we on the air right now? Let him try it. What are the Rolling Stones better at than, say, the Bee Gees? Staying alive. (laughs) 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 Thank you, Josh. (laughs) That's bad teamwork. That's bad teamwork. With us in the studio, comedian uh, John Garrett. Do you have a straight job? I mean, like a normal day-to-day thing? Yeah, I actually do. I'm actually a CPA, believe it or not. Oh, yeah, oh, and um, that spells party. Yeah, it does. Most people find it think uh, CPAs are hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, we're dorks, uh, big dorks. But uh, uh, and honestly, on behalf of all accounts out there, I'd like to say that we don't all do taxes. Some of us prefer to embezzle. <laughs> it's much more lucrative. <laughs> I read recently. Uh, Willie Nelson wrote a song called Whatever Happened to Peace on Earth Mm -hmm. as his little protest to the war in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And my immediate thought was, why does he care? It's not like it's his tax dollar being put to (laughs) use. (laughs) (laughs) And I think the U.S. US government should write a song called Whatever Happened to Willie's 1040. (laughs) That was a tax joke for the accountants. Hi, this is Ross Bennett, and you're Uh, listening. Thank you. (laughs) Welcome back. To the Bob and Tom Show. Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. There's Josh Arnold. Chickster. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom this morning. I just overheard a, a snippet of the conversation a, a little bit. You were talking about what you liked, uh, Jess Hooker, so I got it for you right here. You did? You said you like old music. <laughs> Here you go, a little, little big spider back for you. <laughs> is this what you meant? That is old. No. Oh, that's not what you meant? It's a little little older than I like. Oh, High okay. school prom theme. <laughs> that's beautiful. That's, that brings back memories. I bet, yeah. <laughs> uh, riding in the old Model oh, T. Oh, oh, yeah. Broke down on the way of the dirt road. The dirt road. Oh. Yeah, I, uh, this, this is uh, uh, um, out of nowhere. Uh-huh. Um, ex nihilo, uh, whatever. Um, uh, meaningless. I, um, a product endorsement. All right. Not a paid endorsement. I'm just saying. The Q-tip. I'm going to come back with. Uh, I I disagree. The Q-tip. There is not a generic version of the Q-tip that is any good. I uh, had to buy some the other day. I might as well have bought toothpicks. Yes. Toothpicks, because I find yes. that the generic Q-tips are. Too floppy. They are. I. That's why I get the wood ones. Real wood Q-tips or real wood cotton swabs. With uh, cotton oh. swab on one end. Swi- Swifters. Wow. Swifters is the brand. I, I thought this was a thing for your floor. No. That's well, that too. <laughs> Left <laughs> the wet shit. Yeah. Boy, if you're cleaning your floor with a <laughs> with a Q-tip, that's going to take a while. Some oh, days, man. CD. Some days. Okay. So okay. So there's an off-brand Q-tip that's any good because the ones I got are terrible. No, yeah. I have. I will order you some. These are the only ones that I use now. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. I'm totally off any topic. Let's get back to the action. What do you got? Exciting news from the journal known as Science. Science. 
Researchers have confirmed the discovery of the oldest fossil of human footprints in North America. Really? The footprints found in White Sands National Park, New Mexico, were dated to be 21,000 to 23,000 years old. Whoa. The analysis pushes the known date of human presence in North America back by thousands of years. Isn't that cool? That's crazy. Thinking that there were humans here how many thousand years ago? 23. I'd like to know the size, and because don't they say people are much bigger now than they used to be? And yeah. I don't mean fatter. I just mean like yeah. you know, they were. we were smaller. Hmm. And there, this is not Neanderthal man. It's a, a Birkenstock man. <laughs> <laughs> they, they call him. <laughs> Do you go Neanderthal or Neanderthal? I've, Thal. Okay. Uh, um, I see yeah. using Neanderthal. I think this, like, that may be correct. But I, then they talk about how your their feet were wider, too, because they walked so much more. Ah, uh, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Well, they, say, they say it's uh, ancient hippies. They didn't have <laughs> <laughs> shoes, long, long, ancient hair, hippies. long hair, terrible B.O. <laughs> Can you imagine the B.O. on a guy that's... Being, Maybe it would, maybe maybe uh, maybe that attracted women back then because if he had if he had bo that means like high testosterone he could fight for you and save you from wild animals things like that you, you have know. a bo fetish don't you kind of you're like a wow. musky man <laughs> because they say if somebody's bo doesn't smell bad to you then they're your person oh my gosh yeah have you experienced this yes really yeah. I, I have. Do you? Um, <laughs> I love your stink. Do you? Uh, <laughs> Jeez. Do you sniff just anywhere, or is there a special spot? No, I think it's specific. Like uh, if, if 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 a guy gets sweaty. And I'm mm. just like, all right, better get a whiff. Double, double check this. Just, <laughs> if I, get if, get better get a whiff and see if I'm going to invest any time in this guy. Yeah. yeah. So if it's very uh, primal, I would think. So right? yeah. it is so primal. Cl clarify yeah. then. So if, if if you go up there and take a whiff and it doesn't smell at all, and if it, if if the if the smell is not offensive to me, then we are compatible. Now, can this be done? Does it have to be direct to the person, or could you grab, say, their underwear and take a... I'm not... No, I'm not... I'm, I'm actually going to the source. I'll go to the skin. Okay, okay. You don't, yeah. you don't say... Huffing no. drawers? No, I'm not... Boy, if, if there's anybody <laughs> huffing, who huffing can drawers. ruin a scenario, it's right? you. That, that, there's no doubt about it. Huffing you. drawers. No, I mean, have you guys ever had that where, like, there's a... Uh, your spouse's sweat or your partner, yep. it's not so bad? Yeah. It's all about the neck. I've had... Neck, I, I've been told, oh, I like the way you no, yeah. smell. When yeah, you're it's sweating. not bad. Yeah, it's but not But I've a bad not smell. found myself... Well, whoever that was, in your case, Josh, was just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> or a pizza lover. Oh, <laughs> you sweat marinara. Uh, that's, what he, that's what he's implying. You I ate knew so much the implication. You ate so much pizza, you smell like one. <laughs> God, what a... <laughs> I am double stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> and so was she, right? <laughs> hey, Stuff from the pizza. Tag team. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. That the, the man was. That, so there were, there were humans. Pheromones, in, Tom. Pheromones. Humans in North America, though, so long ago. Yeah, wow. a long time. That's, that, that's fascinating. There's yeah. no way of knowing. No, they they found this footprint, and they have they have ways of Could putting have been anything. they have ways of putting a yeah, date. The on dinosaur it. goes back yeah. together this way. Sure, it does, pal. Yeah, There's whatever. a joke here. Some I need. Uh, let's let, now yeah. time for formulating the joke. All right, it's a it's a segment that you're all very excited about. <laughs> yeah. so, where, where, so what's what, where, what's the topic? In this? I I, I Di went, dinosaurs. I or? took a woman uh, okay. to the, a restaurant in a movie right. who was so old. How old was she? It was considered. <laughs> A carbon date? You know where I'm getting. You know what I'm oh, getting. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. 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 They're, they're, uh, the couple is so old. They're carbon dating. Okay. Let's yeah. fix this. Um, <laughs> okay. I think, the, I think the punchline has to be carbon dating. Yes. Yeah. Could, could, could it be two paleontologists going on a date, or is it better if they're old people? Really, it's really gotta old be, somebody's got to be old. Huh. Really old people. How old yeah. are they? Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right. All the ingredients are there. <laughs> except except comedy. <laughs> you don't think so? You hey, don't think there's any room for comedy in this? He's defining unfunny. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Ace. Now Ace is doing <laughs> Jeez. Oh. Okay. You'll all be in the letter. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then my the, time on the Baba Talk show uh -huh. was exquisite. These, these, I'll never forget these you. footprints from 21,000 years ago in North America. Yes. And apparently they're far apart. 
So they think whatever this critter was, this human critter, was running. I wonder what kind of dinosaur he was running from. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was, uh, that, was his, uh, that was his joke. <laughs> That's a thinker. That's his joke. <laughs> oh, yeah. You'll get that one on the way home. Yeah. <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> There's that museum where they've got the dinosaurs and the people there together. I've, I've driven by it. Hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've ever driven by that place? Yeah. Yes. If, uh, if I have, I... Yeah. You have. You have. Oh, okay. You, All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking of driving, we're going to be doing a little bit of driving. We will be... In our cars. Uh, at right the now. North Star Mohican <laughs> Casino Resort. Coming up, that's in uh, Bowler, Wisconsin. And we'll be there on... Get it? I Thank don't you. think you're... Uh, <laughs> I don't think you're playing that soon enough. Tom's the one playing that? I don't think you're playing it no, less often No, he took it away enough. from me. <laughs> Maybe we could do it every other time. Um, we are going to be in Bowler, <laughs> Wisconsin, coming up the morning of the 17th. Um, we will be, of course, um, at the casino. Not just any casino. We're going to win big. North Star Mohican Casino. I'm going to own Bowler. The North Star Mohican <laughs> Casino Resort in Bowler. Hope to see you there. You can come join us if you like. And then we have two shows that night. First one's already sold out. Details at North Star Casino Resort slash entertainment and if you're trying to decide whether to come to the second show or not uh, there will be a fist fight it's mid part of the second show our show is listed on their website slash entertainment <laughs> somebody's calling the better business bureau <laughs> <laughs> okay well thank you very much um you know you want to give me the uh, teaser i know we've got sexy time with Allie breen just around the corner right we have um jimmy buffett in the news and mm. uh double duis Oh, those are twofer. Hot. Bouncy? Uh, twofer. Yeah, bouncy no, double D. Like not, <laughs> <laughs> not double D's. No. Uh, double D. D double DUIs. Yes. And we may have some chickens in the news. If I can dig up the story, I'm looking forward to finding out what that's all about. Okay. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Add to or continue the conversation. Check out the. A stripper person. I don't go to strip clubs. Oh, no. no, I don't. I, I just. I know they come to you, right? right uh, uh -huh. Well, kinda. So how I'm dating a stripper, I don't. I don't understand how that happened. And sure. it, it, what happened was I met her outside of the situation. She's a. She's getting a little older to be that. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said she was a writer. I met her at a social event. She goes, "I'm a writer." And I'm like, mm -hmm. "Well, that's interesting. What do you write about?" She goes, "Well, I write about sex work, being a dominatrix, and stripping." And I'm like, "Why do you write about that?" She goes, "Well, that's what I do." Oh. So somehow or another, I just held on to writer. <laughs> and uh, fascinating so, writer. Yeah. Fascinating in case your mother's yeah. still alive and uh, you have to yeah. tell her. Uh, See, yeah, right. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm, I'm dating a woman who, uh, you know, who does dominatrix work. She mm -hmm. spanks men and, and you know, says, you know, that, that whole thing. And, and I'm not into that. That's not my bag. Right. I, I just, it's I, not right. my scene, baby. Not, it's no. not my no. scene. No. But I, I know that if I'm dating her, how am I not going to end up tied to a bed eventually? You how don't am I going to know that. Well, right. Because she's, I'm like, well, this is what you do. It's going to be work I for her. I picture you tied to a ceiling fan and her <laughs> saying goodbye. <laughs> well, hold on. I'm writing that down. No. But here's what I, I could see. I go, <laughs> High to ceiling fan. <laughs> Give her a good idea. Yeah. Well, uh -huh. well, here's what I know what'll happen is I'll end up tied to the bed. I'll be like, oh, now I don't think I'm good with this. I and, and she's gonna be holding a ball gag saying the safe word is marry me. Mark Merritt is our guest. <laughs> Let me, uh, let me see this uh, pair of panties with uh, well, it looks like the a, cushion. Yeah, see, and it's Is it a regular pair of panties? God. Oh, look oh, at that. Four yeah. of us could fit in these. <laughs> Should I try these on? Can we see your butt right now? I mean, <laughs> sure, Bob. Well, I want to see the before and after. Well, well, I can't. well she's in a skirt, though. You really uh, can't. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I don't know. I'm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you have yeah. monitors? No, I don't have them on. Well, that's uh, really uh, rude. <laughs> wow, that's, that's your big ass. Wow, look at this. <laughs> Nipper attack. <laughs> like, I Nipper. Kill. 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 Do you have them on? <laughs> no, your ass looks very nice. You don't need to put them on. That's not what you, That's not what you said. No, I didn't. You see, had a big ass. No. All right, we need a before of Christie's butt. Take as long as you like, Dean. Come on, <laughs> Come on smile. Uh -huh. Now, do you just put them on? Are you going to put them on? Can you? 
I'll remember, uh, uh, Christy, the padding. Them on right the now. padding goes in the back yeah, now. Remember sure that. Right. Just like pants. Oh, oh, she's, she's, she's slipping them right on. So. Okay, wait a second. No, she's slipping them. She has trick. a skirt on, so she can just put them right on. I didn't know we were okay. Okay. Dean, get some of that while you're at. Come on, Dean. You're not wearing. Come on, Dean. Are you wearing hose? Come on, what are you, queer, Dean? You're not what wearing. You you're not wearing hose, are you? <laughs> Women don't wear hose. No, are you wearing? But you're, are you wearing traditional panties right now? Yeah. It's Friday. Yes. Okay. Yeah, just boring, ugly. No, no. I mean, but you do have panties on because those. Those okay. haven't been laundered. You might get some. So do you. Uh, <laughs> come on, Dean. Make love to the camera, Christy. Go for it. Okay, now she's now she's Dean, slipping. You can't. Could you, could you, <laughs> get, what's that? Allow a little bit of dignity. <laughs> Christy, Christy Lee is now slipping on the um, the booty pop okay, where's the cameras panty right. augmenter. Of, what does it say in the on the? Okay. Okay, now she's. Let's see. Now, so you got on. those on, so. So now, now she's got the now, padded. Well, I'm curious on. if you sit down, do you feel the big cushion? Is it like being on a uh, no, that's me. on lawn furniture? Oh, yeah. that. Well, uh, that. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, baby's got back. Oh wow. You've got, looks like you've Let's got. Let's take some... a look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> Let me see. It looks like you've got a huge ass tumor. Uh, <laughs> you've got. Ass you have tumor. You have shelf ass. Nice. So, uh, step uh, out from behind the monitors. Okay. Let's see what. Uh, let's see. What oh the... yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my she's God. Yeah, look at she's that. got. Yeah, she's got. Baby's got back now. Well, oh, that really does us. Pop yeah, them out. Yeah. It really, it, it really accentuates oh, yeah. oh, the, the backside yeah. of your backside. Oh yeah. Oh, that's look at that. Uh huh. Jim Gaffigan. Isle of Palms, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. it's Beautiful from, place. This is from USA Today. Beachgoers who build sandcastles will have to knock them down before leaving under a proposed <laughs> proposal being considered by the city council. Here, here. Oh, really? The uh, ocean getting lazy, is What's, it? Uh, yeah. The, unsightly, <laughs> the unsightliness of the Are we making sand the castles? ocean work too hard? <laughs> what the hell? Is this a problem? Violators serious? could get a ticket from $128 to $500. $500? All right, little boy. Oh, sure. That's it's a, according to square footage, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're assessed wow. on square footage. Yeah, we're assessing that sandcastle. That's going to cost you 1200 bucks a year. Oh, my God. They have nothing better to do. It, it turns out that, yeah, the problem is that... Uh, people trip. People were leaving huge moats. And, really? Uh, yeah, they were... Falling. Break, breaking their legs, falling in the moat. I see. Break a hip. Uh, so maybe sure, they should sure. make moatless uh, sandcastles. That's no fun, Bob. You can't have now with no the moat. Whole, the, the whole <laughs> point is to have the. the why the, do you need a moat? To protect your sandcastle. Uh, yeah. This is why only men make sandcastles. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> is that why? This is because I've they figure the, the sandcastle is the perfect metaphor for their life. They work hard, build something, and then a woman comes along and it gets washed away. <laughs> I went to New York because at the time I was married, and, you know, you could work every night and stay home and you try and work on a marriage. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You're married. It's not that I'm, like, bitter or anything. It's just I wish I could have rehearsed for living with someone that I was in love with. Mm -hmm. Different than even a, a regular roommate, because you move in, you're in love, and then the rules come out. Rules for the bathroom, the kitchen, the sweet and low. You know, it's like you get the feeling you don't get divorced because the thrill is gone. It's because you don't know how to stack the tapes right underneath the VCR. It's because <laughs> you put the spoon in the fork slot of the silverware drawer after having been repeatedly warmed. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> Daryl Hammond, uh, disgruntled <laughs> former husband. Uh -huh. oh, and uh, New Yorker is our guest. You're a very well-dressed man. I can't mm -hmm. um, notice This is about a $27. Part of my new line of men's clothing for divorce guys called... That's clean. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Please. Good night. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Jess Good. Hooker at the news desk. Golly. I'm There's here. Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello, Chick. There's Willie Griswold. Hey, man. Jessica Alsman joins us. Hi. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. <laughs> oh. Hello. <laughs> There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick. Here's Tom. What's sticking out of the back of your head? 
Ma, you like my little turd up here? It's a little ponytail guy. It's good. It's oh, okay. Oh, I thought it was... Oh, never mind. Uh, welcome back to the program. Thanks very much for joining us. Sticking it uh, Glad to be here. Coming up, it'll be sexy time with Allie Breen. We try to help you with your love troubles, if you have any. Sex. Uh, in the meantime, we uh, turn it back to um, Jessica sex. Hooker sitting in for Christy Lee at the Bob and Tom News Desk. What's happening? New Zealand Symphony Orchestra recently played for a flock of chickens at Hawks Bay Farm. <laughs> is that hey, right? wait a minute. The music, Chook Symphony Number no. 1, was composed by Hamish Oliver. Specific Ham Hamish? Hamish? Typically Hamish. Hamish. Yeah, Hamish, Hamish would be very, <laughs> very offensive to the pigs I'm, on the farm. I'm so hungry farm. right now. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, Hamish Oliver, specifically for the birds, allowing the instruments to produce sounds much like the fowl they were serenading. I think Chook mm. is uh, like a very common name in Australia, I think. Oh, really? Mm. Chook. First C H O O K. This yeah. is in New Zealand. Yeah. They're playing for the chickens. Mm hmm. According to some studies, animals can respond positively to classical music, and chickens are particular, particularly responsive. So, Interesting. Yeah. You know this, Josh. Well, how, what, what do you mean? A chicken's favorite composer? Oh. Bok, bok, bok. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> really? Uh, uh, really? Everybody. You didn't know? When you find yourself in danger, when you're threatened by a stranger, when it looks like you will take a lick and bok, 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 bok. There is someone waiting who will hurry up and rescue you. Just call for super chicken. Fred, if you're afraid, you'll have to overlook it. Besides, you knew the job was dangerous when you took it. He will drink his super sauce and throw the bad guys for a loss. And he will bring them in alive and kicking. There is one thing you should learn when there is no one else to turn to. Call for super chicken. Call for super chicken. Ah, oh, I love that. Now, how do we get the listeners back? That was a cartoon, <laughs> right? A cartoon? It was kind of a commercial, wasn't it? Oh. No, it, it was a cartoon. It's a cartoon. There's, there's three of them. Absolutely was, a cartoon. With Tom yeah. Slick and... Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, George Gabe? of the uh, Jungle, I think, was in that stable. If oh. You I see. I see. Uh, kind of a fun story. Sure. Composing for chickens. I has to be kind of humiliating for the... The musicians, don't you think? Oh, yeah. I mean, every uh, well, yeah, I got a gig today. I know where are you going? Oh, we're gonna be going to a farm to serenade some chickens. Hmm. Been studying music for forty years and mastered the violin. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, hey, by the way, what's a chicken's favorite composer? Bach. 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 It's Bach, gotta be Bach. 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 <laughs> I'm not. I'm not I'm, it's gotta be Bach. Bach. I'm uncomfortable with the plucking. <laughs> because the, I mean, the chickens are right there. God. I don't want so We baroque a few eggs. <laughs> baroque? Baroque. 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 Uh, we baroque a few <laughs> eggs. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yep. Got it. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Ace loved that one. Uh, what else have we got? Just reading an article. <laughs> <laughs> Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania authorities say a man riding a farm vehicle was arrested for a DUI just 17 minutes after he was released from a previous DUI arrest. <laughs> oh. According to Pennsylvania State Police, the 49-year-old driver was first taken into custody, custody after he allegedly tried to flee the scene of a crash in a tractor. Hmm. He allegedly attempted that... He allegedly attempted that oh, he you, had that's been... that's like the third mess I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've had so much caffeine. <laughs> yeah, so he, he, you know what? He was drunk and he got pulled over twice. <laughs> I like it, I like it. Rules. I actually yeah, like so that. a lot better than what was written down on the paper. That was fun. <laughs> Yeah, uh, police said that 17 minutes after he was released from custody, the man was found to be operating a tractor yet again on the roadway and was placed into custody for the second DUI. Hey, it's harvest time. He had to get home. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Nothing runs from the cops like a deer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Mm -mm. <laughs> you don't want to be drunk. And think about it. His rows are going to be all out of line. Well, that's the thing. They, it's all GPS <laughs> oh, wait a minute. He wouldn't, the, be, he wouldn't be planting now in Pennsylvania, would he? They Those tractors even, buy... The, yeah, they drive themselves. They don't even have to get in the tractor anymore. Yeah. What? Really? Yeah, they yeah. Well, I'm sure some farms and some of them still... They just put them out there and put... Boop, 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 boop. Yep, and they all Plant. do the lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this guy could have gotten in the, tr in the thing and programmed it to take him home. Could have, oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Kick, kick back. Self driving. Mm hmm. Self driving tractors. It's the way have you ever been in a tractor, Tom? Uh, not the kind that, like that, no. No. I've been in a tractor, but not one that has a whatever. When were GPS. you in a tractor? 
I was attending a fair and uh, <laughs> had my picture taken. Climbed up in there and, with the hoy ploy. Yes. No, I, I, I listen. I admire farmers very much. It's a well, lot of work. Let's bring. <laughs> Uh, Can you it Photoshop is, a, a tractor? Work, yes. <laughs> Josh, where are you going to go? <laughs> Let's not even worry about when, it. <laughs> what are we going to do, Josh? <laughs> when you choose to practice restraint, yeah. Yeah. I know it was terrible. <laughs> I know. I, really I want to hear it. it. We'd all like you to write it down. We'll go over it at the commercial. Okay. <laughs> did you ever, when you were doing your computer dating, did you ever go on, isn't the, isn't there one called Farmers Only? Yeah. There is. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I mean, you're going you're to find someone who's hardworking. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Well, I live I live in a farm community, so I don't really need the app. They're just they're just everywhere. You can meet mm -hmm. farmers if you wanted to. Yeah, could just go in the backyard. <laughs> meet <laughs> <I> a <guess>. farmer. <laughs> <laughs> There's I one know. now. Hey, about time you came back here. How's it going? Now, is there a is is there a uh, so so farmers only is both men and women farmers? Right? Yeah, yeah. So Absolutely. you could. But do you have to be a farmer to go on it? Can you just want farmers you only? Want you could buy a farmer. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'm looking for a farmer. Like, I want someone to tend to my land. Yeah. Like, fishermen only? <laughs> like, if I just wanted... or fire? Plenty of fish, I believe it is. Yeah, but I'm but talking about poor fish. That's not completely different. <laughs> no, no. Yes, it is. Fish, <laughs> fishermen only. <laughs> you mean plenty of fish isn't for people who like to fish? Can you do that? Can you specify the the job that, that they have on dating apps? No uh, computer program. Oh, you mean like I'm looking for firemen? Yes. That kind of, yeah. Wow. I don't yeah. know. Not on any of the apps I've seen. No. You can specify like religion if you want. Oh, you okay. Yeah. What about all, the, all that um, makes sense? What about race? What about race? It's it's on on Hinge. You can. Uh, my a comedian Jeffrey Osmus has a great joke about it. But yeah, on Hinge, you if you, you can, pay if you pay for it, you can filter by. Oh yeah, race. we had that story. But it's it's what, what you, mean, you like. What do you mean, like, like ones you like. Or yeah. <laughs> the, the, the word no doesn't go first. Yeah. And yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's, no Portuguese. Yeah. I'd like a race that I like. Yeah. <laughs> Good choice. Portuguese. I bet they get that a Josh. lot. No Portuguese, no Irish. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No Germans. Do you remember that audio we used to have? Nothing funny down this road. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah I, I, if we were still to use that, it would just be that for four hours. <laughs> There's nothing funny down that road. I thought it was rather humorous. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I... You, what, you know, what you like, not okay. But that's a good thing that you can get so specific. That's why those are. That's, yes. like, that's the point, yeah. right? Yeah. So you yeah. can put like drunk farmers only. Right. Get this guy. You can <laughs> weed out the sober guys. <laughs> Is there one for. Um, there has to be one for sober people, right? Yeah. There's a. I think there's a lot for sober people. There's that's more, another great yeah. thing. What yeah. is that yeah, called? Yeah, yeah. It's called AA. Yeah, so no, no, no. I mean the dating <laughs> app. Oh. Sober <laughs> people think well, they're a lot of people really easy A. Easy a. a lot of <laughs> easy AA, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. very nice, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> well done. You can take it. Just write a song, Pat. Shut up. Pat, well, you, well, can continue, you can continue the fourth hour of your break. <laughs> there's, a, there's an OnlyFans. <laughs> there's a, well, hey, now you, you know got to buy him lunch now. When Pat's tired from going to the Eagles concert, he takes a little break. When you're tired from the Eagles concert, you ruin all of our days. <laughs> Thank Sorry. you, Willie. I'll take the uh, former. Sorry. Did you say uh, there was an OnlyFans for? For sober people, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. T and A A. <laughs> oh, I want to start one called. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, no, wait a second. A nice reference to 70s, I'm 70s television. I'm really sorry, but I'm rooting for you to be really awful today because it's real funny. It's very funny. Okay. God, I haven't heard TNA since Fred Silverman put that train show on TV. Fred Silverman. I want to do one that's only pans. Super train. Where I just Super cook train. stuff. People pay to watch me cook stuff. That's, that's a good idea. Only pans. Only yes. pans. That's only great. pans, that's right? But you gotta, honestly, you probably have to be cooking it naked. Well, I don't want to do that. Uh, you, OnlyFans, there are plenty of profiles that aren't sexual. Really? And they are getting some traction, yes. Okay. You could easily do that. Okay. All right. So I think it's an idea. I there's think there's one could for serial killers, only vans. <laughs> <laughs> you could do that. All right. All right. I got the game. Right. Right. Let's see. Only dance. Only, only, only dance. Big women, only cans. Yes. Yes. Only cans. Only cans. <laughs> only cans for recyclers in Michigan and Vermont. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, somebody's calling me in the hallway. I got to get off the show. <laughs> Um, they're safe. There, there, I, I, there has to be a some kind of chef doing stuff naked. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Wasn't there the naked chef? Yeah, but I mean, yeah. really, I mean, like a nude thing. And was like, the naked chef not actually naked? 
Mm. No, I don't know. I, no, I think, yeah, I think that's they the were. point. Yeah. I'm sure people will tune in if every spice you add, you take off a piece of clothing or something. Oh, yeah. So it's like as you're mixing it, and by the time it's done, you're naked. They're done too. The, yeah. only, so, thing, yeah. the only thing you've got on, the only thing you have on are those giant mitts. Yeah. Uh, it'd be really funny if it was, mitts, a, yes. it was a hearse. Excuse me, your nipples are in the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I could just envision taking something really hot out of the oven with the mitts and taking the one mitt off. And this is my mitt muff. And it felt- <laughs> <laughs> and it velcros right there in the crotch. This is my mitt muff. <laughs> I got my mitt muff stuck. <laughs> Why do I think that's oh. the old mitt muff? I like that. Every spice you take off, uh, so it's like, all right, yeah, a little chance. has to be out there somewhere. Perfect. Allsman will be my coming. producer. Oh, human. Okay. Human. Very human. Nice. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't do that. That would be just pornographic. Uh, let's see, where were we? Oh, coming up, um, uh, uh, let's see, this is week six of the NFL, so uh, we already had our winner for week five. He is Mr. Corey Cravey of Clovis, California, wins the Big Green Egg Mini Max. You can win, too. Get your entry in bobandtom.com slash contest. Just pick the winners for this week's games. You can, uh, and you don't have to know the spread or anything. Just go for it. In fact, it's my understanding that Corey Cravey picked... Uh, the 13 of the 14 that he got, he picked them before the season even started. Yeah, he didn't know he could pick them every week, which you can. You can go in and change your picks for tomorrow night's game if you still want to. Yeah, go for it. Have some fun. You're lucky. Uh, you, you could indeed. Right now, I want to talk about the fall. We're all very, very busy. And that's where HelloFresh has stepped up. They've got a whole bunch of quick and easy options, including their 15-minute meals. That's less time than it takes to get delivery. So what is it all about? Well, HelloFresh does the shopping. Of course, fresh ingredients are the key. And they provide the recipe cards, and they've done all the measuring. So you get what is essentially a kit. In fact, it's America's number one meal kit. And among the many things you've been working on, Willie, what's that over there? Y'all check out the Gouda Vibes Burger with tomato, onion, jam, and potato wedges. HelloFresh sends you 10 ingredients. Put those together in six easy steps. Gouda Vibes? Yes, the Gouda Vibes Burger. And it comes with a tomato, onion, jam. Ready to go. No food waste. That's another great thing about HelloFresh. Plus, they've got the little pack. Packets of stuff that make just regular food taste like great food because it is. Freshness is the key. Great choice is the key. More than 40 things to choose from every week. Join America's number one meal kit today and get a staggering 50% off. You need this code, though. It's a 50BT show. So you go to HelloFresh.com slash 50BT show. Pump that code in a couple times. It's 50BT show. Once again, HelloFresh.com slash 50BT. T show. By the way, don't forget the HelloFresh market, things like the mini pumpkin cheesecake, a bunch of stuff just right for the season. HelloFresh.com slash 50BT show. Coming up, the lovely Allie Breen with Sexy Time. This is the Bob and Tom Show. I had- Just before we went back to air, mm-hmm. we were talking with Theo. Theo threw a new word at me, and I... A I, new phrase. A new, I am not aware of this. Uh, there is something out there called the Lucky Pierre, <laughs> which, um, well, Theo, uh, I, you didn't really give me much information, but go ahead, f- flesh this out for me, it's literally. Just, it's something that I've heard that the kids are doing. It's, uh... The kids would be you. Uh, okay. Yeah, you're a kid, mm-hmm. huh? Yeah, well, in this story, I'm not the kid in this one. It's, uh, if three, if there's a threesome going on, which... Which I enjoy. Um, uh, who doesn't? Who uh, doesn't? Uh, uh, <laughs> now, threesome, no, uh, so threesome would be, say, you, you and, and two ladies. Two ladies. Yeah, me and right. two ladies. Yeah. Um, if, however. However, if it's three fellas, then I've heard the term. What? Yeah, the, the, there's a thing. It's, you know, they used to call it the train back in the 70s. But uh, they. Three guys. If it's three guys. And then, no ladies. And no ladies. And they call the guy in the middle uh, the lucky Pierre. <laughs> Do they not? Heard. I don't see Pierre. that on the you know, Lucky. Lucky. The man- <laughs> or, right. or the manata. Uh, That's what I've heard yeah. called as well. Oh, cool. man. The manata. Oh, so. man. Hey, did you enjoy those videos played in that break? Check out the Bob and Tom YouTube playlist for more great stuff. Asking you for uh, questions you get all the time. 
if about you your are. job. Yeah. Dear Bob and Tom, I work at the service desk of Automotive. Uh -huh. Customers call in and say, hey, the check engine light came on. What's wrong with my car? Ah, well, there you go. I want to always say, I don't know, put your car on the phone. Let me talk to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How you feeling? Mm -hmm. Dear Bob and Tom, my name is James Brown. I'm really getting tired of people saying, so, do you feel good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll Dear bet. Bob and Tom, uh -huh. my name is Brandy. Yes, I am, I am sick, sick of people bit. asking me if <laughs> I am a, a fine, fine girl. girl. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, if you've got questions you're tired of, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, yep. Okay, that's one of my favorite songs. I love that song. Oh, Brandy? Yes. Brandy, you're a fine girl? Yes. What a I'll good wife it. you would be. Yes. But my love, my uh, life, but, is, and my love of my lady is the city. Now, why do you like that song? Because is know. that the kind of relationship you want where that's some or the, the man who loves you, but he has to leave for a long Right. He so comes he in, gets the good loving, and then he leaves you alone for a month at a time. <laughs> it's, a lo it's a great way to keep a, a yeah. relationship yeah. together. Here it, Here it is, kids. Yeah. You say it, it happened. Oh, yeah. Here it comes. Nice guitar. Come on, Christy, sing along. A really well. hundred ships a day, lonely sailors <laughs> pass the time away and talk about their homes. Come on, everybody. There's a girl in a warm town and she works laying whiskey down. Is it brand new? Fetching all around. She serves them whiskey and wine. On the side, she says brand new. <laughs> All right, thank you very, very much. All right. How do you think Brandy? How do you think Brandy got to own the bar? She wears a braided chain made of the finest of silver oh, from the north of Spain. Oh, I got Lock it. The bears yeah. the name uh -huh. of the man and that Brandy, Brandy loves. loves. She uh -huh. killed and buried out behind the bar. <laughs>
Don't call Allie that. Um, no, I the, thought they the, called the phone back in the. 30s. They called the yeah way back when the, the phone was I, the blower like in the fifties. I think. I'm aware. Yeah, we got we got him got him on the blower. I'm aware. Hey. There's Allie Breen. I think she's home. Hey Allie. I'm home. Hey guys, how are you? Good to see you. Good. Uh, now, um, uh, the, the show was called Sexy Time. And uh, before we get to the uh, the content of the program, Allie, we were talking about the the dating apps. Yeah. And the specificity of some of them. There is yeah. uh, there is apparently for farmers only. Right? That was yes. the weird yeah. one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but more. apparently you don't have to be a farmer. You could just be looking for a farmer. Sure. Which would be oh. nice. Okay. And huh. then uh, plenty of fish. You don't have to be a fisherman. No. No. But, but some of them are very specific. It's not um, even, uh, marketed towards fish. They have <laughs> the league. I think the league is people only looking for Ivy League people. Oh, oh wow. wow. There's, I know there's one yeah. for lumberjacks, uh, timber. Uh, it's <laughs> Don't very, mistake that one for a not, not yeah. tender, one. but timber. Yeah, timber. Mm -hmm. Yeah, timber. Uh, but have you been on the, on the apps at all ever? It's been a long time, but I was on the apps for sure. I was on, I was on Tinder and I was on Hinge. Oh, how did it go? Yeah. Ah, uh, not great. It was not good. It did, was, you, did you ever go on an actual date with one of the uh, gents? I went on one date, maybe two dates. Uh, it's just not my thing because it's so awkward if you don't know anyone up front to have to sit through the, you know, like, what's your favorite movie and what's your favorite? So mm -hmm. it's just the apps in general. It's not specific to anyone. Mm -hmm. But it didn't go well for you then? Not really. It just wasn't, uh, there was no connection. But it wasn't like a nightmare. Nothing bad happened. Oh, good. That's good. good. Yeah. Was it, um, yeah. did, did you go on an actual date? I mean, did you go to like dinner and a movie or something? We went to we went to lunch. Did you Very uh, tame. Did, were you self conscious about what you were ordering? <laughs> no, I probably should be because I could eat like wings or spaghetti, all the stuff you're not supposed to eat on a first date. I'll do. I won't do the salad thing. Ali, I went on a date with. I I went on that hour time. Are yeah. you familiar with that? Where it's the older people. And I took no. this. Uh, I took this lady out. She ended up being way older than I thought she was going to oh, be. Oh God! Took her to a movie in a restaurant. She was so old it was considered carbon dating. <laughs> <laughs> Your thoughts on that? I, I think. I think. As a fellow comedian, <laughs> I, I think. I, I think it worked. That. It's still evolving. Uh, yes. I think it worked. No, no. That was more organic. Yeah. Yeah. It's getting yeah. it's, It is getting. Yeah. I think it yeah. worked, Josh. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I like that very much. <laughs> That's a joke we've oh, been God. trying to trying to work all morning. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, you nailed right. it, I guess. Oh. Now, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of been a comedy workshop today. Okay. Well, let's uh, yeah. let's uh, workshop a little bit of uh, love help. What's what we're here for? Uh, Al, you get the letters. What do they say? Dear Allie, my boyfriend takes Viagra when he drinks so he can still have sex. He said he gets them for me, but it's still sloppy drunk sex. So I'm doing like this for you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody loves you like us. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. I didn't know this was a thing. I didn't know Viagra oh, yeah. could counter WD. Yeah, I right. didn't think so either. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think WD. Whiskey. Uh, oh, 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 oh. I, I yeah. was thinking WD-40, the spray. That would be awkward in the that bedroom. That could also be That's different, helpful. too. So, so, what's her problem? Sorry. So, it also, she says it also makes it last for an eternity. Oh, well, it crushes oh, yeah. ego to Kate. be like, yeah, Walk no Walk a mile in my good. shoes. Holy hell. Oh. <laughs> Boy, I, no, if you're not, if you're not enjoying it, you got to let them know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, who cares about his ego? This is about you. Yeah, he's gonna pass out anyway. It doesn't matter if he's still. What angry. is the? Um, yeah, he won't remember. Uh, no. I don't know the answer to this. What's the turnaround time? If you take a Viagra, is it is it instant uh, gratification, if you will? Pat. Or do you have to? How would I know. Um, is that <laughs> smarty? Tim? Tom, I, I've taken it. Smarty. Uh, I took it one time ju just to kind of see. Amazing? And you have and, to wait. Is it like a waiting period? Or uh, it was about. I took it about a half hour before, and nothing happened until. I was um, uh, stimulated. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't like I was just sitting there and oh, right. here we go. <laughs> like I you, think that you the, still had to be stimulated. You still had to do the, the warm ups. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that the beauty of the pill? Is that it's it doesn't you don't have there's not a shelf life for uh, for like seventy two hours I thought or something. That's why they call it, just it the shows weekend. Up when you need it. Yeah. Okay. Wait, so even multiple times, like, it'll go back down and come back up when you're ready for it? That's why they call it drugs. Oh, okay. So, so, oh. This, guy, so this guy, knowing he's going to be going on a bender, does he take the pill before he... 
starts yeah, drinking and then like. he gets so drunk that he okay. And yeah. he does it gallantly for his girlfriend. Yeah. There, there may be there are other issues at play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm not Maybe. saying you should do this, but as a man uh, raised on comedy films like Weird Science, <laughs> the way they would fix this is they would replace his his you know boner pills with some sort of sleeping pill. Oh, there you go. He, just, uh, he passes uh, out and you you'd be like, oh sweetie, you blacked out, but you were. A stud yes. last night. Yeah, I am that was walking amazing. Weird, mm -hmm. wow. yeah. I'm walking weird. But you, <laughs> you wrecked me up front. You think he'll notice if it's like a pink Benadryl instead of the blue Viagra pill? Yeah. I mean, if he's drunk enough, he won't notice anything. That said, you know, don't drug yeah. your boyfriend. That's an insane. Right, right. Thing. This is well. Oh. Willie also used the quotes like, "Don't drug your boyfriend." I just to say, <laughs> okay, well, no, let, let's let's move on and get to the uh, non just a little Zequil non sexually yeah. dysfunctional. That's not really a drug. <laughs> okay, dear Allie, I used to have a huge crush on my old babysitter. She's nine years older than me and just got divorced. I'm 21 now. Should I just call and ask her out? What's the least creepy and weird way to approach this? <clears throat> oh, you sound like an okay guy to me. Uh, do it. Just, uh, I don't think you're going to be creepy. Yeah, just you're both adults, out. right? Yeah. yeah. Let's be carbon yeah. dating again. <laughs> <laughs> She's Allie. 30. Allie's 21. Allie's training. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> when I was 19, yeah, I dated a 30-year-old. Yeah, response, I guess. You did? It, it might what? Be She's like, I used to bathe you. Like, oh, uh, I've, gr that. I've grown since then. <laughs> yeah, that's Good your one, Ace. Line. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you. That's what he should say. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I don't know. It might not. It might not be weird for you, but it might be weird for her. You know. You maybe admit that up front. Yeah. So you, da you dated a, tw a 30 year old when you were. Tw what is it? I was 19 and she was 30. Hmm. It was. Oh, that's it's like this is right because this is 21 and 30. Oh yeah, wasn't that uh, Martha Hag? When you <laughs> you okay. It was so rad. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. It Josh, was your, uh, Josh has taught the ways of the world. It was a fun summer. Uh -huh. Where did you meet her? Six Flags. <laughs> she was. Uh, wow. she the, uh, Is this a Garth Brooks song? <laughs> That's the best answer you could have given. She, I, well, I worked there. Yeah. And uh, I was 19, and she worked there too. She was in the uh, main show where I was Foghorn Leghorn. Oh, of she course. Was, and she, was, she was just did herself. You, did you leave the suit on? Uh, no, no. Like just you could, the head. I could, just the head. Did she ask you to? Get the head off. Did, he, did she say anything at all about head? <laughs> okay. That was okay. fun. Well, let's, let's move on. Allie, what else you got? Yeah. Dear Allie, I've been having a small fling outside of my marriage, and I got an STD. Oh. I'm on meds, and it'll clear up in a week, but what excuse can I give my wife to not have sex for the next week or so without it looking suspicious? Well, if you're married, it shouldn't be that <laughs> difficult to forego sex for a week. Thus the fling. Yeah. Does it take longer yeah. than a week to get rid of something? <laughs> I would think. Just say you have a cut or something. Right. You, you were shaving. Ooh. Or you could tell her you don't love her. <laughs> you don't love her. <laughs> oh, I see. You're, you're yes. Doing it too. Yes. Yes. Well, like the truth. Yes. I'm sure yes. she won't sleep with you so, if you did tell yes. her. The truth. What was, who said right? shaving? I missed the point of that. Me. What? You, you could say that you were shaving down trimming. there and you cut it. That's right. And it's sore and you don't want but to. But you don't shave the part that you use for yeah. sex. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, for me. If, uh, if you're shaving that. I grow hair all the way to the tip. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's some like people, a, some doctors have audibly gasped. They call, they, call they, uh, me. they call it a cattail. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that prehensile? Can you pick up tennis balls with it? Yeah, everybody can. Right? Oh, oh, my God. Do you sometimes cut it like Hayden Christensen in Star Wars? <laughs> so it's just. Oh. One little brain to tell her, <laughs> tell her you, honey, you know how clumsy I am. I tripped and fell into another woman. <laughs> I, uh, 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 wait, wait, you know what? I don't know that we want to help you, Make sir. a joke out of it. I like that. <laughs> you sleep in the bed you made. Okay, next. Oh. <laughs> there was. Dear Allie, there my boyfriend travels a lot for work and can be really bad about picking up the phone when I call or responding to my texts. He says I have to calm down and realize he's still working, but why should he be out of pocket so much when he's away? This no. seems suspicious to me. I can't stand it. I'm totally he's with worried. him. That's right. He's cheating. No, he's not. Hire a private eye. Get to job. the bottom of this. 
So give, give him a break. Let it eat you alive. We need more details anyway. What time of day are you texting and calling? That's yada, it. yada, there yada. We are. And even when you're traveling, I mean, for work, you have all these out, like, these functions at the evening. You know what I mean? Like, you have to do these work dinners. Yeah, you can, yeah, yeah. He's, he's yeah. at a work dinner. He can't say, hang on a second. Excuse me, Mr. Fromson. I have to do phone sex with Zelda Wait for a, a few minute. minutes. <laughs> he's, right. he's meeting with Fromson? It's Fromson. Wow. How do you get a meeting with Fromson? You can't take a call during Fromson. He's on the fast track. You don't even, yeah, you don't even have your phone on when you're meeting with Fromson. You know what they sell, Josh? Johnson Rods. <laughs> Fromson Johnson. Fromson Johnson. So, so, I'm so, so this is the... Um, the girlfriend. D- d- relax. He's yeah. right. I'm a little on her side with the texting, though. It is always easy to return a text. That's a weird thing to be like, I was away, I was busy. But sometimes like, you want to make a point by not yeah, exa- returning That's text. my thing. That's if you have it. been up his butt the whole time he's been gone, he no, he doesn't have to text you back. Leave him alone. But also, there's a. I was just reading this article. You're, if, if you're at a meeting, you're not supposed to even have your phone on the table anymore. Mm-hmm. Have it that's off, rude. out of sight. If someone can see it, they're constantly thinking, oh, that's going to go off. Mm-hmm. When's that going to go off? You, oh. could always, you could always text her that you don't love her anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Is there an emoji for that? <laughs> yeah, just yeah, frowny face. Frowny face, thumb down. <laughs> <laughs> and then the little guy running. <laughs> if you want to run. <laughs> and then an eggplant and spurts. <laughs> if um, you're desperate enough to need help from us, uh, you can reach Allie Breen, A-L-L-I, B-R-E-E-N on various social media platforms. Allie is a very fine stand-up comedian and for some reason has been putting up with us for several years now. <laughs> and um, uh, once again, it's A-L-L-I-B-R-E-E-N. Uh, what else is going on in the world of love gone wrong? <laughs> Dear Allie, I went out with a girl who kept calling drinks libations. It just bugs me. Am I being crazy or is this going to be a deal? No, I record? totally get yeah. that. Step yeah. one, stop going on dates with vampires. That's weird. <laughs> call drinks, call Would beggars. you care for some libations? <laughs> yeah, get some bev, some pops, but if you're in libations, that girl's afraid of garlic. Dude. Get out of there. Yes. Oh. Unless um, it's Matt Berry, then totally keep Get out. Stay with him. <laughs> Yeah, libation? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that is annoying. Uh, yeah, I, if she hits you with, good evening, run. That's a weirdo. <laughs> mm. Talk like a regular person, you weirdo. Yeah. How do you do that? Gosh. Have you supped? <laughs> I'd like to enjoy a libation. Yes. I you know, like, I, a lot of people aren't into my old timiness. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me while I take off I'm my derby. Um, I guarantee you, if you say libation, at one point you offer someone a handkerchief. No, please take my handkerchief. <laughs> Get that gross thing out of here. Oh, I've never understood that. What? The handkerchief? I had a buddy. Oh. I had a friend that <laughs> always had, I mean, always had handkerchiefs, and he would That's always right. use them, blow his nose, refold, stick yeah. it back in his My butt. grandfather did Oh, that. my grandfather, too. Oh. Yeah. God. I have my entire day's... Snob. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you want blow their nose into a cloth pop. napkin. Yeah, I mean, and that, that bothers ridiculous. me. Say that again, now, Allie. I've seen someone just blow their nose into a cloth napkin, <sighs> and that bothers me. Like Forget at a restaurant? Folding a handkerchief. You, I mean, at a restaurant, as Josh asked. Yeah, I suppose. Oh, yeah, at a restaurant. Oh, yep. oh no. It's my well, favorite Been on a date. That's one of those. Well, yeah, what's he supposed to breakers. do? Blow it on the tablecloth? What do you want? Yeah. He's supposed to get up and go to the bathroom. Oh. Yep. You take, yes. you, you yes. take the napkin yes. to the bathroom and use it there? <laughs> <laughs> do you flush it? Wait, First off, I'm, I'm with Jess here. Etiquette is you yes. never, I don't care no. what restaurant you're at, you don't blow your nose at the table. Is that what you Exactly. Yeah, or, no. or in the even studio. With, Especially into cloth. That's why I wear long sleeves. <laughs> you don't. You don't blow your nose. You get upset when I take a Kleenex and blow my nose in here. We're not at a restaurant eating. You go into the bathroom when you do that at a restaurant. You. Yeah. Yeah. You're around I'm, animals. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You're going to ruin the meal for everyone? Yeah, but you do take the cloth napkins in to wipe, right? That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Ask for an extra. And then you rinse them out in the sink and hang them up. <laughs> yes. I take your one. Yeah. You hand them to the attendant. You go, hey, thanks, pal. <laughs> you you <laughs> flip them a dime. Yeah, give them a, a crisp one out that of your pocket. That is just good manners. I don't want to mix <laughs> Miss Bix Biter Beck's next set. <laughs> uh, we have time for one more quick one, Allie. Dear Allie, my boyfriend came on a beach vacation with my family, and oh my God, he brought a Speedo for a bathing suit. <laughs> Amazing. It completely turned me off, and I can't get it out of my head. Honestly, neither can the rest of my family. We all had to try to keep straight faces. I jokingly asked if he could wear something else, but he didn't think I was serious. How do I overcome this huge ickiness? It's over. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 He's, he's now really? just Speedo guy. Remember yeah. Speedo guy? Yeah. Totally. Oh, yeah, I remember Speedo guy. That's, this, yeah. this He'll old. never come. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Was You're, he trying to be funny? No, he was trying to be straight. <laughs> <laughs> that would be totally different if he was trying to be funny. Yeah, right? yeah. I think and he, like he was trying to pretend yeah. he was straight, but he forgot. This is what you'd wear, right? You'd wear this, right? <laughs> he, forgot the, he forgot the code. I don't think I would break up with a guy just because he wore a Speedo. I, I, it wouldn't bother me. This guy's me. now a joke. It wouldn't bother me. No, he's now a hairdresser. A family vacation? Oof. Any straight man I don't think I'd be able to get that out of my head. <laughs> None of you guys have ever wore Speedo? Oh, I mean, not since no. swim team <laughs> oh, okay. in elementary school. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Allie, thank you, and uh, we apologize. You, we'll apologize. Speedo dating weirdo. <laughs> we'll apologize for, for next week now. Who does wear a Speedo? <laughs> you know, when I swim, I like to, everybody to see the outline of my ball. Yeah. <laughs> you know who does? I insist on it. This girl, it's very uh, European, I think. This girl that I went to yeah. college with, they just went on their honeymoon, and her husband, he wore a Speedo the whole time and in all these pictures this dude is hanging man he is confident he is ready to go I, that's who wears them i appreciate it all right you like a nice speedo yeah well good luck finding a straight guy the <laughs> 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 alley are you working this weekend i am i'm at the comic strip this weekend and then lexington kentucky at the red mile casino next weekend all right nice. well be sure to remind yeah. us that's great and you can reach Absolutely. Allie once again a-l-l-i-b-r-e-e and you look great ally thank you very much thanks guys bye uh, bye, bye Allie. Well, we learned a lot there, didn't that we? That poor girl. She wakes up early. <laughs> yeah. I know. For us to just... Us uh, jackals. Yeah. I don't know. Cut off his penis. <laughs> next! Next! <laughs> next! How do I do this? Well, I how do is he not a hairdresser? <laughs> next! <laughs> next! <laughs> hey, are you going to go home like I am sometime today and curl up into a fetal position and... Sob for a couple hours. Well, <laughs> you want a secure compound. That's where Simply Safe comes in. The Dazoo. Uh, the Dazoo? <laughs> the, 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 do it yourself. Design do it yourself. It yourself. <laughs> home security <laughs> system. And now Simply Safe has their revolutionary home monitoring innovation. It's called 24 7 Live Guard Protection, designed to help stop crime in real time. Now, if that intruder breaks into your home, Simply Safe professional monitoring agents can actually see, speak to, and deter them through Simply Safe's new smart alarm wireless indoor camera stopping them in their tracks 24 7 live guard protection made possible by the new smart alarm wireless indoor camera available with fast protect monitoring plan the only indoor security camera that can trigger the alarm and instantly deter intruders with a built-in siren install your way of course like i did do it yourself or you can have a simply safe expert set it up for you either way it's easy to protect your home for a limited time get 20 percent off your new system when you sign up for fast protect monitoring just go to simplysafetom.com. That's simplysafetom.com. Remember, there's no safe like Simply Safe. And I tell you what, I think some people are kind of going, oh, I don't think I can install it myself. I'm not good at that sort of thing. They can help you out now. It's something really great. Simply Safe will get that installed for you. They can help you out with a professional. And uh, read the reviews. Simply Safe is the very best. When we come back, we have your history lesson. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob. And we'd like to play it on your program. Okay, All right. go ahead for it. <laughs> the full moon lights enough for me to see All the woman in you Got the wipers on with the heat on your feet You're about to blow my fuse <laughs> I won't put it in park until it gets dark Cause baby you know the rules I can't get off With the dome light on I can't get off With the dome light on Shut the door you stupid whore They're playing our favorite song Ain't no need to fiddle If you can't find my fiddle I can't get home with the dome light on. I can't get home with the dome light on. Wow. <laughs> I'm kindly old fashioned when it comes to certain things. Never wore a pair of 
of short pants and always catch up on my onion rings. <laughs> Some things I can deal with, baby, I don't care if you chew. I even let you take your shoes off, but there's one thing I just won't do. I can't get off with the dome light on. <laughs> Shut the doors, you stupid whore, they're playing our favorite song. Ain't no need to fiddle if you can't find my fiddle. I can't get home with the dome light on. Can't get home with the dome light on. Yay! I don't believe when you tell me that you're saving up for beauty school. And I don't believe a word you say about meeting that motley crew. And I don't believe when you tell me that you don't believe I'm a fool. But I do believe if that light stays on, the cops will see what we do. <laughs> I can't get off with the dome light on. Shut the doors, you stupid whore, they're playing that favorite song. Ain't no need to fiddle if you can't find my fiddle. I can't get home with the dome light hole. Can't get off with the dome light hole. One more time. Can't get off with the dome light hole. One more time again. Can't get off. Playing now. All right. Hey. <laughs> hey, it's Josh, and of course. Hi, Chick McGee, everybody. Your chance to win a Mini Max Big Green Egg for Bob and Tom at Big Green Egg. Each week, someone will win a Mini Max Big Green Egg. It's the Bob and Tom Show Pig Skin Pick, empowered by the Big Green Egg. Go to bobandtom.com slash contest on the computer. <laughs> Is that where you go? Are we eligible? <laughs> oh, that's great. Things are so complicated. Remember the good old days when all you needed for romance was a van and some chloroform? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes! What happened to those days? You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. That's awful. Awful entertaining. Essential. Morning Radio. Uh, this is Bob and Tom Radio. 24-7. So, Nick, let's start with the basics. Are you a uh, married guy? No, I got, just uh, got divorced. Sorry to hear about that. It's okay. Lots of people get divorced. Um, Einstein got divorced. He did? Hey. Yeah, did you know that? Albert Einstein, arguably the most intelligent man who ever lived, got divorced. They should tell you that before you get married. <laughs> It shouldn't be, do you love her? Do you want to spend the rest of your life with her? It should be, do you think you're smarter than Einstein? <laughs> oh, so you're dating then? Uh, I guess. You know what I don't want to do? I don't want to say I love you anymore. I hate that first <laughs> I love you. That's the worst. The first time you ever tell a woman you love her. If they like you, they want to hear it. And when they hear it that first time, something comes over them. You know, their eyes get all wide. and Get that diabolical grin on their face. You, you can almost feel them saying... <sighs> Excellent. <laughs> Comedian Matt Weinhold is here with us. I think that we, you should avoid all sort of living with anyone. Even if you're married, don't live with them. Because that'll mess it up. That's what messes it up. Because, like, remember, like, when you're dating, it's so great, it's so fun. You go to these dates, and, you you know, you go and you get coffee, and you see movies, and you talk, and you have this wonderful sex, and it's, I love you, and I love you. And then you go home, and you I love my cable, and I love my refrigerator. I love my life. <laughs> <laughs> and then they move in, and then they're right in your face. And, hi, hi, we live together now. Hi, what are you doing? 
one. What are you thinking? How about now? Or now? Or now? How about now? That was yesterday. What about now? Where are you going? What are you doing? Who was that that called? <laughs> Joining us in the studio, comedian Mark Eubanks. Did you go to college down in... Uh... I went to college in uh, University of West Virginia, Morgantown, West Virginia. Oh, really? I was a mountaineer. Hmm. Well, why would someone from Florida go to college in West Virginia? Uh, because you didn't have to be real smart to get into school there. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, showing up got you that piece of paper. Yeah. Oh. Valedictorian was a 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> On the breathalyzer. <laughs> <laughs> this is Reno Collier, and you're listening. Boy, that was an ordeal, wasn't it? Mm. Hi, <laughs> welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hi, Chick. Willie Griswold's here. What's up? There's Jessica Alsman. Hey. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. What are you writing over there? A resignation letter? What are you <laughs> Yep. Okay, there's Ace Cosby. Here's a pen. Hey. Oh. <laughs> oh. Chick McGee. <laughs> And here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Time now to explore uh, uh, what happened in right, the world. Right, so time now for today in history. What number is it? 11th of October. Very. What year? <laughs> Without looking. What do you, you mean, what just year? just looked. <laughs> what year is it? It's 2023. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, it was on this date. This is interesting. In 1975, Saturday Night Live premiered with George Carlin as the host. And I think they just introduced the show as It's Saturday Night. Yes. It was not Saturday Night Live. Um, NBC's Saturday Night. And I want to say in the beginning they would do a couple of those, then they had this... The Tomorrow... No, not the Tomorrow They had a new show, show with, I think it was like with Lloyd Linda Dobbins and, and Linda, Linda Ellerby. Ellerby, yeah. She would go, So It Goes. And So It Goes. A la Kurt Vonnegut. Right. Um, uh, this is interesting. In 1983... The last hand-cranked telephones <laughs> went out of service in the United what? States. Wow. 83? In, in, a place, in a place called Bryant Pond, Maine. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's the phones ringing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Newfangled. Uh, uh, Bobby <laughs> phones. <laughs> <laughs> that damn Steve King scares me. I, I, I like those boys from uh, Brian Park. Phone. They're good at fingering because oh. they, <laughs> they, no. they, they they get their, they get their, no, they, they, they just all worked no, out. Thank you from the ladies. Uh, oh, so you don't like the elderly types. That's fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is interesting. Okay, this is for you, Miss Hooker. 1910, ready? 1910, go. Theodore Roosevelt, former president of the united states right did what um he was on television <laughs> what no. year what year was it 1910 1910 no oh. tv yet oh there was a radio he he did a radio address no. he, he ran, um, it, ran again i don't he know he started the rough riders anthem didn't he <laughs> yes yes before dmx dressed in drag he flew an airplane Oh, wow. okay. Boy, he was something. Wasn't he, he was tough. He did everything. He was a badass. Didn't he get shot and continue on the speech? Yep. Yeah, yeah, he got shot by a bear. Yeah. <laughs> I may have two stories conflated. <laughs> Hold on a second. Well, it's because he was messing with the bear's kid. The, the <laughs> no, teddy bear. Here's one for you, Chick. <laughs> yeah. 1992, go. Deion Sanders. Got it. Plays for the Atlanta Falcons and yes. hops on a plane to play for the Braves. Yes, he played football and he went to uh, the amazing. World Series. I believe he scored a touchdown and hit a home run same day at one point. I really? Or is that apocryphal? No, I don't think that happened, but it okay. might have. I, I think he... Who are we I talking about? I don't know if he had a home Dion. run. Dion. Dion oh. Sanders. Now, uh, not the singer. No, I, no not Celine no one, Dion. No one thinks of Dion. <laughs> he's a wanderer. He's a wanderer. <laughs> Wander around, around Boulder, around. Colorado, and the coach of the team, he's the one. He did what to the what? team? He did coach coach the coach of the team, apparently. <laughs> coach of the team is... Uh, coach of the team. <laughs> I heard something different. I didn't Coochie know. the team? Yeah. No, I did. Are you fingering again over there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Stop saying that. He's gone. Oh, look, I'm sorry. It's digital penetration. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. Somehow Nin that's worse. Okay, this is for you, Mrs. Alsman. Okay. 1995, John Wayne Bobbitt... Oh, he got his thingy cut off. Well, he had it extended. He had, oh, never mind. He's the famous, he was the famous victim. 
that had his male member cut off. Then it was thrown to the side of the road. Yeah, it was. And then they found it. And miraculously, these incredibly skilled surgeons reattached it, apparently, with, with full functionality, I, I gather. I believe Lorena this... wrote Ali Breen and what she should do, and that was our answer. <laughs> cut it off and throw it out the car window. Was Amy Fisher involved in this one? No, that no, was no, similar. No, no, no. That no, was the okay. Long Island our, Lolita. Similar time, yeah. Oh, okay. Um... From and what he, I understand, John Bobbitt got everything he Oh, he was right? a horrible yeah, he had to come yeah. In, yeah. But yeah. apparently, well, I'm not sure, if not for a while. Here's all you need to know <laughs> is that after he got it cut and off and reattached, he did porn, mm -hmm. and the movie was called... I know. I don't remember. Frank, Frank and, and Weenie. <laughs> no, it wasn't. That, yeah, it was. that tells you all you need to know yeah. about John Bobbitt. And it was, yeah. they, this, this, says, this account says they added three inches to it. I don't know how they did that, but at least it'll be easier to find the next time someone heaves at it inside of the room. Knuckle? I believe it was mis misshapen. Yes, they added a knuckle. Is there a children's <laughs> movie called Frank and Weenie? There yes, is. Yes, but oh. they, this is, yeah. Okay, let's get some, to some birthdays. Here's the easy one. This is for you. <sighs> Your mom. Who? This is for you, Ace. Oh. 1844, J uh, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> Henry John Hines was born. What's he famous for? Ketchup. Ketchup. He made the first ketchup wow. that cuts the mustard. <laughs> <laughs> way, to, way to spoon feed that question. <laughs> and I'm defining unfunny. <laughs> <laughs> I like nuts. Uh, you what, would. What, what? 1884. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> Happy that birthday, was... Eleanor Roosevelt. <laughs> Eleanor Roosevelt. Wow. None of the teeth face the same way. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're, woo, they are jacked up, man. Great woman. F famously said, I, I, don't, I don't have a quote exactly, but it was something like, Kissed Amelia do, Earhart on the mouth. Do okay. something that scares you every day. She liked girls. Oh, right. well, we all do that. Uh, <laughs> they have scary. they heard our show? Come in and hear. <laughs> what have we learned? Okay. You want to stop? Okay. Uh, uh, I want to say happy birthday to the... <laughs> Happy birthday, Daryl Hall, uh, great singer, he 1946. Sing. He can sing very much. Listen to uh, Las Vegas turn around when John's trying to sing, and then hear Daryl sing. Okay. They're both good. Listen to, listen to She's Gone. Uh, laser shows are for suckers. <laughs> I, I said that, and I stand by it. <laughs> Uh, we talked going number two and number one in showers this morning. That's number, right. number one, primarily. Willie claims to be able to... Be able to go to uh, number two in the toilet and hold the number one for the shower. Yeah, yeah it's my, no, my no, special no. little and it's a treat every morning. It says here that Josh was amazed by that, <laughs> by that comment. It's like getting dessert first. Oh, and Josh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have your dessert. And bring me there. <laughs> Don't forget Willie tonight. So bizarre. Willie's going to be Louisville Here's Comedy the Club. of the day. With Joey Molinaro tonight for Willie. If you put a young man. Uh, if he put a young woman's hand in ketchup, she will have her period. Over. <laughs> That's right. At camp. Josh Arnold. Yeah. Thank you very much. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Think you know your pro football? Then play Pigskin Pick'em every week at bobandtom.com slash contest. It's your chance to...